Prize at Chatsworth House. The Butterfly Appeal comes to an end today, with the sculptures being delivered to 2,600 people who have donated and dedicated butterflies to loved ones. Ashgate Hospice and Chatsworth House are discussing plans for a similar fundraising project next year. A Burton man has now completed his four-year mission to visit every Weatherspoons in the UK and Ireland. David Bingham just needed to visit the flying horse at Gatwick Airport, but to do so, he needed a plane ticket, so he bought a cheap ticket to Ireland, and he says he feels elated to have visited 876 spoons. Cricket, now it's day two of Derbyshire's County Championship game with Yorkshire at Queen's Park in Chesterfield. Yorkshire are in charge after day one, and it's a big day for the host, Dave Fletcher. Well, it could be, Ed, absolutely. 272 for five, Yorkshire resuming. We can't bring you Dave at the moment, but we'll bring you a score as soon as we can. Taking a look at the weather, it'll be dry with a mix of sunny spells and patchy cloud. So Heavy showers and thunderstorms will Why gradually develop work? through the afternoon. He's lingering until the evening. It's going to be very warm today. Highs of 27 Celsius at 81 degrees so Fahrenheit. Speak to me, Alicia. That's the latest speak for an update any time. Ask your smart speaker to play BBC News for Derby. What you don't get listening on the radio is all those sort of looks backwards and forwards at one another going, I don't know, you know, I don't know. You know we've all done the right things and pressed the right buttons. Right. Here's no day. Cool reject. Right. Glen Sound GSG C nine zero two zero seven zero three four two five zero two Dongling zero two zero seven zero three four two five zero two trying broadcast call. I can hear you. You can hear me. We'll crack on, shall we? Oh, that's absolutely fine. Oh, um, we'll get you on. Big one, yeah, ready, especially with the offside. No the dog is one from Dublin. And that Milan will ease it 13 falls and a 6 as part of his 80. 
from what is now 150 plus minutes of batting. 103 deliveries. Another very good knock from a player in fine form this season. He's just adjusting his gloves at the non-striking end. Like Malin again, that's flicked off the legs by Revis, and he's going to pick up four runs through mid-wicket. Nicely played along the deck all the way, just skips onto the covers. Might be a little bit of moisture on it. With it uh, laying on those covers as it comes to a halt. That takes Rev on to five, 281 for five. In the 61st over here. Sorry, mate, but for some reason, we haven't been on the uh, on the stream, even though everything is in exactly the same holes as it was yesterday. I've just changed holes, and uh, it works. Good we've, to know. We've been online on Black the Mouth. BBC Sport website. Turns again. Coming in now, then, to bowl to Matthew Rabis, who's solidly behind this one, to complete that uh, 60th. Uh, 61st over, 281 for five then. Revis on five, and Milan on 80. Always good to know that you've been talking to yourself for the last 10 minutes. No, no, you were talking to everybody on the BBC Sport website. Just not on the, uh, on the stream. They were, they were getting Radio Derby for some reason. I don't really understand what's going on there, but... All we need is... Yes, that's very much Radio that, Derby. that kind of thing. Uh, all been sorted now, apparently, so uh, I did get a message from Tom Skinner, slightly panicked. No, it wasn't panicked at all, but it did have an exclamation mark in it, which I always think signifies a certain degree of panic. Um, Lewis Reese from the Lake End. The sun is now shining. And in he comes to bowl to Revis, who, no, it's uh, Milan, rather. He, he edges that one into the ground, because it's Milan. And it's not stopped by Wayne Madsen. It went quite quickly into the ground. It uh, went, bounced before it got to him. But <laughs> quite had the morning that we had yesterday morning, but now it's just that's when we're in all sorts of trouble. But uh, one has taken the edge. Nice to see. Unusual to see, but nice to see nonetheless. Just the two slips, Ben Aitchison and Wayne Madsen. As Reese is in again, bowls. That one is flicked away down towards fine leg. Matt Lamb runs around the boundary, skids to a halt just in front of us and keeps them down to a single. And New York should move on to 286 for five. 85 now to David Milan. Had a lovely evening out last night. Didn't we? The commentators social, commentators and others, and friends. Yeah, a lovely night. Wasn't on, it? During which only one of our party uttered the words. That's it comes. <laughs> Lewis Reese, that's a nice shot from Revis, guiding it beautifully out to the extra cover boundary for four runs. It just beats the man who is on the field. Oh. Uh, 290 for five now. Revis moves on to nine. Which words? I can't remember those words, but the, only one of our party uttered the words my underpants were wringing wet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, they were like a like a, a damp flannel or something. It was horrible, wasn't it? Horrible image that David... I, I failed to sleep last night. That David Griffin gave us. Having heard that. <laughs> that was a comment on the the warmth here at Queen's Park It was yesterday. warm, though, wasn't it? It is Mitch Wagstaff, number 22, I thought it was. I was relatively confident. Here comes Lewis Reese from the lake end. Bowls to Revis, who pushes this up to mid-off. Well, it's fielded by Leas Deploy, and there is no run on this occasion. So 290 for five, 85 to David Milan, nine to Matthew Revis. It wasn't, I hasten to add Kate Holdsworth, who's sitting alongside doing the scoring again today. And it was going to be mic'd up, but 
unfortunately, in a technical failing that has been beaten only by Napoleon's march on Moscow in 1812. <laughs> David Fletcher got it completely wrong and she can't be plugged in. Well, I can't. I can't. No. Uh, Reese Bolt, that's why they are stumped, left alone by Revis to go through to the keeper. I say I didn't utter those words either. And you didn't. Nor did Paul or Goose. And the only other person who was with us was David Griffin. Might have been him then. I think it was Could him. Have been Chris. Yeah. You can usually tell when David Griffin speaks anyway. He does, he does drown the rest of us out. He's out and about this morning. Can't quite see where he is actually. As Reese is in, and Bowles, that one is uh, turned into the leg side by Revis and fielded by Mark Watt to bring that over to an end. 290 4 5 at the end of the over. 62 overs have now gone in the Yorkshire innings. They're 290 for 5. So just 10 away from below the batting bonus point. 85 to Milan and 9 to Revis. Martin Dean and Bent Nielsen, thanks for your messages. Read the stream. Hopefully you've got us on that now. Andy Walker says, well, yesterday was the best day that Yorkshire have had for a long time. It was encouraging to see fish in the wickets, I hope and presume that you and Mr Fletcher managed to dodge most of the rain and that your kit didn't blow up last night. <laughs> we didn't have an awful lot of rain, as it turned out, did we, really? It was really? heavy for, a, for about mm. half an hour. If that, yeah. yeah. Huge drops. I don't think I've seen raindrops that big for a long time. Martin Rowe asks, is that the Crooked Spire place? And yes, in fact, we were situated in a hostelry last night just over the road from mm. the Crooked Spire. Here's Lackmal round the wicket to the left-handed Milan, who pushes into the covers. Lamb fields, no run. Yes, that's the closest I've been to the, uh, the Crooked Spire. Yorkshire lad says, glorious Chesterfield. It's five o'clock somewhere in the world. JD, fancy a glass of... Some carver. Uh, yeah, not quite sure what the other inscriptions is. It Marquis de los Rios. Is it not just nicely done? Is it not just fizzy wine? Marquis de los Rios. I know. He's not. He's crazy. Um, here is uh, Lagmal <laughs> pushed past short extra cover. And uh, David Malan, he not get her on for this. <laughs> no, we're not going to do the entire day in a faux Spanish accent, are we? <laughs> Kind of nothing. So you, are, you are from Barcelona. Very good. <laughs> I don't know how you get away with it most of the time. Mr. Faulty, he tackled me. Uh, good morning again, Doiji says, Forever Dormer. We all heard about Weatherspoons and heard someone trying to link up the commentary to the pictures. As Black Man is in and uh, Milan. Solidly behind this one, no run. All heard about Weatherspoons. He says, I heard someone trying to link up to the link up the commentary to the pictures. Seven five seven eight nine two one zero three. Like a very long sound check at a pub gig. Now I can go back to video and commentary on YouTube. Looking forward to it. No, that was the. Uh, I had to dial down and dial back, and the uh, the unit that I used to dial get on the internet actually repeats the number back to you rather than just a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't work if anybody else dialed it. Like Mal in, and that's, oh, an inside edge by Milan, a rare false stroke from him. He's pushing out through the covers and it's gone down to long leg. He'll still pick up a run and he hasn't lost his wicket. 86 to him, 291 for five. Yeah, that, when you when we put on these um, Glen Sound cubies, as they sort of don't really call them anymore, but that's what they were called mm. when they were in the old days for our ISDN kits, there's a little message, and I can never catch it in 25 years of having an ISDN kit. I still can't quite tell what the fella says. That's it's Glen Sound of GCX. The G G it's, yeah, it sounds like Glen Sound just found a, just, a juicy line. <laughs> Weird, yeah. And I want to know what he actually says. But I've never known where to ask. Lackmal bowling here to Revis, and that's wide of off stump on his shoulders, arms. But more in today, strangely enough, than there were yesterday yeah, on the weekend. Yeah, it seemed to be, doesn't it? seemed to be. There's, there's more in the, under the trees to our right, which, is where, which will get the full sun this afternoon, should the sun still be out this afternoon. But uh, there's an awful lot of kids in today as well. Well, there were. 
can't spot them at the moment unless they just came to form the guard of honor and now they've been taken back to school which seems a bit harsh I think they were hoping for a few more today Revis pushing the Sledis Lackmal delivery out into the offside to complete that over on 291 for five so just the one run coming from it the suits are all in evidence today there's a few straw hats to keep people's uh, Dickies here today. Heads protected from the sun. Yeah, Dicky around. I think Jeffrey's supposedly around, isn't he? I've heard that. I think. Yeah. I think you know. I, I don't share. I don't have much in common with Dennis Lilly, Jeff Thompson, Chandra Saker, Richard Hadley. But one thing I do have in common is that I bowled once all afternoon at Geoffrey Boycott. Did you? And that was after he'd been playing here in a game for Yorkshire. Finished on the sort of final morning. Uh, he wanted some more. Wanted some more um, hadn't practice. Bat, hadn't batted enough. Yeah. So uh, got the call and off I went to Headingley and well, did a first, bit of bowling. First ball of you, Lewis Reese over. Sorry, Dodgy. It's just been uh, driven. I thought it was going to go for four actually, but it's been cut off on the extra cover boundary by Alex Thompson. So they just got a single two, ninety-two for five. Did you get him out? No. No. Nobody did. <laughs> <laughs> there was about eight of us. <laughs> um, and, yeah, we, we bowled and bowled and bowled. And then after about an hour, he said, uh, right, I've uh, had a look at it. Set your own field, and I'll tell you how many I get. And I'll be honest about it. And he was. Yeah, he said, no, that's a dot. Well bowled, lad. Reese bowled, driven into the offside by Revis. Straight to Harry Kane. And then he'd be, I remember, because he could play... The lovely on drive, couldn't he? Mm. The, the mark of a really good player. Remembering the straight drive he played to get his 100th hundred at Headingley that day when that Graham Root jumped over the ball. And he'd be saying things like, no, you've just strayed on my legs there, you should know me. And that's going to go for four every time. Lad. <laughs> that sort of thing. So you'd be talking you through it, really. It'd be quite good, though, wouldn't it? You'd learn a lot. You must have learned mm. a lot. Yeah. You've probably forgotten it by now, though. Reese bowls and he's reaching for that one, is Revis, and he's going to get four runs down the third man. It hits the rope now, almost hits him. Well, fine piece of footwork from uh, David Griffin, who was actually struck by a Hader Alley four at Edgebaston last Wednesday in the T20. He's still got a mark on his left shin. But that was a nice piece of, nice his, bit of footwork. His underpants will be ringing wet after that now, the <laughs> pressure. <laughs> but like a damp flannel. Yeah. I thought he'd sat in Lake. <laughs> State he were in last night. Well, of all of us, I think he drank the least. Although you gave him a good go. Ah. <laughs> Here's Reese again. Poor effort. Bowls to Revis, who defends this straight back to the bowler. And uh, Lewis Reese gives him a, a bit of a look, a bit of a stare. And uh, then turns and walks back to his mark. It was a good night last night. Enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyable. Probably do it again in Scarborough. Uh, whereas uh, myself, Griff Goose, and, uh, and Paul will clearly do it in Worcester and in Hove and in Cardiff. <laughs> Everywhere else. The local hostel is already ordering in more barrels. Reese Bowles defended again by Revis. Straight back to the right hand of Lewis Reese. And again, there's no run. It's very unusual for us to go out at home games. That's the problem, because when they played in Derby, no, none of us live in Derby. Thank you. And um, two of us decided to stay in Chesterfield. Two already live here. And uh, Doji as well. So it was good. And Kate. As Revis is in again and bowls wide. Uh, Revis is in. Reese is in. Bowls wide of Revis is off stump and he allows it to go through to the keeper end of the over. 296 for 5. 87 to Milan. 13 to Revis. Rupert has emailed in. Has he? BBC West Yorkshire Sport at gmail.com. 125 years ago. Um, I'm not sure what the, the price of admission was at that stage, but he sent us in what appears to be a, a scorecard. Rupert, unfortunately, as you say in your first sentence, sorry, it's a bit faint. It's where, although we are undercover, it's not ideal, likewise, to be able to see that. So yeah, turn the brightness up on your screen. Going to miss the point, but um, he says Messrs. Lyth and Bean have got somewhere to go, so I'm sure it is uh, a reference to a former great day here 
of some sort. Derbyshire got more runs in their first innings too, but hopefully not in their second. Lackmal round the wicket and Alam just steps into that and does what he does so well, drives it into the offside, but on this occasion picks out Leas Deploy, who is at mid-off. Derbyshire skipper, you can tell, I think, from our effects, Mike, that the wind is a little more blustery than was the case yesterday. Quite pleasant, that, isn't it, really? Yeah. Have some movement of air. Might dry out Griff's... Um, yeah. Hit. <laughs> I think my next update is 25 past 11, so I apologise. Lackmal down the hill. And uh, Milan, again, just strokes that away through point and pretty much walks the single because... Fielder is set back over there as a, a plastic bottle goes you scuttling know, by. You, do you know who should crush that? Most grounds in commentary boxes we have tumbleweed moments, but here at uh, Queen's Park we have plastic bottle moments yeah. in one way or another. Henry sorted it for us. Thanks, Henry. Was it your bottle, Henry? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was his bottle, so he, he had to sort it, really, didn't he? It's sort of duty-bound. Member Darby of the Derbyshire staff, staff yeah. losing his bottle. <laughs> hey. Three runs for a second batting point for Yorkshire. Revis on strike. Steps across into this one, but then shoulders arms. That's through to Brooke Guest. Doesn't mind a leave, does he? He's not, uh, he's not going gung-ho at things here. Like you said yesterday, they only want to bat once. They do, and also, the, you know, batting a second time, yeah, they might get winning points, but they're not going to get... Bonus points, and I think Matthew Fisher was quite pointed in his interview with me last night when I said, you know, what's, what do you see coming from day two? And he said, we want to get as many batting points as we can. So I think they will just keep going and going. Uh, 450, if they're good enough to get there, for maximum batting points within the 110 overs, then they'll uh, be happy and obviously have a massive lead as he leaves another one from Lackmel. Leas Deploy told me that, uh, yes, we are a long way behind, which I, I think we could have taken. Um, basically, Derbyshire, he says in the second innings, of, in their second innings, we've got to score what Yorkshire did in there first. And then he thinks the spinners will come into play. So whether he thinks 111 is going to be enough to spin Yorkshire out or not, they might want a small, a bit slightly bigger lead than that, but it's going to take an awful lot of doing. Lackmal down the hill again, Ravis steps across, it's a good leave. I think Ravis having a good look. And, uh, and there's nothing more for him. He'd love uh, a big score here. He's doing well. Played himself into this team. Good grief, it's windy. We're always complaining about the weather, aren't we, really? Uh, we shouldn't. It's very pleasantly warm but that breeze is, is very nice. I want to warn people on the, watching on the stream, um, and you upstairs, Matt, as well, assuming you can hear me. Uh, I, I will be talking to the presenter during this next uh, update, so you might want to turn me down. You might want to turn me down anyway. Who knows, as Lackmal finishes his over uh, with a dot ball. 297 for five. Can't really do much about it, I'm afraid, given the setup we have here at Chesterfield, which is very good for an outground, but it's relatively limited as well, so uh, that will obviously impact uh, what you're hearing on the stream. Uh, uh, so I'm ready for to speak to Ian Sky as long as they can hear me. is good news they can hear me that's good news for somebody anyway but as i say yeah uh, um, around about a couple of minutes matt if you want to turn me down for i don't know two or three minutes that might be for the best uh, mark watt he's going to come into bowl from the lake end and he's bowling to david milan who turns this first delivery straight into harry came half a chance there if he'd have reacted a little bit quicker. He's got to catch it if he's standing there. And Milan has been dropped. 
Harry came, couldn't react quick enough at short leg. Watt is in again. He goes back into his stumps this time. Would have been a fine catch had he taken it. He's been dropped on 88 off Mark Watt. In comes the Scotland International again. And balls turned into the leg side by Milan. Fielded by Lears Deploy on this occasion. He's fielding at the a very short, straight, but it's probably a short ish mid on. Very straight though. And what bowls. And that one is turned into the leg side, this time to the left of Harry Kane for a single. Milan moves on to 89. And Yorkshire to 298 for five. Oop. And uh, if you want to turn us off on the stream just for a moment, it might be the right time to do it. Derbyshire player who went to Yorkshire in the close season. So uh, disappointing all round as far as Derbyshire were concerned. We lost a few overs last night because it rained. Nobody, was, well, we were expecting it. It was in the forecast, wasn't it? The drops. I've never seen raindrops as big. They were huge. Uh, and it forced the players off the field about five past six. We lost five overs in the end. Uh, but glorious at the moment, although more of those pesky thunder storms are in the forecast, aren't they? So I think the rain is about the only thing that can save Derbyshire in this game, in all honesty. Yes, really good crowd. It's slightly disappointing, I think, crowd yesterday, but good for a, a county championship match, but more in today than there were yesterday. We, we've just been chatting about it on the uh, on the commentary, and we think there are more people in. There's a very pleasant breeze at the moment blowing through our gazebo. Um, and just keeping us cool, because, uh, my word, it was very sweaty yesterday. It was even sweaty in the pub last night. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a nice one this year. We, 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 we have struggled over the years with gazebos at Chesterfield, but this is an absolute belter. I, I, I don't know who ordered it. It's a very solid construction. And, uh, yeah, we're very happy with it. We're very happy with it. Although the salad for lunch yesterday didn't go unnoticed either. Salad for lunch. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Oh, always got time for a quick game, yeah. Yeah, what have you got for me? <laughs> oh, Yorkshire or you what? Okay. <laughs> no. Right, OK. I must warn you that I did, I've worked most of my life in Yorkshire and was brought up in the East Riding, so carry on. Well, that's uh, in the West Riding of Yorkshire and is uh, very much a Yorkshire town. Yes, near Fangfoss up in uh, East Yorkshire, Wetwang. The Fangfoss and Wetwang stick dance uh, was performed uh, at, at... No, no, Wetwang's a place. I know it's got a nice chip shop, actually. Yeah, Wetwang's true. Yeah, well, Fangfoss and Wetwang stick dance. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was... Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, that doesn't sound right to me. Oh. Horridible. No, no. Oh, I'm two for four now. Mm. <laughs> There's an upper thong as well. Uh, it's true. It's near Huddersfield, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go true. <laughs> are and all the rest of it and, and, and I know it's not ideal for the for the live stream in this particular instance we, we can get away with it at, uh, at Derby but we can't quite get away with it at Chesterfield so uh, Mark Watts beginning a new over from the lake end it's bowling to David Milan who goes back into his crease and punches it into the onside where it's fielded by Ben Edgerson at mid wicket so I always feel that we should never decline the opportunity to publicise the cricket on the actual radio and uh, therefore always agree to do anything basically <laughs> it's ridiculous we've just done a, a Yorkshire or you what to, for uh, place names in Yorkshire as uh, what is in and he's beaten and he's caught is he no it's been dropped by Wayne Madsen he couldn't quite cling on to it now again Mark Watt's reaction suggests that that one came off the bat it hit wicketkeeper Brooke Guest and looped up into the air and Wayne Madsen couldn't quite grab it so Milan dropped for a second time this morning both off mark what this time on 90 was on 88 previously and wayne madsen couldn't hold on as what is in again definitely off the bat yeah no, thank you kate sitting next to me she's uh, on the stream up as well they're showing a, a replay now actually a replay from behind which is pretty much the view that we had but it looped up and he, he leapt and got his left hand to it but couldn't cling on alan plays this one around the corner down towards fine leg around comes <laughs> Matt Lamb puts the slide and they get through for two more and it's 92 for five now if you did that slide you wouldn't be getting up would you no you I'd get down in the first do you know place, what we would I've spoken about this a number of times just this season really because when I played cricket sliding wasn't really a thing definitely not no, no. well I was yeah it was when I was still playing but I never did it Next delivery from what is turned by Milan into the onside and fielded by Aitchison. No, I didn't know. I don't think. I genuinely don't think it was a thing when I was doing it. I don't recall people sliding. Most of the time, I was standing at first slip though, so I didn't need to slide there much. True. This one is uh, pushed by Milan into the offside, and Mark what does the feeling? He's a, he, he was a very frustrated man when that ball went down. You could hear the yelp from here, and off off he steps. He gets a pat on the back from Ben Aitchison for his troubles, and uh, away he goes. Look, wickets are hard enough to come by, aren't they, when you're playing against a good player like Milan and you create two chances, two chances within minutes, yeah. 88 and 90 has been dropped on. And you do, yeah, I can totally understand his frustration. And he's walking off, he's, he's got a slight march on as he work, goes off down to the far corner and probably going to have a word with a couple of speckies down there. How, how did he not 
How do you not blooming take that? Or how did you not blooming take that? More likely the latter. Um, <laughs> Although it, it wasn't as though we'd walked into the room. Well, it's all, all about You're having a laugh. I put two chances down off me. That's getting closer. You're getting more towards Edinburgh now, aren't you? From, you were a bit too Glasgow yesterday, I thought. But. Like Mel, down the hill and into Revy, who shoulders arms at that one. And there is no run. Just slightly posher, isn't it? The Edinburgh side of, of that belt. Glasgow can be quite harsh. But, yeah, uh, I did used to work with the, the guy from Edinburgh. Big, um, big Hearts fan. Don't think he'll be listening, but... Not sure I'll mention his name either. Excellent. But he did have a sort of bluff, gruff Edinburgh, you know, he's like, mm. you're a toy lad, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the only way to rule is to rule by fear, is what he said to me. Really? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Blimey. Yeah, don't <laughs> mention his name. <laughs> we'll get emails. Black Mal is in, and uh, Revis has a push at this one. Good delivery. Leaves Revis on the rise. He's replayed the shot. Not sure the replay of the shot was ideally what he wanted either, but... Uh, He's survived it. He's on 17. Ed's just had doors back in the studios. Just said, where's the train going? I think it just goes around the park, if I'm honest, Ed. And uh, it is a real train. It's on a track. It's called Puffin Billy. And uh, it goes round quite regularly. It certainly did yesterday. See, I hear the wind ruffling the uh, gazebo now. Could take off any minute. Lackmal to Revis shapes to play but then leaves this no run as the same guy actually this, this is i mean look at this we're sitting here having great fun doing this job but in those days doing that job for a well-known former building society i was i was situated in the harrogate regional office and this senior manager had been to somewhere like marbella for the weekend on a sales conference oh, yeah. and he obviously had too much to drink <laughs> and so i got the call as the junior manager there, Doiji, can you go pick him up? Yeah, yeah, where is he? Yeah, just at the airport. Yeah, which, what, thinking Lee's Bradford? Lee's Bradford, yeah, yeah. Gatwick. Ooh, that's a long trip. So I had it? to drive to Gatwick. It was something like February. Here's like Mel. Oh, Revis has a push at this one, wide of off stump and misses. So I drove all the way to Gatwick, and he was full of cold when I got there, not interested in making any small talk, didn't give me a chance, I didn't even get a sandwich or a cup of tea, Straight in his car and back. <laughs> I spent nine hours on the road. There was an accident on the M1. We went around the M40, remember that much, and it was snowing like mad. I oh. took him back to his home, and he said, take my car with you, lad, take it for the weekend. And he actually did manage to thank me at that stage. Was it full? That yeah. was, uh, that was a little great pop, job, that one. That. Great job. Wow. Not in the job description, necessarily. And then I got a call over the weekend saying, you need to have my car back in the office for 8 o'clock Monday morning. I need to go off for a meeting. Like Malin, it's wide of off stump and Revis leaves. The joys of um, former careers. I didn't have a former career. Straight into this nonsense, not necessarily cricket, but... Straight out of university and into a newspaper. Morning to you, Josh Schofield, messaging from Daventry down in Northamptonshire. He says, good morning, Jonathan. It's been an excellent start to this county championship match against Derbyshire so far for Yorkshire and great to see. Having followed Yorkshire the last couple of years, we've had a team with a lot of ability, but lacking little in substance at times. Great to see how the momentum of winning five blast fixtures on the bounce has brought the team together with this newfound confidence and momentum. Where do you see the potential of the side and what do you think the future holds for Yorkshire going forward? Ooh. Well, how long have we got? Good job we've got this email at the start of the day as uh, Lackmal is in and Revis leaning away to the offside, doesn't really move his feet, has a fish at it, but misses. End of the over, 305 for five. So Inga Lackmal's first maiden, incidentally, Karen. Uh, oh, well, the future, the future immediately holds a meeting which decides how many points Yorkshire are going to be deducted, we think. So we'll know more about the future after that. Uh, one or two people still think that they could get promotion from this division this year back up to Division 1. Um, I wouldn't be confident about that, well, A, on the basis of where they are right now, and uh, given the fact that we're into match number 6 out of 14, and also with a points deduction looming. In terms of the abilities of the players, I think clearly they've 
underachieved in this first part of the season in red ball cricket. Watson Milano uses his feet to approach the bowler and drives the ball out towards the cover boundary. In pursuit is Lewis Reese, who just keeps it inside the boundary rope. And they come back for 294 now to Dawid Milan. And as he's facing Mark Watt on 94, Doji. Thank you very much, thank you. Signing autographs out the back of the tent a little bit later on as Milan pats this one back into the leg side. <laughs> and there is no run. I'll, I'll come back to you, Josh, with uh, a more fully formed answer. You can see why because, I've given it to you, though. Yeah, you? Mark Watt will be firing through this over, as he tends to do. Doesn't give you much time to make much comment. He's back and across here, Milan, and just pokes this one out into the offside for a single. Go on, get, go back to your email quickly. Uh, uh, pressure, pressure of speed. <laughs> uh, I think they've been good in parts in the championship. Clearly would have won at Sussex uh, early in the season, but not for the rain. Weren't very far away, clearly, against Durham either. So it's not been as doom and gloom for me as it has been for many of our correspondents. Certainly for me. As what bowls around the wicket to Revis, who leaves outside the upstump. Um, but, yeah, just played well in parts, but not well enough to obviously pick up winning points yet. Uh, white ball cricket has been been so good, hasn't it, in the last few matches? Real sort of eyebrow raiser. What balls, Revis pushes this out into the off side up towards uh, Hayder, who's fielding at mid on. And they go through for a single, 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 whatever one of those is. Uh, Revis moves on to 18, 309 for five. Uh, I think bowling is, you know, they've, they've been winning games in white ball cricket and have got themselves ahead of this game in recent times with good bowling. And here's David Milan having a flash at a ball wide of off stump by Watt. And he's going to get four runs to take him to 99. And Yorkshire to 313 for five. I was half asleep then when he played the shot. So fortunately... He didn't, didn't go for six. six. No, no. I, I didn't know whether to step in <laughs> or leave you to it then. And I wasn't 100% sure if you were fully aware that it was Milan. and Because uh, it can happen, can't it? 313 for five. He's on 99, but he won't be on strike at the start of the next Saranga Lakmal over. He's just having to drink his uh, Saranga. Brought to him by... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> by George Scrimshaw. Uh, we've just seen the unedifying sight of David Griffin running to collect his camera because he wants to make sure he gets the, the moment. His underpants will really be, will they'll be, be, they'll be like be a, a real mess. They'll be like a so. damp flannel. You've got a nerve using the word unedified referring to me. I think it's a perfectly good word to refer to you, David Griffin. Shall it's, I carry on with this end then? Seeing as, well, um, you can do if yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you. I'll just sit here and... Because nobody can see through David Griffin. Lackmal then bowling here to Revis. That's felt like it was a quicker delivery than we've seen from him so far this morning. Did seem to rush on to Revis, and he's dropped it out into the lakeside. No run, 313 for eight. It, it had been a glorious view at uh, Queen's Park. I thought, I thought the sun had gone in. stage this morning. I genuinely thought the sun had gone in. We just had an eclipse. <laughs> like mouth turns again Un unedifying eclipse down the hill he comes and Revis pushes up to mid on where Lamb feels no run sorry not hill incline down the incline somebody will correct me on hill it's not a hill is it Jonathan it's steep well, enough to no be it's hill. not no it's a, it's a slope isn't it slope incline yeah, no, I think you're right. No, incline's perfectly fine. Decent, I'm, good. I'm happy with incline. Like Malan turns again, looking for first uh, wicket for Derbyshire this morning. Not with that delivery, but he's much more looking. Uh, like a bowler today than he did in that afternoon session yesterday. Not really sure what went on with Derbyshire if they were searching too hard because they've got a low total. But he was wayward and he was made to pay for that. Can't keep still, Griff. 
Oh, he's taking the chair now. I don't know where he's taking it. Where are you taking it? He's going to go sit right in front of our commentary position. Revis waits. Like Mal. In and that's wide of off stump. And there is no run. I mean, where would you want to be positioned as a photographer when you're trying to get a shot of a man who might get 100? You probably want to be positioning yourself somewhere either side of the mid-off or mid-on fielder, that sort of angle. He's going to look straight through Matt Lamb at the moment, isn't he? The um, setup of the shot, not that I'm a photographer here, Fletch, but you've got the slip cordon in the background, you've got some of the crowd, you've got the tree-lined uh, part of it as well. You avoid then getting this, the white of the sight screen in with the white of the player against it, so you've got white against green, yeah. composition of the shot, you've got the angle. You like that? It's all, you can see all the thinking there from Griff. Blackmail bowling here to Revis, who punches this one firmly, but no further than Deploy. He's at mid-off. You know what's going to happen here? He's not going to get it for about half an hour now, is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, folks. 3.13 for five, Revis on 18. It's been a bit more of the painstaking this morning in terms of adding the runs, but I think also that's credit to the way that the hosts are bowled. Well, they bowled appallingly yesterday afternoon, uh, but after tea they were much, much better. And they've sort of carried that on today. In comes Lapmal again, passed on by Lungley. And once again, good length ball, treated with respect by Revis. And wouldn't you know it, it's a maiden played out by Matthew Revis. 313 for five, 71 overs complete. Number of maidens in the inning so far, Kate? <laughs> Second consecutive maiden from Lackmal says. Ten maidens in the innings. There we go. Seven bowled by Mark Watt. One each for Thompson, Reese, and. Uh, no, that was his second, so there's 11 maidens that hadn't clicked over. Apologies. We've also bowled uh, nine no balls, which isn't great. So getting on towards the. The end of the first hour of play. 41 added so far today without loss for Yorkshire, and they'll be absolutely fine with that. They've got four days, of course, to try and win this game. Don't have to go out there playing baz ball and trying to win it quickly. They're making him wait here, Milan, aren't they? On 99, they're just changing the field. Matt Lamb's coming in from uh, the backward point boundary. He's now at the wrong end for David Griffin as well. When he plays the shot, he won't have his face in shot. And while I'm the first to moan about how long it takes to get through the overs in a day, I like that. Yeah. You know, just, just make, just him, make him sweat. I mean, he's been mm. here plenty of times before. So what then? Bowling to Milan, who drops this out into the offside. And there is no run. No, it makes perfect sense. There was a long chat there between. <laughs> Watt and Lears deploy, who's in that very straight mid-on position. What then? Over the wicket once again. Milan flicks this just wide of deploy. Field around from mid, uh, from mid wicket, straight mid wicket. There, does the, the cleaning up? No run. And just uh, gets the. Thigh pad right, taps his bat down a couple of times. What in again? Milan has one to push out here, and that's going to be it through the covers. Lewis Reese giving chase is going to reel that one in, but they're back for two, and that is a 30th first class 100 for David Milan. And uh, along with a double century and two other hundreds against Derbyshire, a fourth for him against this county. He takes the applause standing from some of the Yorkshire fans in particular. He has been dropped twice this morning on 88 and 90 but he's a very accomplished player and you don't expect him to be given chances and not to make the opposition pay super stuff from him would have been nice if you come got to it with a six wouldn't it jump to carry on now you must be exhausted uh, what bowls two milan turns it into the leg side and uh, on this occasion there's no run 315 for five just going for a lie down yeah 130 deliveries, I think. 
Something along those lines. Lead 204. 15 fours and a six. That one is pushed out into the offside. Mark what, walking back to his mark backwards. I think so we can maintain eye contact with Dawid Milan. There's been um, a little bit of by play between the two. He's in over the wicket now as the Scotland international bowls to Milan, who that one keeps low. And he pushes it into the onside. Picked up by Lewis to fly into the over 3.15 for five. He can do that, can he, with such a short run up? Um, I don't know if you ever, when you were playing, had any of those sort of situations. I do remember playing in a game where the bowler was beat me a few times, nipping it away, nipping it away, and wanted to glare at me and, you know, gave me a few verbals. And I remember I just stood and looked at him, just kept the eye contact with him. And you think, well, he's running in from 25 yards away or whatever. At some point, he's got to turn around and, if you like, you're going to stare him out. And he got really wound up by this. He did it three or four balls in a row. And I just kept staring at him, standing there and staring until he had to turn and go off. He was getting more and more annoyed and started to chuck it, you know, more and more loose mm. deliveries. Mark Watt, because the guy couldn't really go backwards 25 yards to maintain the, the eyeballing, could he? But off five, five paces, paces or whatever, yeah. yeah it's, it's, not it's a good effort from Mark Watt, that. Alex Thompson is going to replace Saranga Lakmal, who's just left the field of play to be replaced by Mitch Wagstaff. Lakmal bowling uh, six overs and one ball in the spell either side of yesterday. So is he bowled? No, he bowled them all today. Not for 11. A couple of overs in, a uh, couple of maidens in there as well. 101 not out. David Milan at the non-strikers end, despite what the board says. And the first delivery from Thompson is punched by Matthew Revis. Might have got half a hand on it there. The bowler. And as a result, there's no run. Cleaned up by Ben Aitchison, who's at mid-on halfway back. Matt Lamb at mid-off halfway back. Catches either side and a short leg. And Revis leaves this next delivery from Thompson to go through to Brooke Guest behind the stumps. Revis has 18. 18 from 51. Milan 101 from 133. So it's been a very watchful innings from Matthew Revis. And he waits now as Thompson bowls to him. And he drives but off the inside half of the bat up to mid on. Wasn't I doing this end? Well, I just thought you've done so much, you can have a rest. But I, I'm, I, I, I have no idea. I can't remember which end you crack belongs up. to who, really. Uh, I'm going again in a minute. Uh, Thompson plays, uh, bowls this next one. Revis pushes it into the on side, and there's no run. Adam Lyth, just coming for a quick word. How's things? Yeah, can't be better. Uh, David Milan just gone to his 100. Fantastic. He's playing beautifully. Hopefully he can continue and get a big one. 200 would be lovely. Uh, why didn't you get a ton? Um, I've just drove at one that shouldn't have been there and nicked it to first slip, unfortunately, and missed a big one. You did. Uh, exactly how we put it on, on the broadcast, I think, yeah, Butch. I think that's what we yeah, said. I heard. <laughs> Good. Cream, right? I'm glad you're taking Actually, responsibility. Yeah, he's gone for a nice cream. <laughs> uh, two deliveries got in the over. A single has been taken, I believe. Uh, 316 for five. Yeah, so don't we all hope he goes on to make 200? Well, perhaps not everybody in the commentary box, but certainly a Yorkshire perspective. The, cam the uh, next delivery goes past. Milan's bat. The microphone is going to go for a ball of chalk in a moment then. Uh, the floppy bit's hanging off it. It needs to be pushed back on. Doji, can you do that? I'm not sure if it's within my remit as the away commentator. I think, uh, I think somebody's, um, somebody's got to do it. Just let me clamber through this pillar that's in front of me again. Oh, yeah, Did I mention there's a pillar in front of me? Trying to it's a very handy pillar, in fact, because that's the pillar on which... Have you turned it off? Uh, I've turned it off momentarily. I'll, I'll fasten it more securely at lunchtime. Sorted. Well done, Dodgy. I knew you were here for a reason. <laughs> is, uh, is it you? I think so. Okay, probably. Go on then. So, what? CK what? Remember that? Faulty Towers? Um, Revis pushes into the onside. There's no run. Of Willoughby sweeping Michael, majestically Michael. across Queen's Park. As Watt is in, and uh, 
Revis pushes into the offside. Fielded by Deploy, who's moved himself round into the covers. No run. I was more of a Michael Palin man than a John Cleese man. Sheffield, good lad. Watt in again, and that's nicely played by Revis, who's got a little bit of room to work with. Watt is very disappointed in himself and frustrated that he's given away four runs there because he's tightened things up this morning. He's created opportunities that haven't been taken. But Revis now on to 23. 320 for the loss of five wickets. And Milan, 101. Former groundsman at Queen's Park has been in touch about the incline. Watt to Revis again, who punches this one to mid-off, no run. Norman Graham, uh, good to hear you from Queen's Park. I read the incline, if I heard you right. It's six foot from the pavilion to the lowest point. Mm, so nine foot from law at Lords and it side to side. Mm. Six foot end to end here as Revis pushes into the offside, no run. So it's he, a, it he is a say, reasonable incline. He does say it was 43 years ago when he was here, actually, as the grounds were. So, I mean, it might have changed a bit. I can't imagine they filled it in. What? Just gives this one a little bit more air, but it doesn't tempt Revis. End of the over, 3.20 for five. Martin Rowe says he's got friends in Upper Thong. First time I visited them, I got lost and ended up in Nether Thong. Nether Thong, yeah. I did yeah. once play football at Upper Thong many years ago. It sounds like they didn't switch my quiz off when uh, I was talking to Ian Skye, which would have been heard on the stream then. So, uh, yeah, he was asking me for places that they were either in Yorkshire or completely made up. They're having a drinks break here, incidentally, at 3.20 for five. And usually he has a pattern where it goes, one's true, one's false. One's true, one's false. Um, and uh, everyone was true, but of course, having been brought up in East Yorkshire when he mentioned Wet Wang, I knew that was a place because obviously Fang Foss is not too far away and all that kind of thing. And he mentioned Nether Thong. And I said, uh, it's near Upper Thong. One's at the top of the hill, and one's at the bottom of the hill. Is there a place in Derbyshire called Griffith Thong? Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> that idea. That very thought. <laughs> it's just very unpleasant. Blood curdling. Yeah. Um, David Coleman says the only way is to rule. <laughs> the only way to rule is to rule by fear. He genuinely, genuinely. I promise you, he did say that to me. Um, please now treat us to your Sean Connery accent, Mr. Oh, Bond. No, no. We've got to do what the people want. I, I've got to go and do a news bulletin so you can do what you want for three minutes. <laughs> 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 yes. Okay. I'll be great. Ash Grange. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure that's not a really a, good uh, one. No, it's not, is it? No, no, no. Well, it's not one that I claim to... No. Somebody did ask me to do it recently. I had, had an attempt at it, but... Um, for folks' sake, says uh, Video Rightly doing the rounds of codes Jaffa yesterday, right at the moment that we, you were reading my tweet for my 1.5 seconds of fame. Ease the hangover a little. Oh, you've got one of those, have you? No, not for us, of course. Certainly not for proper drinkers like Fletch. No. Andy says, uh, I'm sure David Milan isn't going to be too phased by verbals from the portly spinner. Reckon he'll be teeing off soon to make sure of hitting maximum batting points. Yeah, I don't think he will be either. He's seen it all before and probably the sort of character who might give a little bit back, actually. Might have a chirp back at you. Bent Nielsen says, enjoying the coverage so far, having a late breakfast. Could do without the imagery of the photographer's undergarment issues. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Law says, come on, you tykes. Nothing like the wind blowing up your gazebo. P.S. I was born in Dewsbury, but grew up living in Nafferton, not a million miles from Wetwang. Yes, they clearly all heard my... Uh quiz with Ian Sky. Apologies for that. But as I said after it, every opportunity to get cricket on the radio I think should be taken. Um, that drinks break, the prolonged drinks break has been completed. And here comes Alex Thompson, bowls, pushed out into the offside by Milan, fielded by oh, the second attempt by Lewis Deploy. The lead's 209. Not quite.
quite enough yet, I wouldn't have thought, but not far off. But will they push on a bit more? I'm sure Yorkshire is. Thompson's in and using his feet. Milan dances down the track towards the bowler, eases it into the offside. <laughs> the throw comes in from De Ploy. Uh, and Milan ends, Milan ends up on the floor. Not sure that he really needed to. Here we go with the update. Yeah, not really getting much better for Derbyshire either, Heidi. 320 for five now, Yorkshire. They lead by 209. No wickets in the first hour of the day's play. And David Milan, who's got to his century, was dropped twice, once on 88, once on 90. Uh, but he's gone to his 30th first-class century, his fourth against Derbyshire. He's on 101. Day. Uh, Matthew Revis is on 23 in Yorkshire, 320 for five. About what's going on, because I'm unsighted as to what's going on but he's with Tom Lungley at this moment in time. Back on the email, Phil says, born in Bradford, God's County, and moving to New Bowl, Chesterfield at an early age. The Chesterfield Twisted Tower has not yet been discussed. One theory still exists that the spire surprised turned to look at a virgin bride who was getting married in the church. It suggested the spire will return to its perpendicular state when another virgin bride is married to St Mary's and All Saints. Keep it going. Still missing Kelly. But you guys are going well. And there we go, a spire story. A story that you aspire to, maybe, Fletch, as Thompson is in and uh, cut by Milan into the deck, fielded by Harry Kane. No run, Ben Aitchison winging his arms around. He was doing that, though, at first slip earlier, and it didn't get the attentions of his skipper, but it looks more likely now, with the stretching he's doing, that he's going to be coming in into the attack soon. Thompson to Milan uses his feet nicely and picks out Aitchison with a lovely push up to long off on the carpet, one run I think I'm not entirely sure it's correct that we haven't discussed the spire, we mentioned it earlier this morning for yeah, a start it's, mentioned, isn't it? it's just out of view behind the trees away to the right but not so far away three quarters of a mile or so maybe Thompson over the wicket now to the right handed Revis who tries to flick this one to leg but doesn't make a good contact on it, end of the over 321 for five. Edward Harlan says, wonderful listening to your banter again. Better by far than the Ronnies or Morecambe and Wise. <laughs> listening to your place names with the radio. Wet Wang was the home of Peter Rabbitman Heap, a protege of Robert Mouseman Thompson. My mother oh, had a dresser yes, made the mouse by him. Man. He used to carve the mouse, the mouse into the... Yeah, absolutely. Says, My mother had a dresser made by him in 1969. Also, two other names that come to mind are Crackpot in Swaledale and Booze in Ark and Garthdale. That's Edward over in Weatherby. It's the land of Nod near Home on Spalding Moor as well. Yeah, I know somebody who lived in Home on Spalding Moor. Yeah, that's not far from my old stomping ground. Mark Watkins, new over from the lake end. Bowling to David Milani turns it into the leg side. And there's no run. A bit of information for uh, supporters of both counties. It's T20 finals, second T20 finals day on Thursday at, uh, at Wormsley. And... Derbyshire will play Yorkshire in the first semi-final at 10.30. Next delivery from what is pushed into the onside by Milan. Hampshire Glamorgan in the other semi at 1.45 at the final at 5 o'clock. I'd be surprised if it wasn't streamed as well by somebody. So one for your diaries there on Thursday. This one is uh, well, he's reaching for it a little bit and he's going to get four runs for it. Milan off the edge of the bat, bottom uh, half as well. And all the way down to third man for four runs. He moves on to 106 at 325 for five. So Derbyshire Yorkshire, 10.30 on Thursday. Mark Watt is having lots of luck this morning, but all of it bad, isn't he? Yes. yes if, it, if it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. 325 for five. Watt in balls. Maloney dances down the track and lifts it. And is that caught by Saranga Lakmal? It is. That is a sensational catch by the Sri Lankan. I thought it was going to sail away out to the long off boundary. And Milan, well, his luck's finally gone because that is brilliant. Lakmal's hurt himself as well. They're waving frantically to get the medical staff on. It looks as though Saranga is in a spot of bother out there, which wouldn't be great news for Derbyshire. But he's taken the catch. Milan goes for 106 and Yorkshire a 320. 25 for six. 
Well, no luck involved there for Mark Watt. He was just brilliant by the fielder. I mean, honestly, we well, struck that. He's getting the standing ovation here, and rightly so. He's played superbly. But it was the third chance he's given this morning off Mark Watt. And uh, if you keep giving those opportunities, sooner or later, somebody's going to be good enough to take one. But what a catch. Honestly, he dived full length. And there was a moment where he's clearly caught it, but you thought, He's going to be rolling on the floor, and you'll see the ball hit the boundary board at the far end. Exactly it looked as though it was one of those. That is a sensational catch. And uh, you've been treated this morning. If you're here in the ground, that's worth the entrance fee alone. Brilliant stuff from him. It Six is, wicket down. Especially for somebody who isn't necessarily renowned for his feeling. It was almost a throwback to Ravi Rampal taking a catch. Ravi, who barely used his hands when he was in the field, used to kick the ball a lot. Uh, at least Saranga Lackwell does field in the correct manner, but that was brilliant. I just hope he's OK. I'm looking there, and he, he looks all right. He's just putting his cap back on. I think he'll come off for a few minutes and be replaced by uh, Mitch Wagstaff, who has been 12th manning uh, at various points over the course of the day. But brilliant, brilliant from Saranga Lackwell. So Kate will give us uh, David Milan's figures. He finished with 106 off... 143 deliveries, including 16 fours, 16 fours and one six. Thank you. And that was on 75 point what overs? 75.4. That's why I needed the go. microphone. I just can't think of a way of doing it. There must be a way. Sure. Um, let me have a. If you just cut my mic for a mo. That would be a pleasure. I'd do it, do it by all means. <laughs> Here comes Watt in to bowl to the new batsman who is Dom Bess, and that one is turned immediately down towards long leg for a single, uh, for a couple. In fact, he's come back for two. The throw comes in from Alex Thompson. It just about is taken in by. Brooke Guest, the wicketkeeper, 3 for 63 now from just shy of 21 overs for Mark Watt. Who's in around the wicket, ball two best, who turns this one into the leg side. Lewis Reese does the fielding. Well, if, if you'd have told me you had one of those, we could have done it. Unbelievable. It's just magic to the, the exact kind of splitter that we need. What I've got, because we also need to split the... Oh, this is ridiculous. We also need to split the uh, the headphones. So that, that can easily be... innings here for Yorkshire on 23. There's a short leg, a leg slip, plus a slip. Thompson with his off spin. Fires that one in at the feet of Matthew Revis, who plays it quite comfortably out into the leg side. Bess wants to walk down and have a chat. Not quite sure.
Shoulder is said there. Keep your eye on the ball, maybe. <laughs> As, uh, he's in again, and that's lobbed for a while before it bounces on its way to Aitchison at deep mid on. They pick up one run. I rather hope he just said, don't get out. Yeah, maybe don't get out. Don't get out. He's bowling with a proper corky, something like that. Yeah, that the can hurt if you miss it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't forget to shout in when you get to the other end. <laughs> and no, I shouted in, said Revis, so I can't be run out. Even though it was two, two yards out. <laughs> Bess just resets the guard, and then he comes Thompson, the reverse sweep out straight away from Don Bess. So maybe he said, if you get me on strike, I'll, I'll play a reverse sweep. Everybody, make connection everybody with it. plays the reverse sweep now, don't they? My lad played it the other day. I tore an absolute strip off him. Play, pro play, play properly. Thompson bowled in, him. and he's bowled him. He has taken off the, taken out the off stump. And Don Best stands there in disbelief. He's gone for two. Yorkshire have lost a second wicket in quick succession. They're 328 for seven. Alex Thompson has been just pushing the one or two deliveries through, and he sneaked that one through the defences of Don Bess, who I still think can't believe that he's on his way back to the pavilion, but that is the case. And uh, Yorkshire still 22 runs shy of a third batting point here. I've lost their second wicket of the morning. Don Best, well, Don Best should be very interested in that, shouldn't he? As a spinner himself, if the ball is turning. Everybody expected it to turn. And uh, whether it did turn or not, I'm not entirely sure, but from our vantage point but it did something it certainly got through the uh, Don Best defence pegged the back off stump 328 for 7 the lead of 217 now just the four deliveries faced by Don Best got off the mark with his first and now uh, well an opportunity for Derbyshire to keep the uh, keep the lead down to Almost manageable levels, but not entirely. 217. How will Jordan Thompson approach this in a typical Jordan Thompson way? I know he's the man who makes things happen. Yeah, well, look, his, his red ball batting last year um, wasn't as good as it had been previously, shall we say. Mm. Uh, he's worked on it to some extent, I think, to bring things around this time. I'm not sure in terms of how he'll approach this. Let's, we'll, we'll find, find out. out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Will he go all guns blazing? He stepped across and pushes into the offside. No run. He, you know, from knowing him from being a nipper, he's always wanted to feel bat on ball. Mm. He likes to see, see the scoreboard ticking over. So that's the natural game. Around the wicket here, Thompson, and there we go. Jordan Thompson steps away and opens up the offside as if he were playing a white ball shot, really. Front leg out of the way, but it hit it straight along the deck to deploy. So, end of the over, wicket taken over by uh, Alex Thompson. Yorkshire have got a left hand, right hand combination. That will inevitably mean that we'll be finishing about quarter to seven tonight if they, um, if they <laughs> play for any length of time. time. Yeah. The, um, just the way he sets up in his stance. Jordan Thompson pretty much suggests that he wants to hit the ball as hard as he possibly can because that, that front foot is already, the front leg's already out of the way, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, he's a very good striker of the mm. ball. He's got a good eye. The, Roger Green says, uh, as Mark Wapigan's new over, it's to do with the spire. He's around mm. the wicket and bowls to... Revis, who clips this nicely into the leg side for a single. He'll move on to 25, bring Jordan Thompson on to strike. Uh, just in case you and your co-commentator would like to know, the distance from your gazebo to the Crooked Spire is 0.42 of a mile as the crow flies measured on the Ordnance Survey mapping app. Uh, I have to say, when I said three quarters of a mile... You thought you were a bit... Oh, no, no nearly went on to say it will be shorter than that if you don't go by, you know, if you go by if, air. If you take yeah. crow... Yeah, but it's sort of something yeah. like 0.75 on the road map thing when you do the sat nav. He says the distance between Derbyshire and Yorkshire is sadly increasing all the time. Although the two wickets, he says, just taken might limit the damage. 
He's not here today. Is this next delivery from what is defended by Thompson out into the offside? Rogers not here today. He's from Chesterfield, but he's attending the fracture clinic for a broken finger. Oh, unlucky, uh, Roger. Walt in. Thompson defends. Pushes it back towards him. So we've already had Thompson bowling to Thompson in the first innings, and now we've got uh, Thompson versus Thompson in the second innings. We're going to go through the whole Thompson twins thing again later, if you want. What bowls gives that one some air, driven by Thompson straight to Liz Deploy at uh, mid on. Jones versus Jones. Who sang that? I've no idea. Thompson has a whack at that one out towards Cow Corner, gets a single out to Hader in the far distance. And he's off the mark through 30 for seven. Was it cool in the gang? That's probably why you don't know who it was. That would that would be a reason for me not knowing. Fred Tim says, listen to uh, Fletch Sport and Jonathan Doidge from Chesterfield. It's this next delivery from Watt is pushed by Revis up to mid-off. Is a cross between county cricket coverage and an open university engineering course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, not Fred. <laughs> Good to hear from you. 3.30 for seven at the end of the hour. One, two, Thompson, 25 to Revis. Um, D. Dye says, uh, nice to hear Netherthong get a mention. I'm currently sat outside enjoying the sunshine, listening to the wonderful nonsense coming from the commentary box. Steady. I like the wonderful bit. The nonsense I'm not so keen on. That's the accurate part of it. <laughs> Good morning to you, Lily, who said it was a brilliant 106 by David Milan, and she loves to watch him bat. James Green, good morning to you, James. He says, hi, Jonathan Crew. It's clear Derbyshire's poor bowling in the afternoon session has handed Yorkshire a huge advantage. I think the original comment that anything in excess of 300 on this pitch will be excellent was correct. Thoroughly enjoying the coverage. Alex Thompson to continue at the pavilion end. Let's have a look at the field now, because one or two changes. Short leg plus a slip. Yeah, you can't stand there, Waggy. Waggy 12. looked like he'd just been sent on at a straight, very straightish long off, no, but he's he, just been he's sent at, off the field. Yeah, so Saranga Lakmal is back, which is the good news for Derbyshire. So Saranga Lakmal back on the field after taking that catch to dismiss David Mullan. So he's at deep mid on. Mark Watt is brought in at mid wicket, mid off cover point, and a cover sweeper as Thompson pushes this one back to Alex Thompson. But as Fletch says, and sometimes when you watch players all the time, you sort of get used to them and fail to mention things. And when somebody sees somebody rarely, they're straight latching onto, onto their demeanour. And Fletcher sort of picked that out as Thompson pushes one back into the onside that immediately Jordan Thompson, yeah, he does feel like he's, he's got a different mindset coming out there and he wants to be on the attack. It's just something about his, his stance and the way he's playing these. He's got that little dip at the knees flexing at the knees as he waits for the bowler to come in. Thompson does that, and that's pushed away back at a point. Well, he almost shapes up like a baseball batter. He, he just feels like he walks out to bat sometimes, Tom Owen says, I'm, I'm here for a good time. Not a, Not a long time yeah. sometimes, yeah. yeah. If he was there for a long time, the score would certainly motor on. He's uh, step back here, there you go. He gets the shoulders open, but he lofted that, didn't really time it. Got it out to Lamb, who is that cover sweeper, and picks up one run. But much more feeling of aggression about uh, Jordan Thompson than, for example, about Matthew Revis in his batting so far today. I don't think as a bowler you mind it too much if you're bowling to Jordan Thompson. He, he will give you an opportunity, won't he? he? He may score a few runs, he may score a lot of runs, but there'll always be that thought that you've got a chance as a bowler. Catches on high alert. Thompson in again, and Revis just drops that into the offside. Like what? Skipping in. Cursing his luck for the early part of the day, but certainly nothing lucky about the wicket of Milan and an absolutely sensational catch by Lackmal. Thompson in again, right over the top of this one this time, Revis. Pushed out into the offside, no run, 3.31 for seven. When you pay to come and watch professional sport, one of the things that you 
think, want to see is things that you wouldn't see at a lower level. That's why you're paying the money, and something like that would be a case in point. Absolutely. Absolutely. And remarkable purely for the person that, that took the catch. Because he, I, I have no idea if he would admit it because we don't speak to Sir Angle because he doesn't speak English, but I'm sure he would admit fielding isn't the thing that he enjoys the most. Mark Watt into Jordan Thompson, who goes back and, well, he cuts it and it goes just beyond Wayne Madsen and the throw comes in from Alex Thompson, which is well held by Brooke Guest. That wasn't too far away from being a dismissal. 31 for 7, it remains. I'm starting to feel conscious that since we mic'd Kate up, she hasn't had anything to add so far. She seems happy enough, though. It's coming. There we go. She's still here, everybody. Thompson launches this out towards long on for 6. That's a mighty blow. You could feel it coming. And that is a big, big hit. It's gone into the, uh, the very nice purple tree far end of the ground. I'm sure, it, I'm sure it's a particular type, but I've no idea what it is. And the fielder out there, I think he's Hader Alley, is now going into parts of Chesterfield he never imagined existed. Uh, he's down in a ditch at the moment. I can just see his head bobbing around, and now he's climbing over a fence. I'm not sure that's what you want your overseas to be doing, necessarily. Scrambling about in the brambles underneath the tree. He's now just reappeared, but... He's a long way, he's a long way away, is Hader. He's miles away. What? The word uh, village is about to be introduced into the commentary because he's, oh, he's found it. Well done, Hader, he's found it. And he's on his way back now. He'll have to drop back into the ditch. He'll have to climb over, <laughs> back over the fence and then back into the ground. Really, that one all all he needs ground. to do now is, is get his throw wrong and it hits somebody who was sitting there in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> it nearly happened this morning. I was standing talking to a couple of speckies, and when they were warming up, a couple of, I don't know if the, if the Derbyshire bowlers were practising to hit me, but I was standing right behind the line of the stumps, and a couple of balls did rattle against the boards. But one of them ended up in, in the seating, and the guy who picked it up tried to throw it back. He got his throw completely wrong. Honestly, it was, it was inches away from cracking somebody on the back of the head. And that there were... That was oblivious can. The person who nearly got hit didn't realise they were talking to somebody else looking in the opposite direction. It would have been hilarious, but very dangerous. It's not that long before the second new ball's available. I'm not sure that they're using the original ball, actually. I don't think he found it. Mark Watt's got a ball, though, and he bowls it to Thompson, who turns into the leg side. And Hader, who's just spent the last five minutes in the undergrowth, comes in off the boundary to do the fielding. Single taken, 338 for seven. Nine now to Jordan Thompson. Matthew Revis, who's on strike now, has 25 from 69 balls. And what balls to him and pushes it out into the offside. It's fielded by Lear's deploy. It's interesting because if this were the way that T20 is played and they do the matchups, they wouldn't normally be bowling spinners against Jordan Thompson. This one is swept by uh, Revis out to. The man on the square leg boundary. It was Alex Thompson, single taken 339 for seven. He's got a pretty good record at banging the slow bowlers out of the park. It's when the pace men come on, it gets a bit more difficult. And similarly, his, his card, if you like, in red ball cricket is of that ilk. What balls over the wicket to him? He goes back into his crease and misses the ball. Goes through to the wicket keeper, Brooke Guest, end of the over at seven, eight runs off the over. Revis has 25, Thompson has 9, Yorkshire 339 for 7. So, in his red ball career so far, Jordan's record is best against off-spinners. Um, he's only been dismissed three times, and uh, he averages 35. Slow left armers, he averages 32.5. He's only been dismissed four times. Gets a bit more difficult for him against right-arm seamers. And uh, leggies. The David Griffin there just we go. Uh, crushing another. So the second new ball is taken, <laughs> and they've gone back to seam straight away. So that might change things slightly as far as Jordan is concerned. We'll see. Matthew Revis, though, is going to be the man on strike. I'm just glad that uh, Saranga at Lackmal's okay. 
after that catch, which no doubt David Griffin will have got captured for pos posterity. He might not have done that. The Lackmel catch. Uh, <laughs> it's a blur. So here is Lackmel. He's now got a, some tubey grip on his uh, right elbow as he's in. Revis just pushing forward at that into the offside, but uh, it misses his contact. 26 to him, 9 to Jordan Thompson with that uh, big six. This is uh, Lackmel's fourth spell. There we go. I can, do th I, I can make that voice, but I have to use the helium. Yeah, I was going to say that <laughs> slightly more soprano than, than bass baritone. Over the wicket, Lackmel. And at Revis, you'll have heard the contact if you're just listening there. Bat on ball, pushed it up to deploy at mid-off. Don't let me forget my 12.45 York, will you? No, I won't. I'm reminding you now to remind me well, I'm, in about I, 15 minutes. I will remind you because I'm going up to do my 12.30. <laughs> I will I'll switch the microphone off, but I'll switch it back on so you can still talk to Kate. It all gets a bit messy. Lackmal then, building up a head of steam down the incline, which is six foot from end to end, were advised, as uh, Revis just drops this into the onside this time. There is no run. You can get in touch on at Jonathan Doidge on Twitter or at Fletch Sport. The BBC. There's a picture of Norman. He sent us a picture of him uh, uh, by email. That, that he, th he thinks this is the same picture they used in 1979 when it was uncovered. I was going to say, it must have looked like a 70s picture. I'm gonna say. Yeah. Yes, it does a bit, doesn't it? You can't buy those coats anymore, can you? Sort of Gilbert O'Sullivan meets Mike Hendrick in that yes. uh, picture. Yeah. In comes Lackmal, and that is wide of off stump and Revis shoulders arms. There's no run. We're talking about Mike... Uh, Hendrick last night, or sitting around having a beer. One of those. There might be an update for Radio Leeds. Uh, Radio Leeds, Radio Derby fairly shortly. Radio Leeds are still listening to uh, the internet at the moment. Saranga Lackmel. Bowling, 2-2-8. Two, two, the Yorkshire lead. As Lackmal is on his way in and bowls. That one is uh, pushed out nicely for four runs by Revis out to the extra cover boundary. Really nice shot from Matthew Revis. 343 for seven now. He moves on to 30. Updates this afternoon with Chris Coles, I believe. There's a the thing. Coles is standing in for Sally Pepper all week, as far as I'm aware. Lackmal at the top of his mark again with that, as Jonathan described, that gauze on his right arm. He's in and bowls, and Revis defends. And defends very straight. Harry Kane with the fielding. He's come around from mid on to pick the ball up. Score at the end of the average 343 for 732 Revis, nine to Jordan Thompson. It looks like uh, Mark Watt's going to continue despite the fact that they've taken the new ball. Ben Aitchison is uh, continuing to warm up. Delivery ball by Thompson, uh, by what rather, is turned into the offside or pushed into the offside. In comes Watt again, bowls, and this one is launched again into the leg side. Hayden runs around the boundary, can't get there. And uh, 
a gentleman in a blue t-shirt just takes it very calmly with his left hand one bounce four into the far distance to 347 347 for seven. Mark Watt polishing the ball. You don't want the new ball being smashed to all parts, in all honesty. That one was. Wayne Madsen has a word with Lear's deploy. In comes Watt. Ball's reverse sweep comes out, misses. Madsen at slip. Does the fielding. Three forty seven for seven it remains. I'm not even sure if I'm doing an update now. What bowls? This one beats no it doesn't beat because it's pushed out into the offside by Thompson. Fielded by Lewis Reese. Three four seven for seven. It remains. Watt comes in again. Over the wicket, balls to Thompson, goes back into his crease and cuts for four. Nice shot. He made full contact with that one. De Jordan Thompson, 350 up for Yorkshire. Another bonus point. 351 for seven. He moves up to 17. This one is lodged back to Lear's deploy, who takes the catch, and Jordan Thompson has gone. 351 for eight. Now, at Derbyshire, uh, Yorkshire, and they're clearly not coming to me, so I'm off. Ended at 23. Jordan Thompson's innings ends at 17, playing, well, guess what? An attacking shot. So, 351 for eight. You really did uh, feel that, did Lear's deploy? Sharp catch, wasn't it, in the end? Sharpish, certainly. 17 from how many, balls. Kate? 20? 20 yeah. Two fours, one six. Incoming batter, Matthew Fisher. Mark Watt now has four wickets. Yeah, I need to look it up, don't I, really? I'm not sure what his best figures in uh, first-class cricket are. And they didn't necessarily be with Darwish. We did play a first-class game or two with Yorkshire. The Yorkshire, Scotland, same thing. Um, his best bowling, well, this is his best bowling. Three for 35 was his best. So we've got two bowlers who've got best figures now in the match. Matthew Fisher in the first innings. The, uh, the smell of some kind of dinner wafting through the commentary box. Don't forget your quarter to. <laughs> You're going to have to untangle something with one hand. That's not an easy thing to do, Dodgy. It right. isn't, but no. manual dexterity is not one of mine. That's, very, that's very impressive. There you go. You see, I've gone early with the, the headphones and good it's a good did. thing, isn't it? Yeah, really? it is a good job you did. Could have got my report in a real tangle. Here's Lackmal from the pavilion end and that's dropped into the, well, I'm going to say offside, but actually Lackmal himself feels it and he's followed through. Two slips and a gully in place here. Revis is reasonably well set, of course. Not out on 30. He's been out there throughout the morning. Matthew Fisher at the non-striking end, the new man in for Yorkshire. It'll keep, it'll keep Watt on for another over with this new ball. Lackmal turns then, coming in past on by a Tom Lungley. Oh, that one doesn't bounce. And no. Revis tries to play the right shot to it in terms of the length it was bowled at. Yep, the cut shot is doing it again. But it doesn't bounce at all, really, under the bat which is interesting. There's just been the odd one of those yesterday as well. And if you're unfortunate enough to get a straight one, 
You could be in a bit of bother. Yes, it's it's not uh, it's not what you want to see as a Derbyshire batsman, is it really? Like well in again, as we hear puffing Billy in the background and Revis. That's a lovely shot by Matthew Revis. Open the face, gets it away back at a point. Good piece of fielding out there to deny him the boundary. And they're going to get back for a comfortable two. Just the two wickets left. Matthew Fisher, he's uh, not the worst as a holder of the bat. Uh, nor is Ben Code, of course, and he's going to be the last man in. So him thrashed the ball to all parts of Headingley last year for his highest first class score, 60 odd. Has a bit of fun on his day. Revis on 32 then. There's Lackmal in bowling again. It's wide of off stump and not tempted to play at this one. He's been disciplined, hasn't he, Matthew Revis? I think that's yeah. been a feature of his innings. Absolutely. If you don't bowl it at me, I'm probably going to leave it. Did Chanceless did so far, he's yeah, 32, so. isn't it? That was the 80th delivery that he's faced. Six fours have accounted for uh, 24 of his 32 runs. Remember, of course, he did open the batting in his first innings in first-class cricket as a teenager. So it's not like he wasn't valued as a batter by the county in the first place. But he's found his way back into the team more as an all-rounder. He's uh, stepping across and, again, not interested in playing another ball wide above stump. So he's used to being top of the order player as a youngster. He's got uh, plenty of shots. And he's got good discipline out there as we're seeing. I'm just tapping the back of his neck there. I think he's starting to feel the heat. Mid on. Like Malan. Can he challenge Revis this time? It's a better delivery and gets Revis to play at it. Short of length. Good piece of fielding though at point. Denies him a run. So end of the 82nd. Two overs with this second new ball. And uh, already we've seen a wicket taken with one of those. 353 for eight. Lead up to 242. Uh, a couple of wickets in hand. Oh, yeah, the lunch is ready. Look, they're all pouring in. <laughs> somebody, somebody say food. <laughs> Never seen so many corporates leave at the same time. There's a man can't go for a wonder around the boundary. Get him on comms, yeah. I'm not sure... Zaman's English, which uh, so far I've heard him, heard him say the words thank you and food. <laughs> He's just punching the, uh, tapping the Derbyshire badge as uh, Watt's first delivery is left alone by Matt Matthew Fisher. And the ball goes through to Brooke Guest. He's walking around the boundary with the uh, bowling and coaching staff. This one is pushed into the offside by Fisher. What are we now? 20 minutes away from the lunch interval. As again, Fisher just pushes this one into the offside again, and there's no run. It's one of them spells at the moment, isn't it? it there's is, a few of those and there's no runs. Yeah, very quiet. Next delivery from what again, pushed into the offside. This time back at a square, Matt Lamb comes in to do the fielding. Mark Watt just uh, going through his over very nicely. Four for 83, his best bowling figures in first-class cricket. Goes back this time, does Fisher again, pushes it out into the offside. And Aitchison starts leaping around at second slip. Lea's deploy picks the ball up, 3.53 for eight. Lily's hoping that uh, these two 
continue. The two Matthews, of course, it's Matthew and Matthew out there, isn't it? Matthew Fisher leaves that delivery. It the is. Matthew twins? No. Uh, Maiden over from Mark Watland, surprisingly, given the, uh, the mayor's here. Everybody, I hope it's the mayor. It's either the mayor or somebody who's uh, just bought a very mm -hmm. large chain and stuck it around his neck. Mr. T, I think it is. <laughs> it's one or the other, isn't it? I think it's the mayor. So 353 for eight. Now, Yorkshire. From the end, and we are going to see a change. So uh, Mark Watt might not get his first five for him further. Oh, no, that's, he's, he's replacing Sir Angle Lightwell, so I'm talking absolute nonsense. Not for the first time, it has to be said. You can agree with me if you want, Kate. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> I've heard <laughs> enough of your nonsense last night. Yeah, well... Yeah. And just, just practices the bowling. You might want to, to be heard properly, you might just want to lift that close to that. There we go. That'll be better. It'll be a lot louder now. Didn't want people to hear me breathing. Oh, don't worry about that. As long as we're breathing, that's the main thing. Aitchison bowls, and the ball is driven by Matthew Reeves up towards Alex Thompson at mid on. And there's no run, and after that, we, yeah, you do breathe quite heavily, don't you? <laughs> we can't, we can't independently turn our two microphones down. If that makes any sense, one one is turned down, they're both down. Uh, this one is outside the off stump, and only just by the oohs and the ahs outside the off stump from Ben Aitchison, left alone by Matthew Revis, who's batted really nicely for his 32. Aitchison, known universally as the big one, even though there are at least two bowlers taller than him in the Derbyshire squad now. I think he's just always been called that. I imagine he has. He's in again now and bowls to Fisher, who leaves that one outside the off stump to go through to Brook Guest. Lead 240 ish, 242. In fact, do deal in approximations a lot of the time. That's what cricket's all about. <laughs> approximations. I did have a message saying uh, about the about the wicket, the pitch that's being used. This one is driven by Fisher up towards Thompson, and there's no run. So that we wouldn't. Norman suggested it was the same pitch that they used in 1979, but the entire square was relayed in the winter, so it won't necessarily be the same pitch, of course. Same position, perhaps. The two main pitches used here at Queen's Park. One, two pitches to the right will be used next Sunday for the T20. As Fisher waits and gets an edge through to the keeper, the finger goes up. He can't quite believe it. He was already remarking his guard. His head is bowed down. He's been given by uh, Tom Lungley. He didn't think he hit it at all. And, uh, well, he's dragging himself away now. He's barely moved 10 yards. He removes one glove with some anger. And Yorkshire are 353 for nine now with a lead of 242. And poor old Matthew Revis goes for 32. There you go. Exactly as we were suggesting, Brooke Guest with the catch. I must admit, when I saw it, I wasn't 100% certain that he'd hit it either. It certainly wasn't a noise, and, well, Revis clearly doesn't think he hit it because he still hasn't got off the pitch yet. He's holding the bat upside down. He should acknowledge the applause of the crowd, though, because it's been a very good innings from Matthew Revis. He's, he was out there for a long time, Kate. Yeah, he was out there for, let me see, uh, an hour and 53 minutes. Um, and his 32 came off 88 balls with six fours. 88 deliveries for his 32. Just having a look back at, at yesterday, Sean Massoud was only faced 81 deliveries for his 67. Adam Lyth, 63 balls for his 48. So it's been a 55 ball, 24 Johnny Tassel. So it's been one of the longer innings in terms of balls for Yorkshire. And now we're in that position where do Derbyshire really want to get this last wicket in the next four minutes and face an over before lunch? And the answer is probably no, given that Hader Ali hasn't been uh, in 
spectacular red ball form, shall we say. Been an awful lot of dot balls in a row there. Looking at my computer screen. There's been uh, 13 dot balls yeah. consecutively. Put the pressure on. Aitchison into Ben Code, who drives very pleasantly into the offside square, fielded by Lewis Rees. Ben Aitchison is a happy man. He's picked up two wickets now, two for 61. Very expensive, well, relatively expensive. Two for 61 in 10 to him. Mark Watt, four for 83, and has the opportunity for his first five for in first class cricket. And the salad's arrived. <laughs> I do hope it's not salad. I've genuinely never seen as much salad in my life as yesterday. Sausage rolls are on the way as well, which is good news. That's something that will please Doji no end. He didn't hit that, by the way. He didn't? Well, he clearly didn't think he did. I wasn't 100% certain. Mark Watt from the lake end bowls to Fisher, who pulls it into the leg side. And there's no room. 88 balls. Thank you. Six fours. You knew I was just about to ask that. Well, I asked, I asked Kate. Because I was, I was, I'm always one out in that kind of thing when I look on the Ooh, computer. Oh, one year out. Yes. <laughs> That's the problem when you use technology. It's not quite as up to date as the person it's sitting next beings. to you. Human beings, Kate. Got to rely on them. They, they can be unreliable, of course. As what is in around the wicket and bowls. This one's straight up in the air. Is it going to be caught by Saranga Lakmal? Two fielders are converging on it. It's taken by Hader Ali in the end. And Mark Watt does have a five for his first in first class cricket. Terrific effort from him. He finishes with five for 83. Uh, Fisher goes for a duck. Uh, Code ends up on naught, not out. And Yorkshire are 353 all out. It means they have a first innings lead of 242. I believe. <laughs> Is that my cue to talk? Well, no, yep, only yep. if you want. If you, do you want to say something? I think it's been, um, oh, be. it's been an interesting morning's cricket. There's clearly still something in it for the bowlers out there. Yeah, Yorkshire. Might, might have been over before lunch as well, which isn't great. <laughs> Yorkshire um, might, uh, might have fancied themselves to bat a little bit longer than they did and maybe take a, another bonus point or so, but uh, they've still got three of those in the locker to go with those three bat, uh, bowling bonus points. And they have a very healthy lead, don't they, of uh, oh, whatever it was, 242 to take with them into the second inning. So uh, very much ahead of the game. The game is moving on um, at uh, pace. And you wouldn't put it past things to see this game finish today. There are still a better part of 70 overs remaining. Well, I'm glad you mentioned to take it. 10 more no, wickets or Derby. Is the applause for Mark Watt ah. as he leaves the field. Showing the ball to all parts. It's the new ball, so it's the one which he took uh, a couple of wickets with, not all five. Uh, and he removes his Derbyshire sun hat, gets the applause as he leaves the field. So Mark Watt, 25 overs and three balls, eight, uh, eight maidens, five for 83. A terrific effort from Mark Watt, his first first class five wicket hole. Um, now, are they going to go to lunch now, or are we going to see one over? I'm not entirely certain. We should see one over. Yeah, we should. It was, um, it was 12.48. Mm -hmm. That's not good, is it? Not good for Derbyshire. We, if we see one over, we'll be back for it. If we don't see one over, we'll see you in 40 minutes. How about that, Dodgy? Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense, David. Lovely. We'll see you, uh, we'll see you in either 10 or 40 minutes.
our balls to read. Sunday, 18th of June, in the Vitality Blast. Very few tickets remain available to purchase. Here we go! An unbelievable shot! Really nice shot! That's a terrific catch! I'll take one! Oh! Two straight! Two two! Two six three! to read it.
girl in I'm balls to read I'm here. I've just had my sandwich. I've got two warm sausage rolls to come, but I shall keep those for after one o'clock. Yeah? Eighty-one for five this morning. Triumph. Derbyshire win a session of cricket. Shock. In a 
my balls to read it. Oh, we just reached lunch here, Heidi and Derby should have won a session in a match for the first time in a long time, I fancy. 81 for five this morning, Yorkshire all out for 353. It does, though, mean they lead by 242. The star this morning, Mark Watt, who finished with career best figures of five for 83 from 25 and a half overs. Bold really nicely, picked up three this morning, but it's going to be a long way before uh, Derby can save this game. They'll be batting after lunch. After lunch. In um, 
balls to read. Terrific catch! Well, tap one! Oh, no! 
holes to read. This Excuse way. Go 
Chicken and Balls to read. Really Yeah, for that for that first sort of cutaway, I, I left you on, yeah. It's quite interesting, I thought. Well, and then I heard the word thong or something. I was like, wait. Upper thong. <laughs> wait a minute. Upper thong and nether thong are two places near Rudersfield. He was asking me if they were in real Yorkshire place names or not, and it all pretend that he asked me if they were real names. And I really <laughs> I just, I can't turn them down. Here we go. <laughs> Unbelievable shot. Really mad shot. That's a terrific catch. I'll take one. Oh! <laughs> Two straight. Two good. Two, six, three.
Girl in I'm balls to read it. to read it. Mention the ice cream for These are from the umpires Tom Lumley and Chris Watts and Yorkshire, led by Captain Sean Massoud. Did you hear that? Opening the batting for Derbyshire, Harry Kane and Lewis Reese. Welcome back to Queen's Park in Chesterfield, where 
Derbyshire are going out to bat for the second time in the match, having made 111 first time round. Yorkshire responded with 353. That was a lead of 242. And Derbyshire's opening batsmen are Harry Kame and Lewis Rees, not Hader Alley. I think that's a, that's a decision that has been arrived at after much deliberation about uh, how Hader has done with the ball that moves in the uh, short time that he's been with Derbyshire. Pretty good in the white ball stuff towards the end of that first phalanx, if indeed they are a phalanx, of matches. However, with the red ball, he's, uh, well, he's struggled a bit. Ben, ben Coward, as you just said, is going to be bowling from the pavilion end. Doji will be back. Unfortunately, somebody's just handed him an ice cream, uh, which was probably worth about £18.50 by Chesterfield prices. It's the most enormous ice cream I've ever seen. Very nice, it looks, too. Don't try, Doji, don't try. He's going to try. Yeah, many thanks to, to Mark Bailey, a.k.a. Yorkshire Lad, for bringing me this. It wasn't requested or anything like that. No, he just, it wasn't. So no, he, no. He, I mentioned he's president of the Johnny Tap fan club. He came for a word with Johnny with this huge ice cream on him and then, surprisingly, just handed it to me. Well, mainly because Johnny Tattersall's got the uh, wicketkeeper's pads and gloves on and he's currently out there in the middle, so it would have been difficult. It would have been great if he'd had an ice cream, wouldn't it, while he was keeping wicket. Here's Ben Code then, in from the pavilion end, and ball into Harry Kane, who defends this into the... I've umpired with a coffee before, junior games. I think might, might have even umpired with a pint of shandy before. I bet the coffee was better than you. Yeah, me. Made some good decisions, that coffee. <laughs> Time in a few minutes, but I will get them. The uh, stats for Hader Alley. Since he arrived, in goes code again, balls to Kame, who defends again into the on side. I think we'll be seeing a fair amount of that over the uh, the next wee while. Be surprised if we didn't, in all honesty. So Hader Alley as an opening. Oh, for goodness sake, Fletcher, sort yourself out. In goes Ben Code again, and oh, beats Harry Kame outside the off stump. He played down one line, the ball just nibbled away from him and went down another. Uh, that was close, that was close, too close for comfort really, but it remains naught for naught. That should remain 242 runs behind. So far this season, Hader Ali in uh, 10 innings has got 100, oh dear, that, that tells the story, 157 runs as Kane manages to squeeze this away. Back on a square on the leg side. Derbyshire up and running, they think about two, they say no. And his average in first class cricket is just 17. Whereas Lewis Rees, who is an opener by trade, has an average of 44 and a half in his five innings so far. More runs than Hader. And uh, Harry Kame is averaging 44 and a half with 178 runs in five innings going into this one. So it, it's a move that makes sense to many, many people. First ball faced by Lewis Rees then. Around the wicket comes Code and he leaves this one alone to go through to the keeper. Finley Bean's very excitable young chap, isn't he? Very, very. He, he, he hasn't stopped clapping since he went out there. Finley Bean. One of the Harrogate Beans. I've been queried on that by at least two different people. One without loss. Oh my, no, there wasn't a half past one, was there? That's good. Um, that one's pushed into the leg side. I thought I'd missed me half past one, but there isn't a half past one. What's your next one, Doge? About an hour. In about an hour, as we like to call it. 
End of the first over. Derbyshire won without loss, trailing by 2.43. Dodgy's getting close to finish. That look, does look a nice, um, nice flaky type thing, isn't it? The, and the ice cream's all the way to the bottom. Yeah, all the way to the bottom, the ice cream. We didn't get one, Kate, though, did we? We didn't get one. No. And, he, and he's managed to eat it without spilling any of it down his lilac T-shirt. I like to think that I'm just more popular than you two, so... I know what you like to think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact, I think. Oh, right. You know, I claim it is a fact. The ball for the late count. Oh, Matthew yeah, no, Fisher. So, Matthew Fisher, first innings five for best figures in first class cricket. He'll be bowling from the, the lake end and he'll be bowling to Harry Kane. He's in and Kane goes back into his crease and forces the ball up to mid on. No run without loss. It's going to be one of those afternoons. I've just been talking, well, not just, during the lunch break, I walked around the back and had a quick word with the uh, with the ground staff who usually know these things. They said there's 60% chance of rain around three and then more rain at six. I don't really think anybody knows where this rain is going to go. As Fisher is in and balls to came again. That's Look at that now. I've I've got holes in my T-shirt, and I've put two pen marks on it so far today. I mean, it's absolutely pitiful. Can't take you anywhere. No, you're absolutely right. Absolutely pathetic. This is back to his mark at the far end of the ground. The, uh, the seats in the direct sun are slightly less... Uh, full than they were before lunch and surprisingly as Fisher is on his way in full delivery and Kane forces it out into the leg side slightly unconvincingly but he does pick up his second run of the innings and Derbyshire are two without loss I've just been asked if I'll go on the radio tomorrow morning at 20 past 8 to talk about how hot it is <laughs> which is right up my street of course when I was at Hove a few weeks ago, I was asked on you know, like a Sunday afternoon program to talk about fashion. Really? I think I'm better qualified to talk about heat than you are about fashion, having been sitting in the heat for two days and you haven't been sat in what you're sitting in. <laughs> fashion? You don't like a bit of lilac, darling. I don't mind the lilac. Thanks delivery from Fisher is left alone by Lewis Reese outside the upstump goes through to Tatis. I'm more concerned by the shorts. Really? Yeah. Or what's poking out of the shorts. <laughs> I'm sorry. Steady. His legs. As Charles Hawtrey walks past the front of the commentary <laughs> position. <laughs> I never use innuendo. If I ever see it in a, in a bit of copy, I'll whip it out. In goes... Fisher again, a full delivery. He's kept that one out with the bottom end of his bat. Hence the appeals for leg before wicket might be slightly redundant. Although Fisher clearly thought it hit his pad or his foot first. Because he kept his hands firmly on his head. Yeah, the, there are certain appeals, and I think Matthew Fisher's is one that's distinctive. When he feels he's got his man, he will continue down the pitch towards him turning to the umpire and not only does he raise his hands and appeal he shakes his arms at the same time and that you That's always out, know it? that he yeah well he, he often get, hasn't given at that point and that was one of those but it was not out two without loss this fish is in again and this one is clipped into the leg side nicely by Lewis Reese. they might think about two here yes they're going to think about two as in off the boundary comes Matthew Revis and, uh, who didn't think he was out earlier on today and I have to say I have a certain amount of sympathy with him I didn't hear a noise at all in the headphones and those two runs take Derbyshire up to four without loss that was a magnificent ice cream by the way it looked it thank you Yorkshire yeah. lad yeah. Uh, it's the best it's got to be the best ice cream I've had for a long long time deep filled waffle cone very apt for a commentator full of that Soft ice cream as well, not the stuff you have to bite. You know, the stuff that trickles down well, we on a warm it. day like this yeah. with well, the flight. showed it to everybody. Briefly. The Yorkshireman does love a freebie. 
Well, it's pretty warm here, and it's, if you're talking heat tomorrow, then I'm sure you'll be doing something along the lines of there's going to be quite a few sweaty jog straps out there today. <laughs> I might use it, yeah. I'll write that down. Code coming in over the wicket then to bowl here to Harry Kane, right-handed, turns that round the corner, Revis into field. No run. Finley Bean, you were mentioning Finley, who's a... Well, the, the, the lads are all great lads, I've got to say, when you have a chat with them. And uh, Finley's no different, always always a bit of fun. He said, what do you think, Dodgy? I said, well, if you don't win this from here, you want shooting. Excellent. And he said, sacking? And I said, well, no, just shooting, I think. <laughs> Not the same effect. In comes Code. Oh, now that's good delivery that beats Harry Kane. LBW shout given. And so Derbyshire have lost their first wicket of the second innings. Code in and among straight away. And Harry Kane has gone for two. Derbyshire four for one in the third. Yeah, it looked pretty straight, didn't it? Looked pretty straight. Just, Harry yeah, Kane just poking at the ball, Kane. not really forward. Harry Kane goes for two. And Derbyshire, well, they're 238 behind still. This game could indeed finish today. Which would mean it would save Mark Watt from having to be interviewed by me because we'll speak to Mickey. But uh, nicely bowled by uh, Ben Code. Two from how many deliveries was that, Kate? Two from nine. How many fours? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2.0 what overs? 2.2. Oh dear. Funny, we only, only got to the second ball of the over and I couldn't remember how many balls had been bowled in it. That's how terrible I am. You're too busy talking about your ice cream. <clears throat> Matt Lamb walking out at number three. Matt Lamb at number three? What on earth is going on with the Derbyshire they must have had a, They must have had a draw for They're the, just picking the numbers batting out, order. They're just picking numbers out of a hat. Matt Lamb's gone into bat at number three. <laughs> So if, you, if you're going to talk about the heat tomorrow and talk about sweaty job straps, you, you clearly need to get Griff on yes, as well as part yes, of the deal, don't his, you? Uh, with his underpants that were yeah. like... Uh... I, judge, I, judge the, I judge the heat with um, how many how many pairs of underpants I'm going to go through in each session. Lovely. It's a six-set six day today. <laughs> it was full, wasn't it, that delivery by Banco? That was the key. And he didn't really manage to get much in the way of foot movement in Harry Kane, so he looked in trouble. We are sitting at no sort of angle to have any clue, really. Just felt like it, it was reasonably straight. He didn't move off the straight to try and play it. So code in. Oh, it's a good start as well. A few yelps around and hands on head in the Yorkshire cordon, which is uh, how many strong there is... Several. Um, yeah. No, it's trying to, I tried that thing of identifying people without looking closely enough. I'm just trying to identify from the body language. I think it's George Hill still at first slip as usual. Adam Lyle at second. Jordan Thompson, I think, looking at the, the way he's standing, is under the lid at gully. With the helmet on. Coding again. It's wide this time of off stump. And dot ball. They've got a short leg in place. Ben Cliff, number 26, with his back to us, is at straight mid-wicket, so somebody hasn't gone out there at the moment. Bless you. Matthew Revis is in the covers. Shan Masood has brought himself in pretty close, hasn't he? Just off the cut strip, probably six, seven feet away to the offside of straight and about 18 yards from the bat. There's a point in place as well. Very attacking field, as you'd expect, with such a, a big lead. Latest delivery. Pushed into the offside by Lamb, and there's no run. The one lone fielder out there, poor old Matthew Revis. Friendless down at long leg. There's David Milan. Doesn't seem to be out there, does he? Exhausted. <clears throat> Heat stroke. Code. In again, right arm over the wickets. He's trying to flick this one to leg, and again... <laughs> They feel like they're in the game with every delivery at the moment. Yorkshire and the pressure on the Derbyshire batters. He's uh, cranked up. End of the over. Three of them now complete for Derbyshire. Second time around. They trail by 200. 
and the 38 runs at four for one. Yeah, it's going to be a good victory from here. Derbyshire. <laughs> I couldn't even get to the end of the sentence without laughing. Uh, they'll do well not to lose today. That was a wicket maiden. Excellent, code. a wicket maiden. There we go. Just what you want. Nicely underlined. There's Matthew Fisher. As well, his second over. Three conceded from his first. He bowls to Lewis Reese, who's struck on the pad and gone. Leg before wicket. Reese can't believe it. He just stands and stares at the umpire and eventually turns around. Fisher gets his first wicket. It's Yorkshire's second. Derbyshire a four for two. We might not get till T. Yeah, optimism classes run by David Fletcher are uh, available online. There's no point in being optimistic without any reason to be optimistic, Jonathan. And I haven't seen anything so far Louis that has given me a reason to be optimistic. Have you? Okay. Two. Of how many deliveries there, uh, Kate? Six deliveries. No how many, fours. How many fours? He's learning. He's learning. Oh, going to catch well, him, there. you'd well, think it was a different deck again, wouldn't you? I wonder who. Uh, I wonder who's the lucky person who's going to come out and bat. Wayne Madsen. Maybe like Mal. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's a bit uncharitable from a man at the back of the box who shall remain nameless. He said he was half expecting Charlie Caroli. Four for two, trailing by 238. I haven't got one update today because they won't need to do the half past two one, will I? Oh, I thought I might have none then because uh, my next one is half past two. Uh, it'll be all right. There'll be nothing then. A couple of days off. Pop over the Peak District, yeah. a bit of walking, something like that. Yeah, with the shorts. In the shorts, yeah. 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 <laughs> Brave. Attract Brave. a few more green fly with the uh, lilac um, <laughs> t shirt. So, just as in the first innings, Code and Fisher at the top have removed batsmen early. Been some complaints, I think, from the, the suit tent over there. Really? Jeffrey Boycott. Jeff Cope in there apparently, as well as Jane Powell. Who's Jeff in? Tight Yorkshire folk. The the moaning they're not getting the money's worth for lunch because it might be all over before they finish their uh, the main course. Fisher to Madsen from the lake end. Madsen pushes this one out into the offside, straight to Shan Masood, and there's no run. I've not seen Jeff for a long time. He's a regular at Halifax Town when I was uh, covering them for the newspaper. Top man. I only spoke to Geoffrey Boycott once, I was terrified. I got the call one morning, I was in Anglesey. Cali can't make it to uh, Headingley today, can you cover? Yeah, yeah, of course I can. I'm in Anglesey though. Oh, you'll be all right, you'll be all right. So I set off as Fisher is into bowl to Madsen, who back one way in front of his body, pushes that one again to Shannon C. And halfway across, my phone goes again, sports editor. Forgot to mention. We set up an interview with Geoffrey Boycott at lunchtime. He's just become the club president. Bye. <laughs> ah, excellent. And Geoffrey, to his eternal credit, was magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. I was terrified. Creaky. He was brilliant. They're talking about creaky. Genuinely brilliant. And I'm sure he wouldn't remember me. In comes Fisher again and bowls. Madsen guides this square on the offside straight. To Jordan Thompson, there's no run. The uh, clappering chief this time is Matthew Revis. Mark Beck says maybe Mr. Damp Pants may no be far off with the historical reference to a reply of 377 for our first innings. Just glad we got this extra 74 runs. Could be crucial, but unlikely. Terrific fact came out, a bit of trivia came out at lunchtime as this one is uh, wide of the off stump from Fisher and left alone by Madsen. Uh, Mark Watt, obviously at Scotland International, the, pre the last left armour, left arm spinner to take a five for Derbyshire against Yorkshire was also Scottish. Dallas Moyer. How rotten for Yorkshire. 
And come to think of it, I'm rotten for me too. The previous Englishman was French Warbrick. In the 70s, I think it was the 70s, apologies Fred, but it wasn't. Here is Fisher, Ian again bowls to Madsen who leaves this one alone outside the off-stump to go through to the keeper, end of the over, another maiden, another wicket maiden another indeed. Another wicket maiden. Uh, four for two, even I spotted that one. Very good. <laughs> I'm getting there now, this cricket lark. There's a magnificent photograph far, there? far beyond the cat but it is of David Griffin that Lily has posted, Lily and Matthew Revis together. Rev in a navy blue hat, which presumably must have been taken at a game that wasn't here, because Lily isn't, and uh, Yorkshire are playing in whites. But thanks for that, Lily. Ben Nielsen says your technical issues may be handled this afternoon. I mean, by this PM. Rishi Sunak seems to be the government lead on technology. Does that make any sense? Not sure. Um, code is in, it's wide of off stump. Got to read them before you read them out loud. There we go. What is, uh, what is it referring to there? I have no idea. It didn't make any sense at all. I couldn't really understand a word of it, if I'm honest. Me neither. Good. Yorkshire lad says it'll prevent, provide a double 99 if Yorkshire win today. I'm up for that. Is that not I'll, a, I'll take that, on the challenge. Man versus ice cream. Is that not a 188? <laughs> That's 198. Here is the code coming in, and that's punched along the deck to Shan Masood. Jaffa Chohan's just in front of our commentary position. But thankfully, with his knowledge of commentary, he understands that we need to see the field of play, and he's just stepped a couple of strides to the right of the cut strip for me. What he's doing there is he's, he's just proving that you can see through a cricketer, but you can't see through a, a pillar that doesn't exist. The evidence is on Twitter already. Code coming in. And so where did you take the photo from? Securely defended from into that the chair? onside, no run. You can't have taken the picture from that chair if you were taking a picture of the... Uh... I took a picture from this chair yesterday and posted it. I don't follow you. my view from the commentary point in Queen's Park, Chesterfield. But it's a look at that pillar. That's five, 15 yards away from the actual pitch that they're playing on. Did you notice I also took a photo, but I deleted the pillar no. so that everyone no. would see. So, uh, what's he moaning about? Code is in, inside edge on this one, down towards long leg. Fisher round to do the fielding, and so Lamb is off the mark, and the Derbyshire five for two. When Kate removed the pillar, of course, the whole gazebo started to sag. Fairly... From a photograph. Yes. It's fairly pivotal, I think, that pillar, keeping us alive. Not the only thing that's sagging in this uh, tent, I've got to say. In comes Kurt again, past the uh, umpire Watts, and that's pushed into the offside. No what, run. what else is sagging, John? Too many things to mention. This broadcast, I think, <laughs> would be top of the list, though. Yeah, I think it might be. Well, one of us is flagging. I don't know about sagging, but I'm definitely flagging. How do I explain this in 30 seconds at 2 o'clock? Change of the ABBA lyrics, of course, there. As the code is in, and wicket. Caught at first slip by George Hill. And another Derbyshire duck here, and this time it is Wayne Madsen who has gone and they find themselves again in deep, deep trouble. Second time around now, five for three, Derbyshire. I've always enjoyed the two-day Chesterfield Festival, uh, but this is just not good. Not good. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, this is not good. Wayne Madsen out for a duck. Derbyshire, five for three, trailing by 237. Oh, it's almost irrelevant how many they're trailing by. Really terrible, absolutely terrible. Who took the catch? Sorry, Dodgy. George, George Hill. Hill. Thank you. He has deploy going out to try and play a skipper's knock here. What was the What were the figures? None off how many? Okay. Um, off seven balls. None off seven, and the wicket was taken four point. Four point six under the over. Four point six overs. There we go. So two point two, three point one, and four point six. The three wickets that have fallen. Harry came for two. LBW to Ben Code. 
Louis Rees, LBW to Matthew Fisher for two, and Wayne Madsen caught Hill Bold Code without scoring. It's just good bowling again, isn't it? It's it just, is he's good not, bowling. He's not had a flash at that. He's no. just had a little nibble, um, and I think it's just good disciplined bowling from the pair of them, as we saw yesterday. I've got to say, in all honesty, when Finlay Bean spoke to me and said, what do you think? I said, you probably can't expect to see what you saw yesterday, the pitch having dried out and all the rest of it. It's going to be tougher second time around. And he said, yeah, we're, we're expecting that. So, well, I'm glad that Derbyshire have shattered their expectations. <laughs> <laughs> because at the moment... Thank you, Jono. Uh, we probably should. Um, I'm not even sure if John is listening. He's the uh, breakfast producer, the daytime producer, who's uh, asked me to talk about the heat. Here's Matthew Fisher then. He's only got one wicket. As uh, Lamb, he might get a boundary here. He's uh, played that very nicely towards extra, co extra cover and will get a boundary. It's been, no, he won't. He's pulled up inside the rope. How quickly did that stop? <laughs> you, you, that was hilarious because... You tried to save face by saying he might get a boundary. Then you went. You've gone full on there. He will get a boundary. He got three. No, he won't. He got three. Did it, it, it seemed to come to a halt pretty quickly, didn't it? Yeah, it slowed up. I mean, Shan Masood, bless him, one of the nicest men you could wish to meet. He's not the quickest over the ground. But he kept chasing and chasing, and he was right to because the ball stopped before it reached the boundary rope. Uh, and three runs to Matt Lamb, who uh, moves on to four and is now the leading scorer for Derbyshire in the second innings. If, uh, if that's any kind of achievement at all. Three slips and a gully as Lears Deploy faces his first delivery. Fisher bowls to him and he gets a little bit squared up by that one. Looking to play it into the leg side with that. He's got, his back doesn't come down straight, it comes down and across, and that's never a good thing. And that one squirted out into the offside, but it's a, it's a, it's a way of batting that works for him clearly at times. Not all the time, though. A very good knock on Wednesday at Birmingham. That was, uh, he said to me, at the toss on Friday, yes, it was, I needed it. Well, he needs a big knock here as he leaves this next delivery from Fisher to go through to Tatus late for three. So, have we always been playing on this pitch? We haven't just alternated with the one underneath the, the tarpaulin. So Yorkshire batted on the one under the tarpaulin, which is, which is a really good pitch, and Derbyshire have been batting on the other one, clearly. Derbyshire's batsmen have not covered themselves in glory here at Queen's Park. But they'll get another opportunity on Sunday. It's a run of wins here over Yorkshire that has to come to an end sometime. Fisher is in and bowls and deploy defensive into the on side up towards Shan Masood. Yorkshire might put an application to the ECB to, to have Sunday's game play with the red ball. Yes. Yeah. You think the ECB will look favourably on any requests that Yorkshire put in? From Yorkshire, yeah, well, I think they do tend to acquiesce to any of Yorkshire's demands, don't they? Pretty much. It's, it's a shame it's not the Sunday after because that would be after the points deduction. And then Derbyshire would, would have been would be off the bottom of the table again. But they're going to be at the bottom of the table after this round of matches, no question. Fisher in and bowls to deploy who leads. Goes through to Tatterson. Something like the 24th or something, did I read? Yorkshire's... Uh, 26. Well, I think, is it 26? Yeah. I knew it was the 20 something, but I just sort of guessed. Yeah, really. 24th of Saturday. Oh, okay. So the Monday. Yeah. You wouldn't imagine an all-guns-blazing press release on the Saturday, well, would you? Wouldn't you? expect anybody well, the nobody from to be working on the know. Saturday. No, yeah. no, no, absolutely not. But, but, but did they get paid enough to work on a Saturday? Probably not, I would have thought. Too busy ruining county cricket. In comes uh, Fisher, and bowls to deploy, who plays this one into the leg side, and he's off the mark. With a single, Shan Masood does the fielding. They've moved up to nine for three now. The heavy heights of nine for three. And yeah. they trail by 2.33. And a good afternoon to Neil Drake, who is... Uh, From the ECB. No, <laughs> <laughs> not to my knowledge. <laughs> afternoon, Neil, who's up uh, Horsforth Way, back up in Leeds. Former crickety teammate of mine and footballing opponent back in the days of yore. 
you want to get in touch, folks, it is BBC West Yorkshire Sport at gmail.com or at Jonathan Doidge or maybe at Fletch Sport. Fletch Cricket at gmail.com, but I wouldn't leave it too long. <laughs> Might not have time to get him out on air. Ben Cody's going to bowl. We've got two days off. We can reply to them personally, can't we? Any emails? I know you. I know you like to do that. You'd probably drive round and, and reply, respond in person. Yeah, I think well, we have time to do that. Go around the wicket. Oh. oh, how has that not got a wicket? That has that has been just shot along the floor, <laughs> didn't it? Deploy has done magnificently to get his bat down on it. Talk about a daisy cutter. Wow, that's that's the worst of the non bounces that we've seen, or the best, depending on your viewpoint, that we have seen. Thank God. You know, had a smile to himself there. Can he find that spot again? In he comes. Passed on by Watts. And this time, he's just dragged the length back a little bit, but it might have been around about top of off stump. Deploy plays it of a fashion. David Coleman, good afternoon to you. He says, they say you can't tell what the pitch is like until both teams have batted. You can certainly tell how poor Derbyshire are in two days at Chesterfield. So poor, the church spire twisted itself in taking a look over to Queen's Park. Which it didn't, clearly. Don't get defensive, David. Good. Round the wicket. Tadasol standing up. And uh, Deploy deals with that. Edward Harland says uh, Fletch's purple tree is a copper beach. Yes. No relation to Norman's, Norman Stanley Fletcher, is he? What, to a fictional character? No. Um, Copper Beach, of course it is. I should have known that. Porridge. Correct. Go in and uh, what's going on here? Deploy jumps, sort of bunny hops to his left just before Ben Code comes in. Almost as if we're in the final over of a T20 match coming up here on Sunday. And uh, Derbyshire need to try and fashion something out of nothing and put the bowler off but at this stage the nine for three second time around trailing by an awful lot of runs yes. and that looked a very strange move yeah. doing the time warp two slips and a gully and a very attacking field with a leg slip and a short leg in place and again that one keeps low deploy might get four runs for this it's been chased down by finley bean he's not gonna in fact ben cliff i should say he's not gonna uh, get there in time so an interesting way to get four runs chopping down on a ball that was going to shoot underneath the bat virtually but good hand-eye coordination from Leas Deploy and this is looking ominous for Derbyshire with these couple of deliveries in this over as uh, Fletch that was Fletch Got this update now, hopefully. Oh, it's Ed, so hopefully Ed will be able to uh, hear me. <laughs> I went all horribly wrong this morning. Code is in and bowls to deploy who defends. End of the over. Uh, 13, 4, 3. Dear, oh dear. Yes, hello. I can hear everything. I do, I do. I'm looking forward to it. Unfortunately, Derbyshire might be all out before we get to speak to him at half past two. 13 for three at the moment. Chris Cole's on afternoons today. Good to talk to Chris. I had a chat with him on Wednesday at Birmingham. And here comes Matthew Fisher in and bowls to Matt Lamb, who defends this ball. Defended it into the onside. Here comes the update. And then 
not batting very well at the 13 for three, second time around. Uh, bowling Yorkshire out this morning for 353. Five for 83 for Mark Watt, but they've lost Harry Kane for two, Lewis Reese for two, and Wayne Madsen most recently for a seven ball duck. Cut by George Hill in the slips off the bowling of Ben Code. Out there at the moment, Matt Lamb has four, Lears Deploy has five, and day two could well be the final day. They've just scored a boundary, though, 17 for three. Over and there from uh, Matt Lamb, and that could have gone to hand as it turned out. So my apologies, everybody. That's Fletch once again, who's sorry, not turned off the microphone while well, I, messing about I've with the headset. Problem with turning off the microphone because it's the same button that Kate's on. I, it, I should have turned it off. You're right. I apologise. It got stuck between uh, a rock and a hard place. Yeah, pretty much. I'm going to make a note of that. 14:03. On day Fletcher two, apologized. First, first error. Oh, apologies. That's going to go in the end of season archives on the BBC Radio Leeds. Oh, good delivery here. Fisher's got another wicket. It's been nicked by Lamb straight through to George Hill, who, barring putting his hands together, didn't have to move a muscle at first slip. And Derbyshire, well, they've already looked virtually gone here at 17 for four, second time around. Well, it's pitiful, isn't it, really? Absolutely pitiful. The Derbyshire batsman batting on the same pitch on which uh, Yorkshire made 353, clearly against better bowlers, are uh, 17 for four. And, uh, well, the person I feel most sorry for is Mark Watt, because we would have spoken to him this evening, but it'll be Mickey Arthur trying to explain a two-day defeat at Chesterfield, I rather fancy, <laughs> because there's still plenty left in this game isn't there still 200 well, 225 time but that matters little and Matt Lamb goes for eight I think you've got to say that this is high class bowling oh, no was in the first yeah. innings and has yeah. been this time around uh, again I said to Matthew Fisher last night you know how good is it to bowl in tandem with Ben Code and he just said it's fantastic because you know when he's fit and bowling like he can do is a top of off stump man. He gives away nothing, so it <laughs> makes my job so much easier at the other end to, to, to try and keep the pressure on. Um, and Ben obviously got three wickets himself, Fish got five, but they both know that you know they one of them's gonna have a good day here and there, the other one is as well. And when it's not their day to take the predominance of wickets, they may still be, if you like, taking some for their mate because they're keeping it tight and the opportunities. Are, uh, are coming from the other bowler. So they've gone two slips. Finley Bean's just been moved out to his right here to uh, more like a fourth slip. Closer to Jordan Thompson than he is to Adam Lyth at second. New batter. Hader Alley. Hader Alley. Yep. Yeah. Fisher. Bowling to him. They've wrapped one into his thigh pad first up. Fish. He's shaking the arms again. He must have felt that was pretty close. He's just got that different appeal when he thinks he's somewhere near, but he's not given hands to his face. Not out. Well, hang on a minute. There's, 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 nice lolly's been handed out here. You can't afford the sort of ice creams that Yorkshire lad can afford. It's unbelievable. It's all right, boys. I'll have one at home tonight because I'm going home. Just had a message off my lad saying, see you tonight. <laughs> Everybody's given up. Fisher in again. And uh, Hader Alley. Shunted down the order here to number six. Shouldering arms to that one. And it just seems to be, doesn't it? Yorkshire bowling well, yeah. Derbyshire. I don't think played many rash shots first time around. Just had a nibble at a few deliveries that most mere mortals would do as well. But changing the batting order, it's, it's all sort of smacks of there's a bit of confusion within. I'm sure there's confusion. I think Hader Alley shouldn't be shouldn't should have been dropped down the order some time ago. Fisher in again. Hader Alley pushes back to the bowler and his follow through. End of the over then. Seven now complete in this Derbyshire second inning. 17 for four. But that's what it, you know, when I'm talking about you coming in from the outside and something you notice about Jordan Thompson as somebody coming in from the outside here. 
anybody who's only seen the opposition once this season in red ball cricket would be thinking, well, it's just, yeah, just... I think it's less conf of, do you less, know what you're, it's less what you're trying to do as, and as more shambolic at the moment. Absolutely shambolic would be my assessment of, uh, of Derbyshire at the moment. In this match, they've been a shambles. Uh, time to re relay my story of Mickey Arthur after the game against Worcester. Worcestershire, first game of the season, which they lost at Derby. As Ben Code begins a new over from the pavilionette and bowls to Lears to Ploy, who's almost caught behind and then almost stumped as well because Johnny Tattersall standing up to the stumps. Uh, and Mickey Arthur said to me then, I'll tell you something now, Fletch, we won't lose another match this season. So when we went to Durham and they lost uh, in two days and a couple of sessions, I said that quote, Mickey, uh, you said you wouldn't lose another game this season. You've lost twice in April. Ah, it's just my enthusiasm, Fletch, but uh, don't worry, we'll get better. And now they're going to get absolutely hammered by Yorkshire at Chesterfield. In goes Code and Bowles. Oh, and he's caught behind, is he? There's a big appeal. Yorkshire are convinced. Deploy's going nowhere, and the umpire says not out. So the answer is no, he's not been caught behind, even though the Yorkshire players are 100% convinced, I'm sure, that uh, you got a little nick on that one, Lears Deploy. It's just a mess, Dodgy. It's just a mess. And I'm, I'm trying to put my finger on it. They had such a good season last season. Have Has Mickey Arthur taken them as... Not taken them as far as he can, but did he, as this one is guided, just about into the floor to the left of Adam Lai that slip and it's gone to the boundary but it's been kept in and they'll come back for two. Move on to 19 for four. But he raised them to such an extent last year that he, that he can't raise them further from where he's raised them to. You understand what I'm trying to say? And uh, perhaps it just needs... He needs to bring in... He always, he always talks about two transfer windows we need, a, we need the next transfer window pretty sharpish. There's a code. He's going to get them bowls to deploy. Magnificent. Thank you very much. Nice long. No, oh, I don't even need that one. Well, no, I, don't, I can't have two. That's very kind of you. I've got a traffic light one. Were they fruit refresher ones? Nice. Whatever yeah, they are. Very nice. I get a 30p ice lolly and... Dodgy gets a seven pound ice cream. I think that's just a sort of reflection of the game as well, isn't it, really? <laughs> like 1983. Of our commentators, I think. 1983, as Code bowls to uh, deploy, pushes it out into the offside. 1983, the last time Derbyshire lost in two days at Chesterfield. Middlesex, the team that beat them on that occasion. Middlesex, the team that they beat here last season. There's always a. Desperation, really, from Derbyshire to get Yorkshire to Chesterfield, isn't it? Because they've had some good days down here against them, but it might be a rethink. Could be the next uh, four-day match at Derby. Yeah. Certainly, certainly, if you want to make any money from four days of cricket rather than two. I think they probably have more people in two days that would get it four at Derby as code bowls, and that's pulled into the leg side by Deploy for four. Almost ironic cheers and followed by applause there for Deploy. He moves into double figures. He's on 11, 23 for four. Looking on the uh, sunny side, that, oh, yeah. uh, the fourth wicket went down at 15 runs in the first innings and 17 in this innings. Oh, so they're improving. They're, they are improving. Thank you, Kate. As, as Mickey Arthur would say. Yeah, incremental. Those one percenters. Good afternoon, by the way, to listeners from Five Sports Extra who have just joined us with the news that uh, second time around, Derbyshire are in big trouble at 23 for four, having lost the wickets of Harry Kane, LBW to Ben Code for two, Lewis Rees, LBW to Matthew Fisher for the same, uh, Wayne Madsen caught a first slip by George Hill off Ben Code without scoring, and Matthew Lamb caught by George Hill at first slip off Matthew Fisher for eight. So four wickets falling in the first seven and a half overs, 17 for four at one stage, and it's Fisher bowling from the lake end here to uh, Hader Rally. Can, uh, can I congratulate you on saying 17 for four at one stage? They're currently 23 for four. It's not really any better. I realise it's six runs better, but it's no better. 
Uh, you you need to commentate for the entire match now because six wickets and they could get six in a row. It's not so. I'll I'll just take a back seat. I think. <laughs> And for those who've not been following this game, Yorkshire resumed this morning on 272 for five. Uh, Matthew Fish is about to turn at the end of his run. I'll give you more on that in a mo. But he Please is coming do. in now with the thick uh, white sweatband on his left wrist and dropped out into the offside by Hader Alley, fielded by Revis. No run. So 272 for five at the start of the day. Mark Watt, who ended up with his best first-class figures of five for 83 from 25.3 overs for Derbyshire. He had David Milan dropped on 88, his first delivery of the day, then on 90, before finally a brilliant catch by Lachmal at mid-off, diving to his left. Saw the back of Milan for 106 from 143 deliveries. The 30th first-class century for him. Don Best made two, Jordan Thompson 17. Matthew Revis, a patient 32, before he was caught behind to a delivery he clearly didn't think he'd hit off Ben Aitchison, as we see a dot ball, Fisher there to Hader Alley playing it out to point. Uh, Matthew Fisher last one out caught by Hader Alley off Mark Watt to bring up that five wickets. He didn't score, nor did Ben Code not out on one. So 353 all out Yorkshire taking with them a lead of 242 into uh, the Derbyshire second innings. And having spoken, as I've just said a little while ago to Finlay Bean between innings out there on the field, he said the Yorkshire expected it to be much tougher second time around. The pitch, which certainly felt like it had a bit of moisture in yesterday morning when Yorkshire exploited that and bowled Derbyshire out for 111. As uh, Hayder Alley plays a nice shot, uh, flicked through the leg side. Matthew Fisher just too full and straight. That will be four runs through mid-wicket. But uh, no excuses really in terms of moisture in the pitch here. Uh, despite the fact that, of course, Derbyshire took five Yorkshire wickets this morning, we didn't expect them to succumb quite so quickly second time around but 27 for four now Derbyshire in a lot of trouble you think yes two day game at Chesterfield not ideal Fisher then up the incline oh now then he's a struck Hader Alley on the back pad there by the looks of things he's gone up again Matthew Fisher's been getting really excited with his appeals You'd have to have stuck another set of stumps out. on top of the ones that are out there for it to have been given out, surely, to goodness. Too high? Potentially, I think, yes. Potentially too high. By about a foot. They don't need charity as well to dismantle Derbyshire. But the pressure remains on out there, that's uh, for certain. Two slips and more or less two gullies here, Yorkshire. Finley Bean and Jordan Thompson, those two gully positions. As Fisher comes in again and uh, Ali opens the face. He's going to get four runs here. He's got it away back at a point. Matthew Revis is chasing it down, but the ball just wins out towards the uh, Brooklyn bus bar away to our left. So 31 for four come the end of the over. And, uh, ten of them now complete in this Derbyshire second innings. But it's been uh, very much disappointing for Derbyshire supporters and very much a big lift for Yorkshire supporters. Of course, Yorkshire haven't had a win in championship cricket since the first match of 2022. And they beat Gloucestershire at Bristol. Couldn't manage to uh, put away any other team last year. Got relegated. And this time around, we've got to the sixth match of the campaign. One complete washout. Can't, can't count that, obviously. But uh, this could be, should be, that first win. Ben Code bowls to Lewis Deploy. Just about gets his bat down in time. There's a bit of a variable bounce. Very much from this and pavilion uh, end now. Yeah. It's not been like, it's, we've seen the odd one, haven't we, yesterday? Yeah, yeah. But it's today, got, Ben Code now. has definitely... He's found the spot. There was one, two overs, three overs ago, no, four, two or four overs ago, um, that shot along the floor and how Lewis deployed got his bat down on it to keep it off his stumps. I will never know. Terrific effort by him. As in goes Ben Code once again, bowls to deploy, pushes this one out into the offside. A couple of medical staff with some very impressive looking machinery here. 
heading with some purpose across to the bank to our left hand side. Hopefully, everything is well out there. 41 for four, 11 to deploy, six to Hader, who is uh, in at six despite having opened in every other game and in the first innings here. He's played for Derbyshire this season. Code in and balls to deploy, who turns this into the leg side. And there is no run. Well, there is no doubt that Yorkshire's bowlers have been excellent, especially Code and Fisher. Questions have to be asked about Derbyshire's batting. 111 first time around. And a very paltry second innings as well of 31 for four. At one stage in their first innings, they were 24 for six. You don't win many games from 24 for six and 31 for four. Code is in to deploy, struck on the pad. Big appeal, not out. I think there might have been some bat yeah, involved. there was a noise. Sometimes there's a noise, sometimes there isn't. But again, not a lot in the way of bounce and deploy, as you said, did brilliantly in that previous over when the ball just shot along the floor. Uh, just like being on a park pitch. He said, hanging that one out there. Yes, you can hang that out there if you um, wish. And he, not comment at this early and he stage. chopped down on it fantastically well to keep his eye on it. And he's, that was, again, was a bit low, wasn't it? He's done really well, but sooner or later, one will get through. His code in again. He's bowling around the wicket to the left-handed deploy, who's edged. Does he edge that one? He's been taken by the keeper. I couldn't see on the stream whether he'd hit it or not, but uh, it was definitely hitting him outside off stop. There we go. So a very fine decision. <laughs> well, so that Kate Holdsworth, by the way, is alongside Fletch and uh, I for this one. Chris Watts standing at our end. Young Wharton needs to sit down, really. 12th man, he's got the fielding pads. There he goes, crouched down now, excellent. Code is in, bowls to Deploy, who squirts this one to uh, Gully. But Jordan Thompson in the helmet does the fielding. And it's the end of the over, 31 for four now, eight to Hayda, 11 to Derbyshire skipper Leas Deploy. They are uh, in all sorts of trouble. I've never seen as fine a pink outfit as the one that the gentleman He's wearing as he walks into the marquee either. That is absolutely splendid. Tony Van, a gentleman concerned. Is it? That is, that is some outfit. And I hope he's won his bet. A um, couple of tabards out there, fluorescent tabards. Uh, drinks have been taken on. George Crenshaw and, and Mitch Wagstaff. Don Bess giving Matthew Fisher a breather after he's bowled five overs. From the lake end, we didn't see Don Best bowl a single over. We didn't need to, did we, well, yesterday? Well, not many overs at all anyway, were there? What was it, 34, 34 did they get to? 31.4, Derbyshire bowled out in. Fisher, 5 for 30, his best first-class figures in that Derbyshire first innings. Three wickets for Code and two for Jordan Thompson. And just the four bowlers used, George Hill, the other one, who finished wicketless. So all seemed from Yorkshire yesterday. Two spinners, Alex Thompson and Mark Watt, used by Derbyshire in the Yorkshire first innings. And so Don Bess is going to try his luck from the lake end here. Bowling off spin to the right-hander with the shortest boundary to the right-hander's leg side. But of course, he's going to be bowling at both righty and lefty. With Leas deploy left-hander, Hader Alley on strike. Pushes his first best delivery to mid on. No run. He's sort of gone with short leg here. Adam Lyther at slip. Jordan Thompson backward of square on the one. As Ali drives this one up to Shan Massoud, who's at mid off. No run. Ben Cliff, who's out there at the moment for David Milan as a substitute fielder. He's in at shortage extra cover where Milan is normally positioned. Revis. That point, there's a straight mid-wicket, that's George Hill, as Ali's going to pick up four runs here, lovely drive through the covers, chased down by Ben Cliff, but it'll have the legs to skip over the boundary rope, just over pitching there, Don Bess. The other man to mention in the fielding setup is Ben Code, who is out on the boundary, the car park side of the ground. Picturesquely described. 
He's at mid wicket. Picturesque the describes. The car park side. It's more more of the the hillside, isn't it? Really, that would be that would be more picturesque. <laughs> That's in, and uh, Ali turns out to go. Who's going in from the hill side of Sewage the ground? Sewage works end. Um, this is the end. One run. <laughs> this is the end that uh, Don Bess is bowling. At, of course, is the end that Mark Watt picked up five for. So uh, he managed to get. Get it to work for him from the low end. You would think, having seen what's been happening when Ben Coe's been bowling from this end at the pavilion end, everybody, all the bowlers will be <laughs> you know, nudging Sham and saying, Go on, <laughs> go on, Sham, just fancy a boat. Go on, he's looking a bit tired, Sham. Just pop me on for a couple. 36 for four at the moment. Sham might fancy a bowl himself. I haven't seen that before. Well, I didn't see it at all last season. Deploy on strike, leg slip, orthodox slip, and short leg as he props forward to this uh, latest best delivery backward point cover mid off mid on straight mid wicket and deep backward square leg probably about six or seven yards in from the boundary Matthew Revis as he starts his walk in flicked nicely off the legs this one by deploy but fielded by the substitute fielder Ben Cliff to complete that over at 36 for four and 12 overs into this Derbyshire second innings. You can, start, you can take your posh voice off now. Thank you. Live, live have gone. And we have some emails to get uh, up to date with. Russ Harker says, hello, comms folks in Berlin here. As a skiptoner, it's good to see Yorkshire heading towards a long-awaited championship win, but I always feel sorry for the fans and the vendors who are looking forward to four full days of cricket and ice cream and beer. Uh, do the vendors get compensation for two-day games? No idea. I can't, sure. I can't imagine that they, they have to pay to come, don't they? Normally, and they will. So it, it's the club that will lose out. Uh, Dean in Donny says, uh, enjoying the comms. Better send this message in before the game ends. It'll be nice to win and get off the bottom of the table. Nice to see the five wins in a row in the blast. What have the boys been having with their breakfast? And can I have some, please? Uh, can you mention that you were promoting? The event at Scarborough on the 5th of September. I didn't get all my details and now I've lost the notes. Is there an event on the 5th of September? Sounds like I wanted to plug it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'll mention that again in a moment. If you wouldn't mind. Uh, ben Code, continuing from the pavilion, end bowls to Hayda, who leaves alone outside the off-stop. So, day three of the Derbyshire-Yorkshire, or Yorkshire-Derbyshire match, as it will be at Scarborough in September. I think it's the 5th, didn't I say? I think you said the September. Yeah, I think uh, question of sports uh, with a Derbyshire team, which will include uh, David well, Fletcher well, and yes. David Griffin. Yes, uh, day three, that's if we're still in Scarborough. Well, yeah, I know, that's the that's a slight concern now, they I've got to say. Back to day two if they can on the Monday night. I think there might be something already on that night, hence day three. Uh, in comes Code and uh, shoulder oh, in arms you, there. You, you carry on with Hader Ali, sorry. Oh, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, there's, there is an ambulance being brought into the ground, so yeah, hopefully so, uh, it, nothing it, it, it too like serious. Were, uh, I wonder if it, uh, could, but, could it be heat-related? Oh, don't be wrong to speculate. Um, but yeah, the, the two medics did walk across there with some purpose, didn't they? So uh, fingers um, crossed. Yeah, so 5th of September, question of sport. Derby should be Yorkshire. Some representation from both counties. Uh, hopefully a good bit of fun. Seven and a half quid a ticket in association with the Yorkshire Cricket Supporters Association. Code bowls to Hader, who's played at that one, and it's gone through to Tatterson. Uh, I'm going to be doing the questions, because uh, hopefully not the funnies. Um, I wouldn't have thought you'd be funny. No. And uh, we hope Thank you'll you, attend in numbers. Henry, come on, we missed one here. But a real knockdown price there. Don't say we don't give now to away in Yorkshire. No, no, absolutely. So, it, yeah, the marquee, the bottom side of the ground, in, in the ground at Scarborough. Time. Looking forward to it. Time's your update. Oh, well done. You're welcome. Next delivery from Code is pushed out into the offside. And uh, there is no run. Hader just uh, clipping it in front of it. Yeah. So this is going to be one of those um, updates where I have to juggle. It's always good fun. That's what we have to do. Just remove that. Put that there, and hopefully it doesn't sound too silly. In goes Code once again. 
in and bowls to Hayden. That one keeps low. It gets it right off the toe end of the bat, pushes it up to mid off. Again, there's no run. <laughs> there's got to be an easier way of doing this particular maneuver of uh, having listening through two different sets of headphones at the same time, but I've yet to discover it, sadly. <laughs> Here is Code again. Balls to Hayder, who defends it to Shan Masood, who's fielding at a short mid-off. It's the end of the over 36. 4-4. Four, that's, four. that's the uh, third maiden that uh, Ben Code has bowled. Uh, two for 12. Seven Thank you very much. They trail by 206 at the moment, I think. It's going to be Tom Best to continue. We are updating listeners to BBC Radio Derby fairly shortly, a couple of minutes or so. Sooner they come. Not necessarily the better. I don't think they're actually going to be bowled out by the time they come. In comes Don Bess around the wicket, balls to deploy, who pushes this out into the offside. Thirty-six for four. It remains. Slip and a leg slip. It's a short leg as well. Dom Bess bowls to the blue, pushes this out into the offside and beats the man at backward point. And uh, Ben Code couldn't haul it in. 202 the deficit now. Nice shot from the Derbyshire skipper who moves on to 15. The ambulance still there, away to our left-hand side. Fingers crossed, as we say, as Bess bowls and Deploy uses his feet. Just moves down the pitch a little bit and defends it back to the bowler. And there's no run. Deploy waits. Bess in and bowls. And Deploy stabs the bat down on the ball, plays it back to... Bess. 55 overs left today. <laughs> Assuming that we don't get any rain. It's forecast to come in in around half an hour's time if there is going to be any this afternoon. As Bess is in and bowls and Deploy gets a little bit squared up by that one. Pushes it out into the offside. Picked up by Jordan Thompson who was uh, just flexing his shoulders. Potentially ready to come on and and bowl. Next delivery. He's striking him on the pad. Big appeal, not out, says umpire Lungley. And they do go through for a run of some description. And it's a run off the bat, which is why he didn't give, presumably, the leg before decision. Just lost my piece of paper, which is a slight concern. I've got it back now. 201 the deficit, end of the over, 41 for four. Deploy has 16 of those, Hader Ali has 13. And so far these two have well, slightly calmer waters. 24 runs partnership between Deploy and Hader. Poor Elias was shoved out of the changing room to talk to us last night. Here is Jordan Thompson for the first time in the second inning. So update coming up in a minute's time or so. Chris Cole's in the chair. Be like, that'd be like the old days. <laughs> Jordan Thompson, 41 for four, trailing by 201. And not particularly impressive Derbyshire performance. 
and goes Thompson then around the wicket to deploy who he got out in the first innings remember the third ball he bowled to him and he limped away from the first one yesterday and he's limping away from the first one today uh oh we've all been here before so the update coming up now Thompson limps back to his mark. <laughs> Colsey, how are you? This, uh, oh, oh, hang on. Derbyshire have got some runs here, which I feel contractually obliged to, uh, to describe. The ball has gone out to the uh, square leg boundary, I think. Uh, it hasn't gone for four, though. It's just gone for one. So they've moved on to 43 for four. Uh, that's not very good, is it? Not very good. Um, they're 200 behind. Uh, exactly. In fact, yeah, 242 for four. They are 200 behind. They bowled out yesterday for 111. Yorkshire bowled out this morning for 353. Five for 83 for Mark Watt. Career best figures. But Harry came for two. Lewis Reese for two. Wayne Madsen for naught. And Matt Lamb for eight. Already departed. And uh, they're hurtling towards a two-day innings defeat. <laughs> Days. Mm. Um, next delivery push back to Thompson. Oh, well, the issue has been some very, very good bowling from Yorkshire Ben Code and um, Matthew Fisher. Matthew Fisher picked up uh, career best five for. 30 or 5 for 20 in the first innings bowled. They bowled really well. The, the batsmen haven't been able to cope. And then York, but Derbyshire simply didn't put it in the right place yesterday afternoon and, and let Yorkshire get away. It took them, I think, 20 overs to match Derbyshire's 111. And then they were racing into a lead. And uh, there's absolutely... Well, I was going to say there's nothing wrong with the pitch. That wouldn't be quite correct because the odd one now is keeping low. And the, we saw some turn this morning, which we always expected here at Chesterfield from Mark Watt. So Yorkshire have got Don Bess on. Uh, down at the lake end, uh, at the same end at which uh, um, Mark Watt bowled uh, this morning and yesterday to pick up those five wickets. But they've, they've been completely outplayed. They have been completely outplayed. I mean, Yorkshire have got David Milan, who's a very fine batsman, as we know. Um, you know, they've got Adam Lai at the top of the order. Sham Masood got a half century on his return to face his former club. Uh, he actually was in the side here, the Derbyshire side here last year that uh, beat Middlesex. So he's going to get a nice little double with two different teams in successive years is Sham Masood. Um, and yeah, I mean, they're just not playing very well at the moment, I'm afraid. Mickey Arthur said to me at the end of the first game of the season against Worcestershire, we won't lose another game this season. Well, they lost again in April up at Durham and now they're going to lose at Chesterfield potentially inside two days because there's an awful lot of cricket to be played today 54 overs potentially and I don't even think that the uh, the forecast storms which are p potentially due at three o'clock and then again at six o'clock this evening are going to save Derbyshire uh, and nor should they really uh, it, it's always unsatisfactory when uh, a team is saved by the weather isn't it so uh, yeah Derbyshire have been completely outplayed Yorkshire uh, have been very good uh, Derbyshire will go to the bottom of the table for a fortnight until Yorkshire are dock points in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> That's how it's going to happen. More runs here, incidentally. Another run, at least, uh, for Hader Alley this time. Uh, pushes the ball into the leg side. They move on to 43 for four. Yes. Well, then. Hmm. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. Uh, the crowd yesterday wasn't as big as everybody was expecting, in actual fact. I know they'd sold a lot of tickets before the game, and there were some walk ups. Perhaps it was because it was too hot. I mean, it was blisteringly hot yesterday. Warm again today, and, and an equally good crowd, if not slightly better today. And. Why would you not want to come and sit around the boundary's edge at Chesterfield? You're really close to the action, of course, because it's a, it's a club ground. Uh, you know, there's the, virtually no advertising boards to get in your way and all the rest of it. It's just a glorious place to watch cricket. Unfortunately, we won't be back here until Sunday when they play Yorkshire in the T20. <laughs> Cheers, Colsey. If it's still going on in an hour, he says, yes, that's when we'll next speak to Chris Coles. Apologies if that spoiled your enjoyment of that last over. It's not. 
a Yorkshire point of view, no wickets were taken, and from a Derbyshire point of view, not much happened. So uh, 43 for four. Yorkshire's lead oh. is now less than 200. Yes, well, it's psychological. 199. Bess begins a new over from the lake end, bowling to Hayder, who pushes it into the lake side. And there's no run. I wonder what you're all waiting for. Have you done? You did your update, yeah? No, they've clearly just forgotten me. Oh, excellent. This one is defended by Hayder. A full length delivery from Bess sort of squirts it back towards the ball, and there's no run. Just what you want, really. I didn't do, I didn't do eight minutes of commentary and an update at the same time without me to assist, and then I just sit there doing nothing. No, 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 no. These things happen, don't they? Bess balls. And I'm, I'm very, again, very wary as uh, Hayder pushes that next one back towards the bowler. Very wary of conversations that go on between me and somebody at a radio station that people can only hear half of the conversation. But again, it's getting cricket on the radio and pointing people in the right direction. Bess is in again and bowls. That one is defended by Hayder out into the offside this time. Fairly straight though, and Bess will field off his own bowling. 43 for four. A bit of a breeze getting up now. And storms potentially between three and four, and then again at six o'clock. They're not going to save Derbyshire, and as I said to Chris Coles, nor should they. As Bess is in and bowls, and that one is turned into the leg side by Hayder. And it's uh, fielded there in the leg side by Matthew Revis. I noticed that. Um, Jordan Thompson left the field, didn't he, after bowling yeah. that over? He was limping, which filled me full of dread. The bowling back out, though, there he is. He'd be, he'd be OK. Got a bit of strapping on it. Bit of an injection, a couple of tablets, something like that. Bass is in, all of the above. Bowls to Hayden, clipped into the leg side. Revis fields again. Magic over. sponge. And the magic sponge. And Adam Wilburn at lunchtime actually and asked him what the crack was, and he said, uh, oh, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. So he just wanted to lull him into a false sense of security, he said, yeah, with yeah. regard to yesterday's so we did it again. dive after his the ball after he'd uh, apparently done it so he's trying it again and he's uh, coming back on just in time to bowl the uh, next over that's from the, the way to do it though, pavilion it? end yeah, bowl and over go off have a sit down come back on bowl and over go off have a sit down that's the, that's the future yep puts his uh, head um, headgear in place and uh, <laughs> Leas Deploy on I strike. Nothing, I know nothing about hair, so there's no point in asking me. Well, Leas Deploy has earned his 17 here. It's been tough work for him with some dodgy bounce from this end, and he's beaten with the first ball of the over there by Jordan Thompson. Hands up to his head. He's had to chop down on more than one when Ben Code was bowling at this end. One particular one that shot along the deck, and a couple of others that have bounced but very low. Does a little bit of gardening. I think you might need uh, more than just a bat to um, garden in the area that's affected. A roller might be handy. Thompson in round the wicket and deploy solidly behind it. Yorkshire at the moment there's a yelp with just about every delivery when they think that uh, that might have been close. <sighs> Nick Buxton's been back in touch. It hasn't taken much for this group of players to slip back into the form and mindset of the Dave Houghton era. Certainly looking like they overachieved last season. Now, time to chuck this season in the bin and come back next April. Well, if only we could. Thompson in, driven by Reese up to mid-off. Shan Masood does a bit of juggling, but doesn't concede a run. It's, it's sort of... Nice day, somebody else moaning really for a change rather than the Yorkshire spectators because <laughs> there's been plenty of that in the last uh, don't, don't worry. year or so. Well, last year was the, the first year in the, this century that Derbyshire had won more games than they lost in all competitions. Uh, and Mickey Arthur didn't see it as much of a, a start. He was yeah, very dismissive of it, but I don't think they're going to repeat it this year. Thompson in again and uh, deploy pushing to the right of Shan Masood at mid-off. Nice sliding stop from him. They get one. David Bates, the centre's a view of his toes Lovely. Um, with uh, a palm tree or two and a swimming pool apparently in the background. You can get money for photographs like that, you know. Listening from that um, that position today, which uh, looks rather lovely. Not particularly the toes, David, but thanks very much all the same. <laughs> Yorkshire lad seen, just seen four helmets in a row behind Johnny Tattersall. Is this is a record in a county championship match? Nicely played this uh, by... Hader Alley through the leg side. Shan Masood is chasing it down towards the K 
you know, corner boundary and manages to get there. So they'll get three. I'm sure Kate will have a, a start on the most helmets in a row behind a wicket keeper in a county championship match. They're freely available. Five. Five. There we go. You just made that up, didn't you? Yeah. Sounded convincing, though, the way yeah, she said yeah, it. It was very... Said, yeah. There was no hesitation, I've, wasn't I've definitely seen four before. Cause it just looks like a rowing team. There goes the ambulance. Thompson in. And uh, this is Ariel through the offside from the bat of Deploy, but he's going to pick up four runs. Probably not more, not a more convincing shot than the others that have not make, made the, the boundary in this over, but he's going to finish the over with that boundary, and he's taken his team to 51 for four. I make that an addition of uh, 34 runs. Yes. Since the last yeah, wicket. since the last wicket. Um, yeah, yeah. Yorkshire, oh, no, that was Yorkshire, I've read that one already. Uh, da -da -da. David Coleman said, if the game finishes early, will you have to fill the time with some Yorkshire v Derbyshire assault course based on the tension in the banter? What tension? YouTube yeah. boxing is all the rage, you know. Who said that? Was that David from? Coleman, what an astonishing there's no tweet. Ten, there's no tension. And David Coleman says, surely the uh, only question for your Scarbados question of sport event is, will the game run to four days? Well, yes, that is, that, that is, the, that is the fear. All right, Goffey. Pretty good. You? We, we, we don't. We don't pay uh, talk sport money here, so I'm afraid we can't have you on. Don Bess begins a new ever while you're having a chat with your mate. Uh, the ball is pushed up to long on and a single is taken. So we can't get you on because we don't have talk sport money here, I'm afraid. It's, this is the BBC. Listening on the way up. The bad hasn't come through. Talking about the chances of Yorkshire. The chances of Yorkshire? Right we'll get you on in a sec, just hang on. Right up until they get dock points. This one is, well, I was going to say driven, but it was a check drive by Lears to play. Up towards mid-off and there's no run. You can have my headphones. Well, I don't have them. I said, when I do my update, I go on the other lot anyway. So, yeah, if Goffey wants to come on, you can have my headphones after this over. I think he might just do a minute, not not forever. Well, I wasn't wants suggesting go that he was sum. going to do the next one. He might, if he does 15 minutes, he might get to the end of the game. This one's turning to the leg side. Fine <laughs> deploy. There's no run. I just, I'm just, I'm just feeling intimidated now. I'll stand up in a minute. How many balls left in this over? Bess is in. Deploy slaps it into the offside. Two to come. Two to come. I can feel less intimidated. I think when you stand up, it might be a different. Well, situation. that's what I was hoping for. In all honesty, he's only 5'10. 5'10? Used to be 5'11. This <laughs> one is pushed out. It's had an inch shaved off from somewhere. That one's pushed into the offside. Again, there's no run. <sighs> whether there's a run or whether there isn't, it makes no odds. <laughs> Final ball of the over 52 for four, 22 to deploy, 18 to Hader. For anybody listening, no, he hasn't been there from the start. Best bowls, oh dear. It's a mistimed shot out into the offside from Lewis Deploy to bring the over to an end at 52 for four. And I'm going to make way. I never thought I'd ever say this in my entire life. I'm going to make way for Darren Goff. <laughs> but he certainly would never have had to make way for him in a playing sense because there's no way you'd have been on the same... Park Fletch, 52 for four after 18. Jordan Thompson is going to continue then from this pavilion end. And uh, Goffey pulls in alongside. Good that you've uh, turned up. Good that you've turned up on a good day. Well, yeah, I came yesterday with another good day. It's been some good days the last couple of weeks. Enjoyed it. Here's Thompson then bowling to Hader Alley down the hill. From the pavilion end, over the wicket, flicked off his legs down to uh, long leg, where Bess will return it. One run, 53 for four. Bit of doom and gloom around the Derbyshire ranks, as you might imagine. We've had those days at Yorkshire ourselves. 
But I think yesterday and today, you've got to credit Code and Fisher mm. for being the opening bowling partnership that we know they can be and that we'd love to see on the park together much more often. Exactly. Um, that's the dream ticket, isn't it? When you get Code and Fisher bowling together, as Tomo comes in to deploy, pushed away, backward point. Nice, comfortable pickup. Can't see who is he, Bessie? Bessie at backward point. It is Bessie. It is good. Go. good that you know you play. Do you need your specs on? I do, mate. Where is Mind you, I only need them for reading, but it's a bit too far for me to see that, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's obvious, isn't it, when you watch Yorkshire. Um, we've got two very, very good new ball bowlers, Fisher, who's just not been at his very best this year, been a little bit below on pace. Today, I thought he was outstanding, and Cody just does what he does with a new ball. Thompson in again, deploy, has a go at this one, and he's got it away past the, the outstretched arm of Finlay Bean through third man for four. So we're kind of seeing what we do see from Jordan Thompson, which is that he can be a little bit loose, but there are always wickets in him. But he's had to take third fiddle in this match so far behind that opening pair. Yesterday, maybe just looked a little bit on the sticky, slow side, early doors, bit of moisture in the pitch, and you've still got to exploit that, as you well know. Yeah. They did that really well. Yeah, he well, started, I think they must have watered it. Um, he had a little bit... Uh, a dampness in the pitch. Um, Yorkshire were going to have a bowl, obviously. Um, we used the conditions fantastically. I mean, with the new ball, they were outstanding. And again, uh, different conditions now. The pitch is decent, but with the new ball, there's a little bit of nibble there. And they've got the ball in the right areas, ask the questions, and that's what it is. We talk about it and joke about it. You've got to use the facilities. They're there for a reason. You've bowled the, the right line, your right length, you make the baddest play. Uh, and you're going to chance to take wickets with a new ball. It's the best time to bowl. You don't want to bowl when it's flat. Nope. And it's not looked flat at any point, really. But no. Yorkshire kind of made it look flatter with the bat, but that was on account of some wayward bowling, wasn't it? I mean, it... Some poor fielding as well, I think. Yeah, um, yeah some drop catches from, from Derbyshire. Uh, they're, they're a team similar to us, where a little bit low on confidence. Um, they're searching for results. You need to get a run. And I think... I heard you actually yesterday and you're talking about, we haven't actually played that badly this year. Um, I mean, if you look at uh, the games, rain's played a big part of it. Leicestershire would have been chasing 550 if it wasn't for rain. In the end, we set them a total that should have been good enough. It wasn't. They played well, which they're allowed to do, and they won the game. We didn't bowl a ball, did we, at um, Bristol? Um, should have won the uh, Sussex game. We should have lost the Glamorgan game. And then if confidence would have been high, would have been winning matches, what would have happened at Durham? It's quite obvious, isn't it? You would have won the game. Yeah, I think that final half hour on the Saturday night at Durham sort of cost uh, Yorkshire as Thompson's latest delivery pushed into the offside. I just felt, I felt, watching on those three days up to that point, take him off the field then, come back fresh the next morning with whatever it was, 50, to, def you know, to get that final wicket, yeah. it just felt different. But from ball one on that last morning when they got uh, something like seven or eight runs in that first over mm. of the day, you just thought, nah, this no, is, feels like it's only going to go the one way now. I Even get 20 odd to win. Thompson in, round the wicket, deploy, drive straight past uh, the bowler. He's been chased down here by two players. Jaffa Chohan out there on the field at the moment. But uh, that's four runs, 50, 61 in fact now for four. 30 to deploy and 19 to Hader Alley. The, the only thing um, on uh, the Durham one about the extra half hour, but if we'd have got another wicket straight away, that would have been game over because he wouldn't have come into bat. You know, I didn't really, I thought, I thought that was offered to, or one of the skippers had to say, right, we want to play an extra half hour. And it was, I was corrected on that and the umpires apparently decided this Did game they? can be finished tonight, so we carry on. Apparently so. The scorer has corrected me on that as uh, Thompson is in. That's pushed up to mid-off where Shan Masood feels. End of the over, 61 for four. So let's move on and talk about the last few weeks because in T20 cricket, I think the last time you and I had a chat was on the staircase after that last over defeat at Worcester. <laughs> and look out for how Matthew Fisher's come back from that. Um, lost the first game, deserved to lose that match at, at Birmingham. Should have won the second match. Yeah. It's in the grasp and, and it goes deserve to lose game three but what do you put down the you know i've had chats with otis about this and the, and the players but interested in your thoughts on, on what what the upturn in fortunes is why have they won those five in a row 
Well, I think a lot of it, the way we go about things uh, as a management team is but we are very supportive, very uh, supportive of, of when players have bad days and good days. People have got to know is but we do have big plans going into every game, talking about where we're going to put the field, where we're going to bowl. You look at the dimensions of the ground, trying to get that professional um, thinking into the players' minds, thinking for themselves, talking about each individual batter, where do they hit it on this ground, where do we want to bowl. Um, obviously, that was one of my specialities as a bowler, is one-day cricket, bowling at the death and stuff like that. And we went through all the plans. But in a moment of a madness, it happened to Ben Stokes, one of the greatest all-rounders around, and it happened to Fisher. Uh, got a single by the way, the first ball up from Don Bess uh, to Hader Ali, and now going to be two to Leas Deploy, who he's just laid his bat on that through third man. So we knew bowling to a lower order batter, if you're going to bowl it short, make sure it comes through at shoulder height. If you're going to throw it wide, he's not going to hit you, a lower order batter, he's not going to hit you over point or extra cover for four sixes or three sixes. He might just hit wants one, to swing, doesn't he? Get he wants to hit swinging. through the yeah. line. Bessing again, Deploy gets his way through the covers. There's a, an attempted stop by Jaffa Cho, and I think he's got his hand on that. And Revis will pull it in from the boundary. They've got two. So that was the disappointing from Fish. But, you know, I said to him after, he'll come back stronger. He know next time he gets that opportunity and he's in that position, he'll learn from it. And one of the things that you've watched, obviously, all the games, you see... Um, you see uh, Revis, Matty Revis, how he's come on. Now he's thinking and now he's going about it. He didn't start like that. Think back to Derbyshire and Leicester last year at Edinley. Yep, here's in again. And Deploy cuts this time and we'll get four through point. Just too wide from Don Bess. Yeah, I think he's just born a little bit too slow at the minute, Don Bess. If you look at um, Watty uh, for Derbyshire, pulled it a little bit quicker. Um, Alex Thompson think, as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think he's just bowling it a little bit too slow at the moment. It's a slow pitch. Gives him no margin for error. If you can just put a little bit more revs on it, a bit more pace, he might get a better end result. Here he is again, round the wicket, deploy this time, chops it down into the deck, out to point. Revis feels no run. So we'll learn from it, you know, and, 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 and it's good to see the development of some of the young players. Like I said, Rev now, last year, look at those two games, Leicestershire, Derbyshire, Edinley, which we lost. Yep. And the way now he's coming on and knowing where to bowl it in the areas, it's, it's brilliant to see, you know. It gives so much reward. Bess again, and deploy nicely driven again. It's just a little bit too much width from Don Bess and four runs through the covers to complete the over at 74 for four. One thing I will say to you, because we've had a pop at some of your sign-ins in the last couple of years, uh, as well as some of the good ones, but David Visa is a good one. Um, he's brought, so, was a good he's one. brought something to this team um, in white ball cricket. I think mainly experience, but obviously a lot of skills as well. And from what the lads are saying to me as well, you know, it's just great. It's great having him in the dressing room, and, and obviously he's making a difference at vital moments in games. Well, one of the reasons he brought him in is experienced campaigner, plays in lots of franchise cricket around the world, is a winner. Um, he has huge success in the PSL. They speak very, very highly of him at, um, at Lahore Calanders. And it was a great signing for us. The way he plays for people like how professional he is to look at and see how he goes about his stuff, like your Thompsons, your Revis, your Mike. He can only help them moving forward. So, yes, he's, he's been excellent for us. Um, the two we had last year in one day cricket, by the way, it's not something that's regular for Yorkshire to get to quarterfinals and set finals day. We got there last year, by the way, with those terrible signings. Absolutely. Um, Rev Matthew Revis is coming on for the first time in the match at the pavilion end, bowling here to Hader Ali. That's flicked to, like I said, at one or two of them, not all of them. I, think I agree I've got with to say, one or two of them. <laughs> um, but let's not, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll wash Stay over Shannon Gabriel. Um, but I mean, last year, uh, Harris Ralph, if we could have got him good on the signing. park to play red ball Top cricket signing. more. Yeah, um, really good in the spell that he played. And Shadab could have been better in terms of what he achieved on the field. But when you watched him play in the World Cup, you can see why you signed him. Uh, because clearly a quality player in that form of the game. They're the sort of lads you'd love to see come back at some point. Yeah. Um, flicked off the legs there by Hader Ali for a single down to Longley. Would you, would you be... 
Have you already been speaking to David about getting him back for next year, for example? I don't know, there's a long way to go yet in this year's okay. competition. Yeah, he's not, he's, not, he's not getting any younger. No, so he's 30, but <laughs> he seemed, he, that doesn't look like it's a problem. Doesn't, no. doesn't age out there on the field. It's only a short game he's playing anyway. I think we're, o- we're always looking to evolve and always looking to get better. So what we have to do is see, last year we needed, I think we needed, because I wasn't sure about um, um, Rishi Adel, uh, whether he was going to play much with England stuff and everything. That's uh, Deploy just dropping this one into the offside, no run. So I thought we needed that extra uh, leg spin should have any good bat as well. This year, with the Jaffa uh, coming in, which he's been excellent for us, I think he's been really good. I think he's actually been better than his probably his figures show. He's been um, a good signing for us. Imagine him and Adol Rashid playing together, which could be interesting. Um, and then we'll see what we need next year. How can we be better? in one day cricket so we have to look at where's an area there we, where we could be better we're already looking at that Revis in deploy solidly behind it on that just to butt in so Adil Rashid every game I keep getting the question where is he when are we going to see him play what are you telling us when he's ready um, Sen is, is an England centrally contracted player you know my views on this they pay his wages we don't pay him when he's available for us he'll be picked Simple as that. He's a great bowler. He's had a great career. He's played a lot of cricket. There's a lot of cricket coming up. But when he's available, he'll be in. Ravis in to deploy. Solidly behind this one, no run. And you know, five in a row now in that uh, in the blast. You're looking at um, Derbyshire here on Sunday. Uh, Leicestershire yeah, heading late on Friday before that, and then Northampton at home next Tuesday. And uh, you clearly won't want to. Uh, start jumping the gun too far. Definitely not. Darren Goff. Some good teams there. Leicester won last time out. Derby won last time out. North Ants lost. Uh, but there are, anybody can beat anybody in this division. The North Division is stronger. Revison again. Again, deploy solidly behind it, pushing to mid on this time. End of the over. 75 for four. Yeah. But uh, we've waited a long, long time for a championship win. Six wickets still to take. Mm. Yeah, listen. Would have been ideal, wouldn't it, to have more championship wins? I think last year, uh, we've got to be really honest. Up to this six game mark, we were doing pretty well. Um, a lot of things happened. There were a lot of players out of contract. Uh, a few knew they were going. England having one day on at the same time as test matches, it ripped our side apart. We had to play players that were leaving at the end of the year. It wasn't ideal. Um, and morale was pretty low after everything that had happened. Um, so it wasn't really a shock in the end, disappointing. As uh, Bess continuing at the pavilion, at the uh, lake end, I should say, and has just been lofted down the pitch by Hader Ali for six. Good Nicely shot. played, yeah. Good shot, actually. Used his feet, shoot me down. Didn't go in, did he, with the new ball on a pair. Stayed away. Come in when the ball's a little bit softer. Gets a little bit easier, fast outfield. And he's cashing in at the moment. What is he, 27 now? 27 now. Yeah. Deploy, 42 now. Matthew Fisher's wandered down to see if he can get the ball back. And whether or not he's going to be left out there, I would doubt. Given the option of hitting over the top, might give a chance, might get underneath one. Uh, I, I mean, personally, I thought, having watched all the games, as you know, last year, that that last little period in September just nothing went right either and it was typified yeah. by what happened on the last day so I did think um, I know that there's a horrible expression of don't deserve to go down if you do you do I suppose but there were a lot of reasons yeah. last year not being able to get players on the park you know the fishes and the codes enough and they make such a huge difference as we've seen in this match if you can get them out there together as a single is uh, pulled there round back of the square by Hader Ali so I thought there were a lot of reasons really last year you know if, if players would have been if you're watching on the Derbyshire stream, I want to continue to hear Jonathan Doyle speaking to Darren Goff. Uh, you'll need to be on the BBC Sport website because in a few moments' time I've got an update for BBC Radio Derby. So apologies for that, but we'll get back to those two in conversation in just a moment's time as Don Bess comes in and bowls to Leas Deploy, who gets a ball that he chops into the ground and bounces over his stumps. 82 for four, a standard 65. Between these two for the fifth wicket. So far as uh, 
more runs here. Four of them, 69 the standout out towards the mid-wicket region. 156 the deficit. Next delivery by Bess is stroked into the offside. Yeah, and Derbyshire, just a little bit of resistance here by Hader Ali and Liz deploy the skipper. They put on 71 so far for the fifth wicket, but Derbyshire are 88 for four. They're still trailed by 154, having bowled Yorkshire out this morning for 353. Matt Lamb for eight, the latest batsman to go. He followed Harry Kame and Lewis Rees, who both made two, and Wayne Madsen, who was out for a seven-ball duck back to the pavilion. At one stage, they were 17 for four. They're currently 88 for four, trailing by 154. Four more, so they're taking on Don Bess here. And this is a test of his mettle, isn't it? 50 on the board for Lias Deploy, the Derbyshire captain. So he's doing his bit to uh, try and pull something out of the game for the home side. Um, so overseas player, at what point are we talking here? Next game. Next Championship red ball game. game. Um, with the injuries we've got now and, and the ones we've got to keep an eye on and make sure... Um, We've got a lot of cricket coming up. We've got, still got back to back to back to back to back last games. Then we've got these championship games. Then, then if things go to plan and we, we, we can do well in this next batch of games, you, you, you've just got to be prepared and you've got to get someone in who's got a bit of experience, who can bowl. Um, I looked around the loan market. There's nothing really about on that. Revis in to Hader Ali, who's flicked that square on the leg side. That's going to be another boundary. So the run starting to come here for Derbyshire. 96 for four. Uh, 32 now to Hader Ali. Wagner's still not fit. I mean, constant communication with him. Obviously, he was going to be here with us until March, until he picked up that injury playing for New Zealand. Um, he texts us after every game. He's kept a huge interest in, in how we're performing and how we play. He's been brilliant, actually, and he would have been an excellent overseas signing for us. But unfortunately... He got injured, um, so he's not going to be available for this period either, or he would have been our first choice without a doubt. Um, Revis in again, and Ed Raleigh drives straight this time, but to Shan Masood, no run. So if, for example, he was fit for those last four matches and it, it was needed, would you? Would yeah, he be a short term be, possible? He'd be someone, let's see where we are, mate. We're bottom of the table at the minute. Yep. <laughs> so um, we've got to see what happens on 27th of June, because nobody knows what's going to happen on that. Um, and then we see where we are uh, at that period. As I say, in, in an ideal world, I was going to not get anybody for this period, but I think because of the amount of cricket, uh, we might need... Revis in again, only into the offside, no run. We might need a few of our guys just to uh, rest up because we don't want to get into the situation where we end up being short again, really, really short. So there's a lot of cricket. Um, there is a bit of a gap between this one and the next Champo game, but... They do, they do come, there's a lot of cricket in June and July. So, overseas signing, clearly in the offing or maybe already dotted line. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. OK, uh, for as Ali pushes this one to Masood, no run. Are we talking rest of the season from that point? No, or no, it's just, just a, for the just middle, bit. middle bit. And then let's see where we are, shall we? Well, there's a lot going on this month, so okay. uh, we'll see so, where we are. Um, and then hopefully all our guys are all back fit. The second uh, team uh, bowlers we've got, the squad that we, we really rate highly, the, the Cliffies and the Leeches. Uh, there's two good young bowlers, but they're coming back from injury, Leech is still not 100%. Revis in, just driven straight here. Shan Masu's going to get round to it. Hader Ali picks up a single. Who is it then? Well, he's Aust I'll give you a clue. He's Australian. Australian overseas player, clearly seam bowler. Yeah, he's a seam bowler. He'll be able to bat a bit if he's an Australian. I think he can bat a bit. Left arm, this. right arm. No, he's right arm. Date of birth? Well, I don't know his date of birth. Uh, but he's, at least he's got a good record playing shield cricket. Um, and, and hopefully he's on the dotted line and hopefully we can get him here uh, for four matches um, and see where we go from there. So, um, Revis in again, flicked to leg this time by Leas Deploy. Jaffa Chohan fields no run. End of the over, 97 for four. Playing for Sheffield Shield for which um, which state was that? 
Ah, no, you listen. <laughs> You've got something to be going with for the next few hours and try and work it out. But I think when it comes, comes love doing to, this, does Goffy? Yeah, I think what it comes down to as well is that people always think overseas players cost you an arm and a leg, and they cost more than uh, some of the bowlers you've already got. If you get if you get what you're looking for, and it's somebody for a short time, they're probably looking at it and think, "Oh, what a time to come! The Ashes are on. I put my name on the on the list again. Come over." And we wouldn't do it if it was going to absolutely blow us off target. These are good good professional signings that they're not very risky. In that's fact, is in. That's flicked a leg by Ali. No run. The other thing Risky is the fact because you never know how an overseas is going to perform yep, for you. Yep. They can be as good as they are and have a great record, but until they come and play it, you, you, your fingers crossed a little bit, isn't it? Just one more question, if you like, before you go. Bessin swept by Ali. He's going to pick up four runs. He's got it away fine. Nicely played. Bess coming in for a bit of hammer in the last few overs here. Um, the process then of an overseas signing is this Otis Gibson knocks on your door and says can we do this or do you suggest it to him is it totally your decision no how much of what's what's the involvement between the pair right. of you always he does the the coaching um i do the managing so he comes to me and said i think the team needs this and he asked me what i think Bessin again Ali, oh it's aerial flick this time just short of jordan thompson at straight mid wicket no run yeah sometimes he'll come with a name um, sometimes he won't. Um, this occasion, he just said, we need a bowler. And then I go out and look and go to him then with the bowler's name. And he'll say, yes. This one, or again, not. <laughs> leg stump flicked away out to mid-wicket, one run. Uh, with this one, uh, we, we, I'll be honest with you, it become very, very difficult. We looked everywhere. We looked in different countries, we looked in South Africa, we looked in uh, Bangladesh, we looked in Pakistan, we looked in India. Um, one of the players we looked at for India got picked for the test squad to go to the West Indies, so we couldn't get, couldn't okay. get him. So you, there's a lot of, it's not like it was five, even five years ago. Trying to get an overseas player now is very, very difficult. Not many players want to come and play four day cricket. They'll come quite happily. Everybody wants to come and play in the Blast or the 100 or go to the Big Bash or go to the PSL. They don't want to come and play four-day cricket. Bess in. Oh, back foot. Leas deploy. Not sure if he's intended that. He's having a punch of the gloves as if he did. He's got four through third man. So getting an overseas player now is not as easy as you would like to think it is. It's a very, very difficult process. Why um, do they not want to come for four-day cricket but do for the blast? Because the, the, the figures, and, and it's not like they're getting paid an absolute fortune for it. They get the same for bowling four overs than they were for bowling 25. OK. Yeah? So nobody wants to come. And also, especially Australian uh, management now, they manage their bowlers differently. Bessing again, deploy watches one go by. So if you want to get someone, you have to go through their state side. Their state side said, no, we've got a programme from him, like we do with our players. We've got a programme from him, we don't want him to go. So it becomes more and more difficult to get that sign off. Um, so it is difficult, but I think the one we've got is a, a good bowler. Um, he's got a very good record, but as I said, he's, he's to come and play in county cricket, it's so not it, easy. It must be 30 plus then if he's got a really good record. No, no he's under 30. It's under 30. 30. Just still fishing, that's all. No, it's under 30. <laughs> um, but um, I'd say in the next 48 hours, I'd like to think we can, we can basically tell you who it is, but at the minute, I'm just making sure he's got his flight to book first because, like I said, you've, you've seen the players around. We've, we've, we have got bowlers who have got a poor injury record and we have to make sure we've got enough seamers for this period. Revisin bangs this one in. It's been cut, though, very nicely by Hader Ali. Timed that really well back at a point and picks up another four. 110 then for four now, Derbyshire. 42 not out to him. They've uh, put on 93 this partnership for the fifth wicket so far. What, in about 10 overs, haven't they? Um, been quick, yeah. Quick. We've not bowled very well. So I, th I think Bessie's just a little bit guilty. Yeah, they're taking him on, right? I mean, let's be straight about this. They played some risky shots against him, but he's bowled it a little bit too slow. I think it'd be something we'd probably chat to him at T about. Um, and Rev is, I say, still learning all the time. Young, very, very talented cricketer. I've been really impressed by him. 
Ball one back of a length there, driven to Jaffa Chohan in the covers. No run. One other question actually that occurs to me is um, where's David Milan? He's got a slight niggle when we're talking about injuries in his um, growing. Um, so he's going to have that looked at and see where we are um, with him going forward. He played so well. Um, we're not overly concerned, but it's always best to get checked. He's such a big player. Um, and obviously we want him fit. Absolutely, especially the way they've been playing, well, not only in this match, but in the blast recently, carrying the batting, really, uh, for much of it, as Revis's latest delivery is a dot. Last player, great to watch. Absolutely, great to watch. I've always, I've, I've, he's just one of those I've always amazed that um, England didn't carry on with him after the Ashes. I thought he was excellent. I was remember commenting on a bit on that, and I thought he played really well actually in the Ashes, and he hadn't got his chance since then. I, I feel a bit for him. Um, he's very class to watch when he's on form. Revis to Ali, driving straight. In fact, so straight it's hit the stumps at the bowler's end, and uh, no run. And you must have had players during your era, uh, it's a bit like this isn't it David, he gets back in the side, especially in red ball cricket, and it's always a difficult series coming up, and he might, you know he's, everybody's going to struggle in that series, and then he'll may, mm. might get overlooked again when the, when the yeah. easier teams come around he's, Yeah, he's just one of them, isn't he? he's always been unlucky on that, but you, you've seen, he knows his game inside out, he's brilliant to watch in one day cricket, he picks his bowlers picks his grounds, picks his area to hit uh, and he normally comes off Revis in, flick to leg, fielded there by Jordan Thompson, no run. OK, well, listen, great to have you on board again, Goffey. Thanks for coming on. No you go for a wander around the pitch, if you like. Yeah, we'll just go and um, have a wander over to the hospitality tent, mate, and have a gin and tonic, mate. We might grab you afterwards for that exclusive interview on whoever it's <laughs> going to be that we can release when it's time to release it, obviously. I will do, I'll let you Secret's know. safe with yeah. me. OK, mate. Thanks very much. <laughs> Darren Goff then, we're going to go maybe catch up with Jeffrey Boycott. And Jeff go up in the tent to our right as that uh, final ball of the over from Matthew Revis was a dot. And while Goff has been on, as you've been hearing, the ball's been disappearing to various parts of Chesterfield, mainly off Don Bess, who has been taken on here and so far um, has not been able to come back uh, within that challenge with a wicket, but who knows if he persists, maybe pushes it through that little bit quicker as Goffey suggests, he might be able to pick up two, three. Kate is uh, wanting to get a word in edgeways here. Uh, the first 50 came off 102 balls and the second 50 came off 38. That says plenty. That was about Darren Goff's worst spell, he never took a wicket at all. Uh, what's going on? Gone for 50 in 38 balls then. Uh, unbelievable. Don Bass, balls to Lears to Ploy, who uh, drives him out into the offside for a single. Some resistance. It's always easier to resist, of course, when... Uh, it's easier to resist, to resist when the pressure is off, because the pressure... There isn't real pressure on these two Derbyshire batsmen, because the game is pretty much gone. Hayley clips this next delivery from Bess into the leg side. Right, and they go through for a single. Hilton Cartwright, I've got for you. There's a name. Played for Derbyshire last season, Australia. Thank you. Yeah, it was no good. But he does play in the 100 as well. Is he under under 30? I'm not sure. He, he might be. Played for Middlesex as well. They didn't like him. The support's down there. This one is driven out into the offside by Duploy. Moises Henriques has been mentioned down the bottom end. He'd be a good signing. Whoever it is, it's somebody who's not good enough to play in the Ashes, so he won't be that good, will he? This next delivery from Bess is clipped into the leg side. Graham Hardcastle's smiling from oh. the other end of the press room, which is un That's slightly simple. unnerving, because he probably already knows who the signing is, but won't reveal. I, I always feel He's unnerved. definitely whenever, got a guilty when, yeah, smile yeah, yeah. on whenever, his face when, at this moment in time. Whenever I'm in the presence of Graham Hardcastle, I always feel slightly unnerved, if I'm honest. So this next one clipped into the leg side by what, Hader. What we're saying here, Darren Goff, is that Goff is prepared to, to go and talk to the Yorkshire website writer, but clearly when given the office on BBC No, I think I think if, if radio, you do things hasn't. as a sporting club, this next one's turned into the leg side by Hader for a single. He moves on to 44 now, 58 to deploy 114 
before. I think they, uh, I think they tried to release things under their own uh, auspices rather than blurt things out on the radio willy-nilly. I think that's how these things work these days, sadly. I've got myself in a right old tangle. I knew there was something going on because he alighted in front of the, as if to say, go on, ask me to come yes, on. Yes, I've, on, got, I've got some news. Get me on now. Oops, sorry, Kate, I'm making a terrible mess of everything here. Thank you. With my instinctive nose for a news story, not. I thought, well, go on, we'll get him on for a minute. No, <laughs> absolutely. Always, 25. No, always good to hear from uh, an England legend. Matthew Revis then. I was particularly impressed with the way you asked him how he enjoyed Chesterfield and how, if he had any good memories of it. Thanks for uh, bringing it round to that kind of thing, rather than just talking about Yorkshire. Yorkshire's next signing on the Derbyshire stream. Revis is in, and that's turned back with a square on the leg side, and Thompson does the fielding. No run. I could understand it when you speak to the chief executive and the head of cricket at Durham, because there's no real compunction to talk about Durham on account of the fact that the Durham man doesn't talk about Durham. But, you know, would have been nice. One of my colleagues was particularly impressed with, the way, with his commentary, actually, which he, he said was actually better than yours. That's not difficult as uh, Revis comes in again over the wicket. Ooh, just a little bit on the low side as Haider Ali sensibly plays that with the full face of the blade and pushes it to Shan Masood at mid-on. Much more of a ring field about things now with one slip in place and a gully. It hasn't been said, but uh, stating the obvious, that Derbyshire have actually passed their first innings total. Yes. Derbyshire have actually passed their first innings total. As Ravis is dodgy. in. And that's clipped <laughs> onto his either. bad there by Hader Alley. And there is <laughs> no run. Does that constitute the triumph? Probably not. Derbyshire lead themselves by three, with six second innings <laughs> wicked standing. <laughs> Adam Lyle has just been moving closer in at uh, mid-wicket. Catching position, oh, just a bit too loose there from Matthew Revis. Short of length, and uh, Ada Ali can certainly cut the ball. I think we've seen that already. Played that with the uh, full face of the blade. That's the 100 and partnership. Wow. Well, I'm making a note of that. And Ada Ali. 115 balls. 48 not out. 118 for four. Jai Richardson, another uh, person who's being mentioned. Uh, messages coming in as a potential Australian. So he'd be useful. Revis down the hill. Over the wicket again. And four more. Ball in pretty much the same delivery as he did the ball before, which went for four. And uh, while I do agree with Darren Goff, that uh, Matthew Revis has been on the improve. That was not an improved delivery. And Hader Ali raises his bat to the warm applause of the crowd because he's made it to 50. 52 to be precise. 122 for four. 52 from? 60 balls. Including? Eight fours. Beautiful. And one six. six. And a six. Oh, yeah, but we've got a six. I finished my update at three o'clock. I can hear the newsreader talking to the uh, presenter saying, "Well, it's on, isn't it? It's on." And I'm thinking, "No, don't start talking nonsense." And one of them's uh, one of them. The newsreader is currently seconded from Sport, and the person who is doing the show is on Sport as well, <laughs> or used to be on Sport. He's now uh, and left. Here comes Revis again, once more back of a length, and once more pushed into the offside. This time in front of Square Square cover. And that four more, so an expensive over here by Matthew Revis, has come to an end with Derbyshire on 126 yeah, for four and Hader Ali on 56 balls, not out. 27 overs complete. It is third half century of the season. It's fair to say it hasn't been a happy time for him necessarily, but three half centuries, two ducks as well. He's currently in his 11th innings. Derbyshire and has now passed 200 runs for the campaign, which is very nice for him. Uh, Lear's deploy has been uh, much more successful. He's closing in on 500 runs for the season. Nice score of 95. Four half centuries, two of them in the 90s. 
So these two are very capable. Still Brooke Guest, the recognised batsman to come. I've lost my team sheet and everything in it. It's all gone belly on. So, uh, the lake end, George Hill. I see George Hill for the first time in this innings, I believe. <laughs> and Eddie's listening. I, I, he doesn't believe what he says either. No, I'm with you. Absolutely. I wonder how... Uh, if, uh, I wonder uh, what am I saying? Um, he put together a news bulletin whilst listening to the cricket, but clearly it can be done. I've heard it with my own ears. And George Hill in conversation at the moment at the far end of the ground with Matthew Fisher, who bowled, has bowled to good effect from the lake end in this match. He's going to be bowling initially to Lears to Ploy, the Derbyshire skipper. With Derbyshire on 126 for four. And here is Hill. Bowls to deploy. Who edges it down into the ground about a yard in front of Adam Lai? That was a poor shot. As I said, when Darren Goff was sitting here, he's, he's kind of looked like he could go any moment since the moment he came in with those <laughs> deliveries that were shooting from Ben Code at the pavilion end. He's somehow survived and not only that, got 58 to his name, but he's still... Not wholly convinced in this knock, has he, Fletcher? No, absolutely. He bats like a, almost like a traditional left-hander who always looks in a spot of bother, and they tend to. As Hill is in again, and that one, uh, well, he didn't really know where that had gone as he jabbed his bat down on it. He danced into the offside to make sure he could kick the ball away if he really needed to, in the end. He probably didn't. Ten overs, including this one, to go until the tea interval, incidentally. So, uh, another 10 past 14, another quarter to seven finish if Derbyshire aren't bowled out by the end of the day and if rain doesn't intervene, but those three o'clock showers didn't arrive. The two o'clock showers didn't either. None, none have come. That's a nice shot from Deploy. Just guides it down to backward point, picks up a single. And God continues to uh, do his duties shaking people's hands. I've got itchy ears. I don't know what your problem is. You know, okay, she is. Not to the extent that I need to sink a bick halfway down, oh, no. Well, congratulations. 127 for four. Fifty-six to Hayley, fifty-nine to deploy. He's got the guesswork going anyway. Edward Harlan says Oz. Tim David question mark. Berendorf is too old. Tim David. Not really for overseas uh, Seam bowler to back up Jordan Thompson. Absolute fraud. This one is pushed into a short third man when it's uh, fielded by Finlay Bean. My, uh, the only time I've seen Tim David live was last season when he was playing for Lancashire. They came to Derby. They needed very few off the last over. George Scrimshaw was bowling it. Uh, Tailender at the other end. And Tim David took a single off the first ball of the last over and watched Lancashire fail to get over the line from the other end. This one is driven nicely by Hayder. He got a touch to it, Hill. Took all the pace off it. They get through for a single. What's it gone all the way to? It's gone all the way to the boundary. I thought, I thought he'd taken the pace out there. So I'll show you what I know. Took all the pace off it and it was stopped, but it's gone all the way to the boundary for four. He didn't take all the pace off it. He took some pace off it. 60 now to Hayder. That's his 10th four. Just the sort of knowledgeable much. commentary that uh, BBC listeners and Derbyshire stream viewers come to expect. Hill turns at the top of his mark. He's got it. Well, he's walking in. And falls to <laughs> Hayder. Well, that's because he's a proper journalist. <laughs> and uh, Hayder pushes it up to mid on, and there's no run. Tattersall wants something. Does he want the helmets removing? He certainly wants something. He's just waved, yes. At the, Fielding pads are coming out as well. 131 for four at the end of the over, 60 to Hayda, 59 to deploy. And uh, introducing Graham Hardcastle, who's going to replace uh, David Fletcher on the commentary now to tell us who it is. He isn't. I'm fed up with talk about Yorkshire's signings. Can you replace me then? Not well, anybody could. That's a fair comment.
Ben Code coming back into the attack at the pavilion end. I think Shan Masood's seen enough now from everybody but his opening bowlers, and uh, nobody else has managed to take a wicket in this second innings bar that pair. Only Jordan Thompson has managed a wicket, in fact, two to his name, barring Code and Fisher for Yorkshire in this match. So, no great surprise that after a flurry of activity, as far as runs are concerned, the last, what, 45 minutes or so. Just to back that up, uh, the last 10 overs have gone for 79 runs. Oh, dear me. Stinging, oh, that is. Um, not good, as uh, for Code induces a bit of an edge from Deploy first up. It bounces short of slip and runs on down towards the third man boundary. Finley Bean hauls it back in. That they get through for two. George Hilly, it is at uh, slip there to the lefty. So Code has got mid on, cover, point, gully, one slip, deep backward square leg on the boundary edge, with the puffin Billy just moving along behind him. Mid wicket and mid on. Jaffa Chohan at mid on. Fly over the top of this and drops it into the offside. And uh, Ben Cliff does the fielding. They get a single, so Yorkshire with two substitute fielders on at the moment. You heard David Milan has a slight niggle, which they're trying to manage. Didn't stop him scoring the 30th first-class century earlier in this match. 134 for four, and who knows the way they're going at the moment. Darby, she could be in for a couple of centurions here. Deploy on 62 now. I know what you're trying to do here. And 60 to Hader Alley. <laughs> 40, each of them are 40 away from a century. Covered over the wicket, bowling here to Hader Ali. Wow. Who uh, is four runs closer to that uh, potential century. 64 to his name now. And that is a rare stray from Ben Code. We ain't seen much of that in this match. But he gave him some width, dropped it too short, and he was smashed away right out of the middle of Hader Ali's bat through the covers for four. That was some shot from Hader who is uh, clearly a very fine batsman. Drop down the order for this second innings, and it, at the moment, seems to be paying off. Code then pushes off, coming in again past umpire Chris Watts. Flick to leg this time by Hader Alley. Jordan Thompson is quickly round from mid-wicket. No run. <laughs> uh, James Green says Meredith Aussie quick seamer. I keep looking down the row because he's listening, you know. Oh, I've cast him. Not, not even a flick at that time. He's like this typical Lancastrian, really. Thinks he's got one over on a Yorkie. Well, the pair of you are the same, aren't you, really? Code in, driven. That's a shot. beautiful shot by Hader Alley. It's as good as anything we've seen in the match so far. As coaches say, give us that number nine shape, and that was spot on. Placed it through the gap in the offside. And uh, Ben Code also going for a few here. This ball still got a long way to go with it. Just into its 29th over of use. Derbyshire now 100 runs behind. Is it just 100? Yes, it is, isn't it? Of course it is. I've got 101 written down here because I can't do maths. <laughs> Uh, does that last ball go for four? Code in again, flick to leg this time. That could be four more. Chan Masood giving chase, but giving up as it runs out towards the suits to our right. And uh, three boundaries off of Ben Codover. Who'd have thought it? 146 for four. And having been pilloried for suggesting that these two players might get to 100, one of them's now 28, shy of it, in... Uh, Hader Ali, 72 not out, 29 overs complete in this Derbyshire second innings. I didn't pillory you at all. I suggested that you were desperately trying to talk about a bit of desperation from the Yorkshire's, Yorkshire perspective. The problem that Derbyshire have got, of course, is that there's uh, Brooke Guest and then Alex Thompson, Mark Watt, Ben Aitchison and Saranga Lagmal to come. So much rests on these two. Hader Ali 
has scored seven fours in his last ten deliveries. Blimey. It's also his highest score of the season, 72. Ball's gone mad. I've got to go and do an update. Apologies. Small mercies and all that. George Hill from the lake end, round the wicket to... I'm here and ready for an update. Uh, Colsey had sent me a message saying 25 to, so... Uh, a bit of on-air production. 146 for four. There we go. Music. Yeah, well, well, no, no, he was, uh, he told me that, I, he messaged me after the song, but I'm here now. 149 for four. Well, me and Coles have got a special relationship. That one is pushed up to mid off. <laughs> it's only a short song, mind. 93 behind now. As this next delivery is driven out into the old side. Single taken. Paid us on 73. Lears deploy on 65. To say, Hayda's high score of the season so far. Highest, therefore, for Derbyshire. This third half century deploys fourth. One fifty at one fifty for four. And 92, still in arrears. As his next delivery from Hill is pushed out into the offside by uh, Lear's deploy. It sounds like the Jonas Brothers in my ears. 150 for four. 73, head rally 65. Lear's deploy is on strike. George Hill. Ready to bowl his final ball of the over. Current run rate. There we go. In the innings as a whole. Five and over. End of the over. Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> They're still four down and looking a lot better, but still in some trouble, I think it's fair to say. They're still 92 behind. Was it 91? That's 91 behind, I think, now. Uh, 151 for four, but and we ought to rejoice in, in, a, in a very decent spell uh, for the Derbyshire batsman. Liz Deploy and Head Rally both gone to half centuries. Head Rally's on 73, his high score of the season for Derbyshire. Uh, it's his third half century, got there from 60 deliveries. Deploy took one delivery more. Uh, it's his fourth of the season as well. He's on strike at the moment as uh, Ben Code bowls to him. He pushes it out into the offside. They've also added uh, 134 so far for the fifth wicket. And we just had a spell a few minutes ago, the end of a spell of 79 runs from 10 overs which in county cricket is quite remarkable, really. Their overall run rate for the innings is over five and over Derbyshire at the moment, which is terrific. Uh, good entertainment for the uh, very decent crowd inside Queen's Park. But as I say, they are still in some trouble. A couple of things that might work in their favour. Uh, well, one, certainly, that this ball is just 30 overs old. It's not going to get any better than it is at the moment. And there's another 50 to go before they get a new ball. And if they carry on at five and over and these two stay together, it's a lot of ifs. Um, then, then Derbyshire might stand a chance. And I spoke to Lears Deploy at the close of play last night. The poor 
uh, Skipper was shoved out of the changing room to uh, speak to us. And didn't speak for very long, which was understandable. I didn't, I didn't want to push him too hard because it was a terrible day's play. Um, and, uh, and he said, well, we have to more than match what uh, Yorkshire get in their first innings. They made 353, so still some way off that. And he thinks the spinners will come into, uh, come into play. Well, it's a big if if they can get past that 353. But we saw Mark Watt with career best figures earlier on today of 5 for 83. So you just never know. And you're absolutely right about four-day cricket. This is the beauty of it. In, in a one-day game, it's all done and dusted. Thanks very much. And you can pretty much tell what's happening. But the, the pitch hasn't flattened out in any way. There are still the odd one keeping low. But these two are doing all right at the minute. Yes. Well, well, Liz Deploy in last season's game, uh, I, I don't know if you saw it, but it was a, a remarkable innings that got Derbyshire over the line in, in torrential rain. Uh, he was dripping wet when we spoke to him in the kitchen here at Chesterfield after his match-winning performance. So, yeah, they've, they've, they had the wood over at Yorkshire in T20 cricket. Here. Matt Critchley did it a few years ago as well off the final over. So uh, we're all looking forward to Sunday. What we'd really like to do is look forward to tomorrow. Uh, because if Derbyshire is still here tomorrow and still batting, they might have a squeak, you know. <laughs> yes, take it each half hour as it comes. <laughs> They've moved out of the red hot sun. There's a large conglomerate down the far end, a congregation, I should say, down the far end of the ground uh, behind fine leg as it would be to the left hander. And he gets solidly behind this and pushes back to Ben Code, 151 for four. Uh, so quite a few people have moved in the shade round there and away to our left on the more popular side of the ground. I think it's as hot today as it was yesterday. I, I do again yeah, now. It, yeah. is, it has warmed up. And when I was standing at the back when you were talking to Darren Goff, it was like I was being broiled. It was weird. Broiled? Mm. I've no idea I'll what have it to is. Google that. <laughs> it's a cooking term. Uh, not that I do any cooking, but uh, if you, you, you broil a chicken, I think, don't you? Yeah, well, you're right, you're spot on. Yeah. Cook meat or fish by exposure to direct heat. Oh, well, there we go. Be, yeah, he lightly broiled a wedge of sea bass. Hill bowls, <laughs> that's exactly what I was doing. Hill bowls to Hayden, who pushes this one up. Or to become very hot, especially from the sun. Well, so there we spot go. on. Yes, but I wasn't in the sun. I told you that's, better that's English much, than me. But, uh, yeah, I just, I just felt like I was being broiled. Yeah, you weren't in the sun and you didn't have any sea bass. No, but apart from that, it's an absolutely accurate description of the... Uh, cloud has now come across the sun which is very pleasant brick just... point accuracy <laughs> here's hill into ball to hader who drives that his bat sounds broken to me it can't be of course but hmm? i only call i've only ever called him hader yeah that's what i call him only it's naming conventions i spoke with atif nawaz about naming pakistani naming conventions and it's very complicated, but he did tell me a number of things. And Zaman Khan is commonly known as Zaman, and Hader Ali is more commonly known as Hader than, than Ali, which is why I call him Hader. But he's batting now. Oof, it's an inside half of the bat on the drive up to mid on. Could be heckled by members of my own media team now, which is never good. It's heckling me from the back. Stephen Martin, just to name the guilty party. Seemed a bit harsh. Somebody's popped out of the uh, the gazebo and wondered, has wondered where the sun's gone. But it's warm in there, by the way. I want to be sitting inside there for too long. Talking about creaky. Right. In comes Hill at bowls to Hader, who drives up to mid off. Again, there's no run scored. That's done best, I think. Who does the fielding? 151 for four, it remains. There's not much better is there in life than, than talking about cricket, to be honest. Being paid to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, being paid is, to talk about it slightly, slightly better. better. But yeah, you're right. You're right. I do it for nothing on a Saturday afternoon on the edge of a cricket field in Blackrod. One or two, potentially one or two more expletives in my uh, 
Yes, Hader pushes this one up to Donbass again. And there's no room. Well, I also get heckled by a particular member of staff. Is there a, is there a character at Black Rod? You know, one of those, everybody knows there's, there's one person and he's either funny or he's dour or whatever. You're talking Hapless. to him. Hapless, that's me. <laughs> Um, there's a few, well, there's, yes, I mean, it's a small community, Black Rod, it's a, quite a small village. So, yeah, there's a lot of people to talk to on a Saturday afternoon. This Hill Bowls uh, Hader, who goes up on his toes and guides this down to a very wide third man, who comes around the boundary's edge to do the field in Ben Code and hurls it back in. They go through for two, and it's a no ball as well. 150 uh, for, for, for seven for four potentially, or 155. Have they already put the two runs on, I think? No? Yes, they had, 155 for four. Welcome, Arkwright, to the commentary box. Was that the, uh, yes, was that the first no ball? It is the first of no ball of Yorkshire, this innings, uh, and of the, um, of the match in terms for of Yorkshire. For Yorkshire, yeah, I thought so. Free hit. Yes, indeed, 155 for four. Hey, that, oh, he plays and misses the ball fortunately for him it goes through to johnny tattersall good delivery to finish the over from george hill from the delivery that he should never have had because it was the one for the no ball 155 for four at the end of the over 75 to hayda 66 to leah's deploy well, that looks nice thank you 37 overs remaining so five until the tea break My, uh, Fletch with a massive slice of watermelon. Mm. That, that'll do nicely, thank you very much. Beautiful. Not quite sure how to commentate with. Well, it's your over. <laughs> <laughs> with getting the pips out and doing it oh, over, but. You can, uh, you can borrow my pen top if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll do. The one that's been in me here. Yeah, yeah. You oh. can actually eat the pips. I oh, know, but do they not grow inside you? So is that a myth? Look at the size of me, what do you think? So you eat the pips, is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. Pen code from the pavilion end, bowling to Leas deploy round the wicket. Tucks him up there and he just drops into the leg side and there is no run. I keep getting messages from all sorts of people. Always enjoyed a nice uh, watermelon. Uh, I've already explained who it was, Ed. Come on, keep up. Code turns again. Going to come in past umpire Chris Watts, the front arm high, and uh, he's just wide above stump. Drop down towards the incoming Finley Bean from Gully. No run, 66 to Leas, 75 to Hayda Alley. So the experiment of uh, pushing him down the order certainly has worked. Partnership began together at 17. Well, far and away, Derbyshire's biggest partnership of the match. His code in again and deploy. Oh, now then, this one just seemed to lift a little. And uh, he played it with caution, played it well. Being again the fielder. But as you say, it's still, it's, it doesn't, he never looks completely in, does he? He never looks completely in. Talking of the pips, by the way, Gladys Knight played her last date in in England at Manchester. Tonight, last night. Week last Saturday. Well, last well, ever date. Yeah, ever. Mm. Yeah. Of all time in history. As goes in again. And the deploy pushed back to the bowler in his follow through. And again, no run. Very nice, Bob. <laughs> Do you know what? That's one thing I used to despise on television when the cookery program and they always had to try what it was and they always said it was delicious every single time didn't they? <coughs> with a mouthful of food just like yeah. Fletch just did I'm so delicious, yeah. delicious. Very, very oh nice. beautiful very nice code coming in deploy right behind this one played it well code back on it here after that little wayward over Gives it a shine, lobs the ball out to Bess, who is at uh, mid on. Ben Coe's got a way of, he walks back to his mark, probably just normally for him, but the way he threw the ball there was kind of. 
Will's on my shoulders here. Turns again. Shirt hanging out, number 10 on the back of it. And uh, it's up there with the thought of a drive for Leah's deploy, but kind of checks that really and punches it to Jordan Thompson. End of the over, Ben Cody's calling for somebody to come on. And that might mean he might be going off. 33 overs complete for Derbyshire second time around. 155 for four. Could it be James Wharton who's coming out? There's some sun cream in James Wharton's right hand. Maybe uh, passing that on. Um, I'm going to keep quiet a minute and eat the water. Eat that one before it melts. Henry, oh, very kind. Thank you very much. Somebody's just... Uh, I'll, I'll jump in then. Mm. That was the uh, second uh, consecutive maiden from Ben Code after going... Uh, for 15 runs in the over before that. They've just slowed that run rate down. It was above five for the entire innings a few overs ago. It's come down to 4.7. It doesn't take much to apply the brakes. 155 for four means they trail by 87. I was talking to you in the last update. Chris Coles in the studio was saying how, how impressive the, f the last hour had been for Derbyshire. I said, well, yeah, they have played well, but they're still a long way from being out of the woods at this stage. 155 for four. George Hill bowls. That's driven by Hader up to mid on. And there's no run. Were they to uh, take a big, a big lead? They don't take any lead. It would be remarkable. David Milan wouldn't be able to bat in his normal position because he hasn't been on the field for the entire innings. I think he'd probably, I think he'd be normally coming at seven, don't they, if you've not been on the field. Next delivery is uh, clipped nicely into the leg side by Hayden. Leah's deploy sets off for a single that's not there. Chapa Chauhan does the fielding. He is a little bit more enthusiastic about taking his runs, isn't he, than maybe some of his teammates, Leah's? Yes, yes, yeah. Stand by to be barbecued. Because uh, as the batsman at the other end, you, you basically have to stand your ground. <laughs> oh, you could be in a whole heap of trouble. Hill in again. That one is driven but straight to Don Bess at mid off. When's your next update then? 4.30. Ooh. If they remember this time. That's another 4.30 means another uh, put one set of headphones to one ear and the other set of headphones to the other, which is always a joy. Why do you have to put little headphones in, don't you? Due to our broadcasting limitations here at uh, Chesterfield. This one is driven straight down the ground by Hader with some force. He'll try to get down to stop it but couldn't get a hand on it that's a nice shot from Hader who moves up to 79 now 159 for four I have broadcasting limitations wherever I broadcast from well, I do too As any break of the listeners will hear will know it's a good shot that from Hader but with some force he doesn't want to do anything silly here I think is the advice that uh, should be getting out there Adam Lyth is coming out of slip, going to it. I think he's going into that position that Lear's deploy occupied in the Yorkshire innings, that very straight, short, mid-off. That's exactly where he's gone. And Hill is in, and Hayder tries to whip this one away down the leg side. He makes no contact. Tattersall can't take it cleanly, and there's no run. There are more clouds up above now, but they're not the threatening type. They're certainly not the threatening clouds that blew in around six o'clock last night when it went quite dark and then rained a lot. Next delivery from Hill, defended by Hader into the on site, picked up by Shan Massoud, the Yorkshire skipper. And it's the final ball of the over, 159 for four. Three overs until T. 79 to Hader Ali and 66 to Leas Deploy. Hmm. David Griffin's put a, a photograph of Darren Goff, Kate, and Doiji with me standing at the back. Like a bouncer. And 
Don Toffley's commented on it, which is the last thing you need, really. Yeah, I mentioned that while you were what not listening, I think. What did Toffley's have to say? Uh, something about bouncers, commentary boxes. Uh, ben Code is going to continue then at the pavilion end. Matthew Revis has just uh, kindly, I think, helped Heder Ali tie his bootlace, which is uh, something a bit different. And in comes Code round the wicket, bowling to deploy. He punches it to Jordan Thompson, who's very close in at cover, saving <laughs> one. Ken Davis has sent a, sent a joke, talking of Gladys Knight. You know, she has a, she's famous for having an irrational fear of daylight. Midnight train to Georgia? No, Davis? she's glad it's night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he says he'll get his coat. <laughs> More than his coat if he comes out with <laughs> jokes like that. Here's uh, Code coming in around the wicket to deploy. It looked like he'd got a nick on that, maybe, but I don't think there was any interest in that regard from Yorkshire. It was just uh, fumbled by Jonathan Tattersall. Yorkshire's Keeper back in the side, of course, more recent times. As I was mentioning yesterday, missed out for a while. Welcome back to listeners from Five Sports Extra. The latest from here is that Derbyshire, in their second innings, have had a recovery, a stage of recovery. 142 unbroken for this uh, fifth wicket. 159 for four they are from 17 for four earlier as Deploy gets behind this latest Benko delivery. And there's no run. And Kate Holdsworth, who's alongside, was saying that in a 10 over spell, was it, Kate? It was a 10 Went at over seven, spell. 79 in 10 overs. 79. The Yorkshire bowlers, ben, Don Bess and Matthew Revis, the two mainly to suffer at the hands of Ada Alley, who's 79 not out. And Leos Deploy, who's lived dangerously on occasions, on quite a few occasions, really. But he's 66 not out, and on strike here. Go around the wicket. And Deploy punches into the offside where Shan Masood feels. Masood back on turf on which he was successful for Derbyshire against Middlesex last year. Made 67 in Yorkshire's first innings. Derbyshire still some way from being out of the woods. Yeah. 83 behind. This is at least promising. But it is. It doesn't still look like it's a pitch where you can be wholly confident and particularly from the end here that which Ben Coe's ball in the pavilion end he's had a few that have shot through or kept fairly low Deploy has been really good in negotiating those safely enough he just uh, watched one go past the off stump taken by Tarasol but for Yorkshire I was mentioning Jordan Thompson two wickets in the first innings but aside from that it's really been about the opening bowlers in this match and the ball in this second innings is now 34 overs old so approaching the halfway point of its uh, useful life the sun's been shining all day if you're ever going to get good batting conditions then this is the sort of time you want to be out there as deploy punches this uh, final ball of the over to shan masood and remains on 66 so 35 overs complete second time around for derbyshire still a fair way to go to uh, make Yorkshire bat again, but they're making a good fist of it, at least in the middle part of this second innings. Yes, it'd be uh, some achievement if they could do that, having been so abject, 111 all out and then 17 for four in their second innings, but trailing by 83, let's say with work to do, deploy 66 from 94 deliveries, 11 for fours. Ader Ali has 79 from 83 with 14 falls and a six. And as uh, Doji said, 142 runs from 166 deliveries as Don Bess returns. Second spell from the lake end, the end at which earlier on today Mark Watt completed career best figures of five for 83. He's got a slip, he's got a leg slip. They're the two close couches. Bess is in Bolster Hader, who sweeps him quite fine, but there is a man down at long leg, so they're only going to get a single for that as uh, Matthew Revis does the fielding. There's Jeff, Jeff Cope. Good to see him here in the hospitality area. 
I'd say not seen him for a while. Since my Halifax town days, he was a regular at the Shea. I would imagine he still is. And why not? FA Trophy winners this season. Another trophy brought back to Yorkshire, Dodgy. I want to say another. A trophy brought back to Yorkshire. <laughs> it's best. 160 for four. And he's in around the wicket to bowl to the left-handed deploy. He just guides it out towards the point boundary for a single. 161 for four. Trail by 81. Former president, of course, Jeff. Just... Uh been replaced in that role by Jane Powell and his dog I can't remember the name of his dog now I should know but uh, always so well behaved be feeling that with the black hair in this uh, sun blank uh, Ali turns his next delivery from Don Bess into the leg side no run Dickie Bird is in attendance today as well Bass around the wicket, bowls to Hayder, who uses his feet to go down the track and smashes him back over his head for six. His second six for Hayder. The deficit down to 75. 167 for four, and Hayder moves to within 14 of his first century of the season. And that's the 150 partnership of uh, 170 balls. And when he finishes his career, he's got a job with the Forestry Commission, I think, because he did his little bit to clip bit of excess branch off the tree there. It was, uh, it was Hayder who was sent into the trees earlier on this morning as well, wasn't it, to try and retrieve a yeah. ball after it had been smashed into the, uh, well, out of the ground. Bess in again, balls to Hayder, who just turns this one into the leg side. No run there, as it's fielded nicely at uh, square leg by Finlay Bean. 67 for four, trailing by 75. Final, final ball of the over from Bess is uh, slightly miscued straight back to him by Hayder for a dot ball. 167 for four and one over to go until T, which will be described by my colleague Jonathan Doidge as I wonder if I can hold off before doing my update, my four o'clock update, probably not. It'll be close. Ish. Finished? It being four o'clock now. Have now. Yes, thank you, Jonathan. Carry on. <laughs> That's code then from the pavilion end. And he's going to be bowling here to Leas deploy. Mid on, mid off. Matthew Revis in a catching position. Fairly close at a straight mid wicket as code comes in. Round the wicket to deploy. Punches back to the bowler, no run. There's another more regulation mid wicket. Matthew Fisher, I think it is. So many players in the floppy hats. Not as easy to tell as normal. Uh, there is a player down at long leg. This is Ben Coates, uh, 12th over, and his previous 11. He went for 15 off one of them and 12 off the other 10. Real freak over that, wasn't it? He didn't quite get it right to Hader Alley and went for three boundaries. He's in again there, bowling to Deploy, who pushes to Shan Masood at mid-off. Apart from the ones I've mentioned on the offside here, there's Adam Lai at first slip, Finley Bean in the gully. Jaffa Chohan has been out there fielding as a substitute for some time, is at point, and Jordan Thompson in the covers. No David Milan for this entire afternoon session. Carrying a groin niggle, according to Darren Goff, who came and sat with us for quite some time. Had a good chat with him. Yorkshire about to name an overseas signing. Up, but he's saying it's not on the dotted line just yet. As Code pushes the ball back. Or has the ball pushed back to him, I should say, by Leas Deploy. So look out for that over the next couple of days. And Aussie, he's told us, under 30. Just take over from Deutsch as I do a, an update. I don't know why the line dropped, but it dropped. Very irritating today. We've had one or two issues here. They trail by 75, still Derbyshire at 167 for four. As we approach the T interval, code is in again. Arm bowls to deploy. Ball is pushed out into the offside, and there is no run.
So Ben Coward on his way in. Bowls. That one is defended out into the onside. There is no ball. No run. No ball. A no run. 167 for four. 86 to Hader. And 67 to Leas Deploy. Two balls left until the T interval. Code on his way in. Balls to deploy. That one keeps low. One ball to go until T here in the In fact, that is T. And the Derbyshire are 167 for four. They're still behind by 75 runs, but it's been a terrific afternoon for Leas Deploy and Hader Alley. Deploy goes into the interval on 67. Hader on 86, 14 shy of what would be his first century in Derbyshire colours. There was a spell of 79 runs from 10 overs at one point this afternoon. These two have put on 150 so far for the fifth wicket. Derbyshire still fighting. 167 for four, trailing by 75. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
to read to read it. Taking bits out of the bucket.
in and balls to Rudy. Well, we need steward there, don't we? to read it. <laughs> oh no, it won't be, it won't be too. But we sold a lot. Yeah, we sold that, yeah. I must have tried it. That one. to read it.
course to read Welcome back to Queen's Park in Chesterfield for the evening session of the second day of the match between Derbyshire and Yorkshire. Derbyshire 
at T on day two. One six seven for four. Header alley on eighty six. Let's deploy on sixty seven. They put on one hundred and fifty for the fifth wicket so far. But Derbyshire still trail uh, by seventy five runs. And Chris Watts and Yorkshire led by Captain Sean Masood. I don't know if you heard that in the background. You might just have caught it that the umpires are back. As, it, as are the Yorkshire players and Hader and Deploy following closely behind. At least she's not saying make some noise. No, you bears. I was getting sick of you bears on Wednesday night, I can tell mm. you. And it was a gripping game as well. The, the thing that really irritates me about the music and the, 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 the people trying to whip the crowd into a frenzy is when it's a close game and people are absorbed in the cricket. An over comes to an end and you think, well, you're trying to calculate, you know, 40 off the last three overs and all the rest of it. And they start playing some tune. Mm. Pointlessly. They've got a guy at Trent Bridge. Have you, have you been to Trent Bridge yet this year? Uh, yeah. Is that way? Yeah, okay. The, uh, the well, DJ, in, uh, we lost, so, yes. lost there again. Yeah, yeah. The guy, the DJ in the corner. Yes, indeed. Mm. Don't forget your half past. No. No. Excellent. Uh, yes, irritating. I'm poised, but I thought I might do... You know, an over or something to kick us off, shall I? Absolutely, I be, be my guest. Yeah. If they can get through this over in uh, five minutes. Should be possible, shouldn't it? Hader Alley on 86, then he's not out. Matthew Fisher, he's back on, having bowled just the five overs in this innings to bowl at him. And this first delivery is more than a defensive shot. Pushed, went firmly back past Fisher. Let's just have a quick look around and see if... Yorkshire have a David Milan back on the field. And doesn't look like it's the case still. Lie that slip, Bean at point, Ben Cliff, sorry, at point, Bean at uh, Gully. It's Fisher's in again. Head rally drives at this one. Pushes it to Don Bess at mid off. No run, Jordan Thompson. He's in the covers. Shan Massoud at mid on to the right hander. George Hill has come out from slip and gone in at mid wicket. And there's a deep backward square leg. And a long leg, is it? Yeah. Down there. Jaffa Johan, perhaps. It's yeah, very difficult so. to see through so. the variety of railings that are being sported here at uh, Queen's Park as. Here, Ali pushes out into the offside and Ben Cliff fields. No run, yeah, it's Jaffa Chand out, fine leg. Revis is at square leg on the boundary. There are a number of things that this gazebo would benefit from, but being five foot further towards the pitch is one would of them, Would help, wouldn't it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, might. Uh, can we not manage that? I don't think we can lift it. <laughs> I mean, talking... But, you know, like the the Sunday, can they not? I don't think they can move it. We've seen the forward. big things they've smashed into the ground to secure it. That's the problem. But there's nothing to secure it in the concrete. Fisher to Hader Alley, who drives, and Jordan Thompson fields in the covers. One of the issues, certainly. Or have been knocked down that wall. One or the other. I think it'd probably be easier to knock down the wall than move the gazebo. Is it, is it a gazebo? I don't know what the definition of a gazebo is. I'm honest. I don't think it is a gazebo. because no, I, I think a gazebo like is a things. permanent structure. Oh, is it a permanent is structure? It? I think so. Well, 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 there's one way to find out. Fisher in. And Hader Alley solidly behind this one, pushing up to Don Bess at mid-off. And again, no run. Yeah, I did wonder. When is it a gazebo? When is it a marquee? When is it a, a tent? People often refer to tented villages, don't they, at events? Cheltenham Festival, been down there in the tented village. I've, I've not been to Cheltenham. The way things are going here, I could be going to Royal Ascot this week. Or is it next week? No, it's next week, isn't it? as um, Hader Alley punches this one into the covers. Jordan Thompson doing the fielding. 
The gazebos overlap with pavilions, kiosks, alhambras, belvedere's follies, gloriettes, pergolas and rotundas, apparently. I don't know what any of those other ones are. <laughs> well, having been to the Alhambra in uh, Granada, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say this is similar. No, no, I know. I've seen pictures of it and it doesn't feel similar. Yeah, no. To go for the pavilion end, per John Best. Pergola or pergola. Discuss. That's, a, that's another good question. Yeah. What would you say? Pagola. Here's Don Bass from the. I have no idea, really. Don Bass from the uh, Pavilion End for the first time, I think. Yes. I thought so. I was going to try his luck from the Pavilion End. And why not? Why not? 167 for 40. Bold to deploy. Who just drives that out square on the offside for the first runner of the evening session? Nicely done. 74 behind. I have to do a little countdown now because when I do my update, I can never work it out in my head. And the update comes relatively soon. <laughs> Currently in the news, so we're not too far away. Bass. In again, and balls turned into the leg side by Hayder. Picked up by Jordan Thompson, and there's no run. <coughs> Gets through his overs nice and quickly, does Donbass. As a spinner, he's over the wicket, bowling to Hayder, who turns this one into the leg side. Again, Thompson does the fielding. That run rate, which at one point was five, as I kept mentioning, is now down to less than four and a half. So they are putting, they have applied the brakes, Yorkshire. They had to, really. This one is pushed back by Hayder to Don Bess. Jaffa Johan, the substitute fielder, is now almost within touching distance at long on to us. As Bess bowls, and it's clipped up two. Jaffa Johan for a single. 168 for four. Eighty-seven now to Hayder. Sixty-eight to deploy. Who's on strike and he's struck on the pad. There's a big appeal not out, says umpire Chris Watts. And it's the end of the over. Uh, Bess's 10th over, not for 64 so far, his figures. And Darvish have negotiated the first two overs after the tee interval for the addition of just a couple of runs. The trail by 73. 169 for four. Matthew Fisher, six overs, two maidens, two for 19. His figures. He's bowling from the lake end. Just asking Adam Lai to uh, move a little bit closer to wicketkeeper Johnny Tattersall at slip. He's the solitary slip now. And Fisher is in and hurries Hader there a bit as he goes back into his crease and pushes it out into the offside. Jordan Thompson with the fielding. That tricky time of the day when we both have updates at the same time. Which is never ideal. Now, there you are, Richard. Just been hanging on for a couple of hours or so to speak to you. 169 for Ford Derbyshire in there. He's got cheeky as well next to us. That's in comes Fisher again. And bowls that uh, gets through his defences, thuds into his pad. He asks if the, he wants the ball picking up, and I think Fisher said, I'm all right, thank you. Just listening to the weather forecast in my ears, clusters of thunderstorms moving northwest. So they're currently in Leicestershire, 
And then we'll head towards Nottingham, sure and away. So uh, we might get away with it in North Derbyshire. Fisher turns at the top of his mark. He's on his way in now to bowl to Hader Alley. And Hader, well, that's off an edge, down into the ground, fielded by Finlay Bean. A backward point. And there is no run. She's now talking about flash flooding, hailstones and gale force winds. But I don't think the north of Derbyshire is necessarily... going to be hit certainly not any time soon far north of Derbyshire more likely not to get it Anna Church tells us as Fisher is in again and bowls this one is driven and nicely stopped by Fisher in his follow through so just the two runs added since two And it's similar for Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, but a bit cooler at night, which is always good. There's no air conditioning in my hotel room. And I couldn't open the windows because I was right next to a big dual carriageway. <laughs> Here comes the update for the sports desk as Fisher is on his way in. Bowls, that's pushed out into the offside by Hader. Again, there is no room. The update coming up for Radio Derby. Any moment now. I'll pick up the, uh, okay. the baton if you like. Want to do that, Matthew Fisher? Yes. Now, uh, Derbyshire have uh, negotiated pretty much the first three overs after T here. Chris, 169 for four, so two runs added and they still trail by 73, but it means that Hader Alley and Liz Deploy is still out there. Hader has 87, Deploy has 68, and Hader just picks up another single to move himself on to 88. Earlier on today, Yorkshire bowled out for 353 in their first innings, a lead of 242, Mark Wop taking five for 83, and Yorkshire then reduced Derbyshire to 17 for four with the top four batsmen all making single-figure scores. But since Deploy and Hader came together, it's been pretty good. Deploy never completely looks set out in the middle, uh, but Hader has been immaculate, hit a couple of big sixes as well, and has looked imperious. He's 12 away now from his first century as a Derbyshire player. Derbyshire 170 for four in their second innings. It means that they trail by 72. Sorry, Dodgy. I didn't mean to furiously wave at you there in a very unprofessional manner, but he was just throwing to me. Don Best then at the pavilion end, bowling here to Hader Ali. He's got a leading edge on this one out into the offside. Not many false shots from uh, Hader in this knock, to be fair, but that was one of them. He's got a single for it. Yeah, that uh, gesticulation reminded me of a, another one of our former colleagues in the commentary box. Well, the Cali, the Cali fend-off was uh, famous. Yes. It was difficult when one person could hear the cue and nobody else can as well. I wasn't referring to him actually, but oh, um, excellent. He's, got he's one another one. Name names. Bess around the wicket, stepping back and cutting. Leas deploy. Ball bobbles up on its way to uh, Finley Bean, who's just been moved from gully a little bit deeper. To a backward point on the one. They've got a sweeper out. At, uh, Maybe square cover, deep backward point, how to be precise on his position, given that it was so low. But he's going to come into play here. George Hill. With a push out in that general direction by Elias Deploy at one run. Just a few numbers. Prior to this over starting, the last 10 overs just went for 19 runs. And the 12 overs previous to that went for 90. So Yorkshire... Resting back a little bit of control here, but haven't managed to take a wicket with them along with that just yet. But you know what happens when batters are becalmed. They'll generally take a chance. Another dot ball there, just pushed back by Hader Alley. So better from Yorkshire. Bess is in. Full length delivery. Feels like he's pushing it through a little bit quicker than he was earlier on from the other end when Darren Goff was sitting here 
suggesting that he was bowling it a little bit too slowly. Is that a word at tea? Bless you, lad. In he comes again. And that's better. And Ali just pushing forward, back up the pitch. So end of over number 40. One even second time around for Derbyshire. Or is it 40k? Uh, 41 over. 41. Um, 172 for four. With uh, Leah Stoploy 69 about to go back on strike and Hader Ali on 89. So who was the other one who did that then? The fender? Okay. What a lip reader I am, by the way. <laughs> See now the freezing cold fending people off. Matthew Fisher to uh, continue from the lake end. He's bowled nicely. Two overs for four runs since T. Eleven overs for no, no. Two overs for one run since T. Seven overs, two for twenty. His figures. We're bowling to Lears deploy with Davish on 172 for four. Deploy has 69. Hader Ali has 89. And Fisher is in and deploy rather falling into the offside. Plays the ball into the leg side. Gets past Jordan Thompson, but. Not past Don Bess, who's fielding a mid-on, and there's no run. Just occasionally you get a blast of reasonably cool air blowing through our structure, which I'm not willing to call a gazebo anymore. I, when I looked it up on, on the internet, it didn't really help me. It has to be said. Not me, because I was hearing a radio programme, so I couldn't really tell what he said. Yes, I didn't say much, really. This one is all struck. It's beaten. It's, what, what on earth has that hit? Has it hit the bat and then his thigh pad? Because it died before he got to Johnny Tattersall. It's a strange old shot from Deploy who was uh, hurried by Matthew Fisher. No damage done from a Derbyshire perspective, but... He used the word ungainly once today, and that was ungainly. The Derbyshire skipper. Fish is on his way in again. A couple of people come over the bridge, and Deploy leaves this one outside the off stump. Goes through at a rare old rate of knots. That was a quicker delivery, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, measuring go. speed and bowling speed in knots. No. What was the rate of knots? Any idea? I don't know, because I don't know what a knot is, but it's just a, just a phrase, isn't it? <laughs> we all do use phrases that... A, a, a knot is nautical, isn't it? But I don't know what it is. Is it one nautical something per hour, or... I don't know. That's what we've got Kate alongside for, to yeah. Google things what, like this. What's a knot? I, I she's do got, actually know. She's got gazebos up at the moment, but we'll go for gazebo, gazebos and knots. In a moment, there's another short of a length delivery is left alone by Elias to play. We're going gazebos first. Well, give me a chance. All oh, right, I thought you were well, that. While she's doing that, but James Green has messaged in saying the decision to bowl best took pressure off to Abisha, and now these two are set. We need a spinner. If Johan is that good, he should be playing. Adil is now international and IPL player. Didn't bowl well for us last year. James Green. When is ZZ Top's next tour starting, says Tony Sweeney. Yeah, very good. How long is Billy Gibbons' beard? I've not heard that before. Next delivery from Fisher is uh, fuller length and pushed out into the offside by Lear's deploy. It's been a while since the ZZ Top reference. Uh, most people have got it out of their system by now, but... A gazebo ah, is, a, is a lightweight temporary structure that can offer rain, breeze or sun shelter. So they are generally much smaller smaller than marquees. This is a gazebo then. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't think it's quite a marquee, is it? I'm not sure it's lightweight either. <laughs> no, there is that that is true. No, it looks it's a fairly substantial structure. There's fisher bowls to deploy any Cuts that ball into the ground, back of the square on the offside, fielded by Finlay Bean, end of the over, another maiden. Fisher's third, eight overs, three maidens, two for 20. Derbyshire remain on 172 for four. Deploy has 69, Hader has 89. Bent Nielsen says, could you please send a few of the thunderstorms to my local golf course in Denmark? I wouldn't say it's dry. 
think like the open in a hot summer but without any of the grass five or six presumably thunderstorms would get the grass started a bit so just listening to the weather forecast there before i did my update into the sports news and uh, it appears that the north of derbyshire which is where we are of course uh, is going to miss the storms they're going across leicestershire and nottinghamshire in that way so we could miss them here excellent don bess pavilion end Bowling here to Hayder Alley, who has played firmly forward at that, but the ball has disappeared off down towards third man. Revis, I think, is the man who's trying to pick that up cleanly and failing to do so. And they're going to end up with three as he underarms it fairly heftily as well <laughs> back into Adam Lyth, who also missed it. Another one of those uh, slight comedy moments like we had the other day. Good piece of fielding in the end because he had an awful lot of ground to make up, didn't he, in the far distance? Yeah. Round the wicket now, Bess, bowling to deploy. Thickish outside contact on it. Finley Beam with a tumbling stop at point. No run. Correct. Yeah, you were waiting to see if there was a run there, weren't you? I could tell. No, no. Or were you I just waiting on, to see I, if I'd I knew complete that, the job? I knew on that occasion. <laughs> Slightly earlier, I've had absolutely no idea what was going on. You get paid more than I do, so maybe I'm allowed to miss out a word or two. Yeah. On a pro router basis, as uh, deployed punches into the covers, and there's no run. Well, in your lengthy interview with uh, Darren Goff, you can take the rest of the day off if you yeah, wish. Yeah, I think that probably should. Best round the wicket again, just drags this one down slightly, but it is. More speedy in getting to the other end. Deploy just scoops it round the corner slightly. No run. 175 for four. It's been a tremendous stand, this uh, fifth wicket so far between the pair of them. Oh, dear me. He's nearly brought that to an end, though. Don Bess. I think it was jabbed onto Deploy's front foot by his bat and almost rolled back onto his stumps. Not for the first time Deploy's done that. You wouldn't be surprised if he goes at any moment, but he's been playing well in between as he punches this one into the offside final ball of the over. Jordan Thompson fields. 175 for four. Hayder Alley with a century in his sights. 92 not out. He has Deploy 69 not out. 43 overs complete in this Derbyshire second dig. And 26 overs remaining on day two. And at one point today, we could have been forgiven for thinking we might not even get this far. Well, I didn't think we would. I'm happy to admit it. I think it's been a, a terrific effort, which started with the batsmen out there, not particularly under any pressure, because Derbyshire looked like they were going to lose by a massive innings, a massive innings defeat. And now the pressure will mount on them as they uh, reduce the arrears bit by bit and it has been bit by bit 67 runs as Fisher begins a new over and Hayder decides to leave alone at the last minute all goes through to the keeper uh, Johnny Tattersall so just the eight runs added since T 25 hours 26 including this one still to be bold David Griffin is sensing Hader Alley Century. He's taken his chair up to behind the advertising boards in front of us. He's taken his camera as well, which always helps. Otherwise, you'll have to paint it. This one is pushed out into the offside by Hader. <laughs> Straight to the man in the covers. It was George Hill. And there's no room. I thought you had another message then. We should, have a very, we should sort of have some pre-records for and there's no run, shouldn't we? We can just press a button yes. in various different tones as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And there is no run. Or and there's dot. no run. And there's no run. Yeah. The ground staff are looking slightly agitated yeah, away to our right now. It's, it's just, just a feeling in the air, <laughs> but slightly different in the last five minutes. Having said it, the, wouldn't, the storms wouldn't hit the north of Derbyshire. They've started to get agitated. Here's Fisher into bowl to Hayder who drives out into the offside Hill does the field no it isn't it's Jordan Thompson does the field in one 
once again. Not once again, because he didn't do it the previous time, but <laughs> 175 for four. <laughs> Somebody's fielded it for the first time. It was Jordan Thompson. Again. Well, I'm sure he's fielded it before, so he's bound to be fielding it again after a while. <laughs> This is just wipes the sweat from his brow as he sets off and bowls to Hayder, who drives but doesn't time it up to Sean Massoud again. What's your next one? 5.33. It's quite specific. So they'll be with you about quarter to. Well, the thing with Humberside is you're always last in the queue. Do they, so put, they never put the cricket on first? They no, never put the cricket on first, no matter what's happened. It's always something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At the moment, rugby league yeah. taking precedence. Then a football story will come on, or several. Big signing for Grimsby Town. Lots of big signing for Scunthorpe United. Fisher in and bowls to Hayder, who drives again. It makes a horrible noise off his bat. And go straight up to Don Bess at mid-off. So you get all of that, and then, you know, somebody may have had a local bring and buy sale as a, <laughs> for the local hockey club. Yeah. Might be a, a spot of trawler fishing in there, and then finally, let's go to cricket. Well, I think once they built that football ground on the circle, that was the end of cricket. Wasn't circle, it? please, circle, if you're yeah. from Hull. Circle. Yeah. Well, I've seen those purple shirts or oh, shirts. Uh, 175 for four. I can't really do accents. I think you probably spotted that as Fisher's in and bowls to Hayder. Hurries him a little bit, leading Edge out into the offside. Uh, nicely done there. Nice bit of footwork from Jordan Thompson. Just let the ball roll onto his right foot, bounced up. He caught it, end of the over. 175 for four. Another maiden from Matthew Fisher, his fourth. Two for 20 from nine overs now for Matthew Fisher, who has bowled well. I've got a lot of texting from John Bauer. How he found my number, I've no idea, but uh, well done, John. Uh, asking me about the uh, Scarborough event on the 5th of September. Did I mention oh, that? There, there, what what event, event is that? Uh, it's, it's an event dodgy. at Scarborough. I know I've not given it a mention just yet, so maybe I should do at this point. Question of sport. Ah, end of day three of the Yorkshire Derbyshire match. Day three, you say. In September. We'd be delighted for you all to attend. £7.50 a ticket in association with the Yorkshire Cricket Supporters Association before I'm chastised by Charlotte Evers as this is a lovely sweep shot by Leo's deploy to a ball just a little bit too leg stumpish from Don Bess. I don't have to pay seven fifty to get in. I think yours is probably fifteen quid. <laughs> what about my what about me? Yeah. Are you there? Are you going back over for uh, yeah, I'll be here for Scarborough. Back over from games. Dutchland. Okay, it's keeping the score. Oh you, you could be yeah, you could be the scorer, couldn't you? Scores on the doors from Samantha, Kate. As, uh, <laughs> this is dropped into the leg side by Hader Alley, and there is no run. It's going to be held in the marquee at the bottom of the ground, the west, uh, the side of the west stand. Yeah, I wonder where it was. <laughs> Here is uh, Bess, floated up this time, and Hader Alley has dispatched it unceremoniously through the covers. You know what that means. For four. On to 96. And that means it's back to you. That's the first four since uh, over 28.5. Sorry, I beg your pardon, 33.4. So 11 overs or so. Don Bess bowling to Hader Alley on 96, and Hader defends it out into the offside. He wants a single. This time it's Deploy who sends him back, which is an unusual twist. Any more information on that tip that we need to know? Uh, John, by the way, says he's, he lives in Cullingworth, outskirts of Bradford, goes to Scarborough for the full week. Right. And it, comment on you as well in a moment here. Oh, no. Bess bowls. Hader just pushes this into the onside. No run. Thompson Fields. He used, used to play snooker at Undercliff Cricket Club. Two big full-size tables, I think it was there. Yeah. Back in the day where David Best, of course, played. He said, I'd not heard of Dave Fletcher before. <laughs> I believe that. But found his commentary very comical at times. Seems more interested in going for a pint after the game, though. Yeah, absolutely. Bess. Bowls to hate. I'm not more interested. I'm just very interested. He's uh, stepping back into the leg side and pushing it out into the off. There was no run. 180 for four now 
Derbyshire. They trail by 62. But that, that's September the 5th. I'm not even sure if I put it in my calendar or not. I ought to do that, I don't know. Although I'm sure you'll remind me before we get there. Day Several times. And, and while we're there as well, because I've got two days to make sure that you don't forget. Three days, really, to make sure you don't forget. That's, uh, no, I haven't put it in. Day three, you say. Well, if John, if John Potter, the Yorkshire scorer, can't keep score for you, I'd uh, gladly um, offer. That's very kind. How much to bribe you? Fisher to two points. Deploy, actually, it's your, it's your end. It's anyway, isn't it? So you might as well crack on with it. Dot ball. Thanks very much. What is Gibson away to our right having a chat? You know what's going to happen. I'll be doing my uh, update at five o'clock when he gets to his century. And so it'll be, it'll be 99 not out, and then the storm will come. Don't downplay it like certain commentators might. Uh, poor ball. He's got to his century, but shall he doesn't we, deserve it. Shall we have a practice at this point? And just say, a <laughs> wonderful knock from Hader Alley, full of beautiful stroke play, fluent stroke play for Little yeah. Derbyshire. Little, no, that's fine. We can, we can easily and cut that this, out. This will be, <laughs> clearly the stock of this innings will be enhanced because it's against Yorkshire. Yeah, we don't need to play that bit either. Fisher on his way up the hill, bowls to deploy down the leg side. Not taken cleanly by Tattersall, so they go through for a bye. I'm fairly certain he didn't get anything on that. If he did, no, he didn't. Uh, 181 for four, 61 the deficit. And of course, I mean, people talk about when people score their runs, when they take the wickets, who are the opponents, how difficult, how good are they? So this will be devalued, of course, for Hader Alley, wouldn't it? Because playing against bottom of the table... Yorkshire. There must be a, a cricketing equivalent to XG, yeah. And I want no part of it. I don't want any part of XG. Absolute nonsense. Henry's come through the barrier now. Well done, Henry. <laughs> Here is Matthew Fisher bowling to Hader Ali, who turns this away down the leg side. Has he got anything on that? He doesn't think so. It's gone for four buys. A 185 for... Four. Yeah, no, he, he knew he hadn't hit it because there was absolutely no, no hint of any kind of celebration there, was there? For Hayda, it remains on 96. Very exciting. 15 fours and two sixes, and he needs to get a move on. He doesn't, obviously. It would be nice if he did. <laughs> Much mirth in the press box as Hader drives this into the leg side off a thick inside edge. There is a man down at the backward square leg boundary who moves on to 97. I don't know why you're that bothered, to be honest with you. I mean, if, if this was my lot, then you celebrate when they get 100. Not, it never gets replayed. Nobody knows where the rot is anymore. <laughs> we've got, we've got there are no archives of any commentaries. If they need the... Uh, Darren Goff interview, which they could easily cut up and play again tonight, couldn't they, on uh, Yorkshire Sport? Yeah. Uh, it's on the Derby, Radio Derby rock. People would be interested in hearing what he had to say as Fisher balls to deploy, dabs it out into the offside. He calls him through for a quick single. There is a shot, the stumps, and it hits, and he's in. <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear, what are they doing? Oh, and they've gone back for a second. For the overthrows, after and you see, I don't like that. It should be dead ball. Uh, 72 now to deploy. Uh, that was all very alarming. Uh, 188 for four. Head rally now limping. It, the second was a little bit Fred Carno, wasn't it? Mm. Well, the first one, I mean, he did want to scamper in and make his ground, and then all of a sudden, Leas is calling him back for a second. He must have been absolutely delighted because he'd run several yards past the... Uh, that's the stumps, but I suppose every run is crucial, as Monty Python said in the uh, meaning of life. 188 for four. It wasn't runs in that instance. In comes Fisher and Bowles to deploy full toss. That's pushed up to mid on and fielded. Potentially by Don Bess, who has been there, but I don't think it is because he's uh, at this end of the field. Who's, who's at mid on, Doji? Uh, ben Cliff. Ben Cliff, thank you. Code is having a, well, he has had a conversation with David Griffin just in front of us. 188 for four with Hader Ali on strike 
And exactly one minute until the five o'clock news bulletin. The tension mounts. Well, the jeopardy is enormous. I mean, they just don't care, do they, these players? No, without a thought for the commentator at all. He's currently down on one knee, putting his gloves back on. Have a look round at the field now. Don Best is going to be bowling. Hader on 97. They're, they're thinking people are here to watch them. Bass bowls, Hader defends. 23 overs, including this one to go today. A little bit of overtime, but not an enormous amount. And Bass is in again and bowls to Hader, who drives him, but straight to the man in the covers. It remains 188 for four. I thought you would refrain from phrases like that after yesterday when you called it six o'clock and we finished about quarter past with five overs left. Yes, uh, we, would, we would have been considerably later if it not rained. Bess bowls to Hader, who defends this next delivery. It is now gone beyond five o'clock. I'll get to the end of this over. There we go, the bells from the uh, Twisted Spire. Bass is in again. Bold to Hader, who turns this into the leg side. Bean Fields, 188 for four. Ben Code enjoyed that one. The elbow protectors on, down at long on. Just in front of us, and Hader waits. Bass is in, Bowles to him, and he defends it out into the offside. This time, why not? Just for a change. By Matthew Rivers. That'll be wondering where I am. In goes Bass and Bowles, and Hader sweeps him, and he swept him for four and goes to his century. His first for Derbyshire with his 16th four. He's got two sixes in there as well. It's been a terrific knock from Hader, who didn't open in the second innings, remember, came in at number six. And he's gone to a century. 101 not out. Derbyshire 192 for four. Yeah, a fourth uh, first-class century for Hader Ali, and he deserved it. He's played really well. He came in in a very, very tough situation hey, earlier today. 17 for four. Derbyshire at one. Here comes Fisher then from the lake and bowling to Leas Deploy, who uh, turns this ball into the leg side. And there's no run. There we go with the update. They certainly are outdoors, yeah. And Hader Ali's just gone to his first century for Derbyshire, the fourth of his career. Uh, 128 balls with his 16th four as he swept the ball out to the backward square leg boundary. He also hit two sixes in that. And he and Leas Deploy, who's just picked up another single to move to 73, are steering Derbyshire closer to Karma Waters. They still trail by 49. But Hader Ali and uh, Leas Deploy put on 176 so far 
for the fifth wicket. Derbyshire, 193 for four, trailing by 49. That uh, cover can't have been too far away from it, given where the ball has been hauled in by George Hill. Two more to Hayda Alley. 200 up for Derbyshire. 201 for four. But that was uh, one of his least convincing strokes of this knock so far. And as I say, to all intents and purposes, he's looked pretty secure throughout, really. Mm. There was a loose one. Carry on here. Revis in again. Ada Ali pushing to Shan Masood at mid on. And that is the end of over number 47. 248, I should say, 201 for four. Ada Ali on 103. And Leas Deploy having to work hard to get close to a ton himself. 73. I think, didn't when I said a new. Poo -poo. Kind of smirked it, smirked at it, yeah. 60, it was around about 60 apiece, weren't it, at one stage? So yeah, yeah. Leos has really had to work for the yeah, 13 he's, he's got he's since sort of then. slowed and down a touch, hasn't he? And, and hey, Ed Riley's nearly had his 50 since then. Yeah, yeah. I just needed to add, what time was Matt Lamb out? He was out at 2.04. Thank you very much. Sorry, Kate. I have 03, but... Uh, Ooh, yes, yeah. controversial now. It's the first thing I do is look at the time. Yeah. Who should I, who should I uh, believe? First thing I do as well. <laughs> well, if I saw 03 and you saw 04, you must have been after me. Or his, his watch is wrong. Is that an atomic watch? The last 50 came off uh, 112 balls. Yeah, they've slowed down considerably, haven't they? These two are put on 184, which equals the fifth wicket stand record for Derbyshire against Yorkshire by Egger and Revel at Park Avenue in 1949. Fifth wicket. I just looked at, looked at it on a whim. Just double check with Griffith. Equals the record for the fifth wicket. It's a ball change. Yeah. Tweet is ready. The record. Yeah. Doubt we should did try to get the ball changed in their innings but failed. This one is 48 overs old or thereabouts. And uh, they've been successful, Yorkshire. And I'll ask you this. I ask all commentators and we discuss it whenever somebody is. Uh, that when that whenever a team changes the ball, you know when you used to scrabble about, you probably played cricket at a higher level than I did. Well, you definitely did. We used to turn up at cricket, and you thought if you got a ball that's slightly out of shape, that's magnificent. If you don't know where it's going, the batsman doesn't know where it's going. I, I don't really understand that, but clearly they much prefer to play with balls that aren't out, either out of shape or have bits missing off them. Don Bess, is it me? I can't remember. I'll do it. Unless you want to do it. No, oh, fire away. 201 for four, Don Bass in and balls to the left-handed Liz Deploy, who uh, sweeps of a fashion. He's going to get four runs for it. He made it on the full and steered it very fine down to fine leg. Picks up four, moves on to 77, and that is a new record for the fifth wicket for Derbyshire against Yorkshire. 
It's his first boundary for 25 overs. Blimey. He's, he's been entirely becalmed, hasn't he, really? Deploy. That, that, that's almost a shot of a man who has been become needed to get himself moving again. Let's see if it's worked while well, he cuts this into the offside for a single. Nice piece of fielding from uh, Ben Cliff. Swooped through in the same action like that from the young man. I assume he's a young man. Well, they're all young men, aren't they? Let's face it. <laughs> no get away from that. Even Wayne Madsen's a young man. 206 for four. Best bowls. It's driven gloriously by Hader out towards the cover boundary for four runs. Beautiful shot from Hader Ali. Too much width on offer. He moves to 111 and Darvish to 210 for four. Yeah, you can't give him room outside off stump. I no. think that's pretty clear. It's, uh, it's taken a lot fewer than 100 runs from him to know that. He's always going to punish her. Delivery like that, and he did it in glorious fashion. He waits now as best bowls, and that one is off a thick inside edge out to Cliff in the mid wicket region. So, a glorious four and a miss hit in successive deliveries for Hayder. He's on 111, 210 for four, Derbyshire. Best bowls. Hayder smashes that one out to the extra cover boundary for four more. Blimey, he hit that hard. He moves to 115, 214 for four now. Hayder's enjoying himself out there. I mentioned it was his fourth first class ton, I think. Mm. And uh, the way he's playing here, you'd, you'd probably find it difficult to believe he's ever played better, really. He's striking the ball very cleanly. He's taking just about every opportunity he's been offered this afternoon. There's been quite a lot of those. Only one really false stroke. Leading edge. In goes Bess, and this one is smashed out towards the uh, long off, wide long off boundary for four more. And Hayder is enjoying himself now officially. 119 to him, 218 for four at the end of the over. He does have a double century to his name, which is quite remarkable, really, because he'd only played 11 first class matches uh, before he arrived in this country. And the extra applause was for the 200 partnership. It's been superb. Um, you know, do you want to be hit through those areas as an off spinner? That's what I'll be asking Don Best through extra cover a couple of times. Says so something about the line, I guess. Matthew Revis to continue then. 200 partnership off uh, 251 balls. And Revis break it. He's bowling here to deploy. He's solidly behind this, and there is no run. Yorkshire's partnership breakers. Uh, so often, George Hill and Jordan Thompson, and uh, Jordan is doing a few stretches at mid-wicket. Not that he's not already had a go, because he has, as has George. But they're the two sort of golden arm seamers in the team in terms of breaking things up. Matthew Revis having a go at the moment, round the wicket to deploy. That one pushed back at him. No run. Slip in place. There's a gully. Point is back on the boundary edge. And there's an extra cover. Mid off, mid on. Mid wicket on the one. And then away to our right. Deep backward square leg. And a long leg Ben code in front of the <laughs> hospitality tent. As Nils Deploy flicks this latest full-length delivery up to Don Bess at mid-on. No run. Just trying to get themselves G'd up, Yorkshire, aren't they? With a... and they're still in the box seat. Or seats, depending on what the phrase is. It's developing into a much more interesting game. May we even call it a contest? As uh, Revis is in and uh, Deploy helps this one on its way back with a square leg. They'll pick up one run. Jordan Thompson round to do the fielding now. We'll have a change in that uh, fielding setup now because the right handed Hayley Alley coming back on strike. Run rate 
What will it be? Four and uh, less than a half. 4.41, but only because it says it on my computer. <laughs> Still high enough. As uh, Hader Ali has a flick at this delivery, slanted in towards him by Revis. Good tumbling stop by Johnny Tarasol. But uh, there's no run. That little threat seems to have disappeared, doesn't it? Mm. A little slight threat of that it might rain, but I don't think it's going to. Yeah. Just felt it dropped cooler yeah. like it does before you're going to yeah. get a thunderstorm for a moment or two. Can't really see what's going on here because Harry Booker, the Yorkshire's S&C, is standing <laughs> right between me and the batter. He's hit, hit, hit it somewhere. He's hit it somewhere. It was a Yorker. Mm. Thank you. I couldn't have told you that either. Okay, it's taking the next over from the pavilion end to describe Jordan Thompson, who looks mm. like he's coming on to bowl. He's got his headgear out. Out of his pocket. Does his hair flop in his eyes naturally? I know he's always worn it. He's probably seen a footballer wearing it or something like that. Uh, like an Alice band, but an unnecessary Alice band. I think all so, Alice bands well, are unnecessary. Well, they certainly are in my case. Um, <laughs> so there's much doubt about that. My days of putting my hair up or down have got long gone. 219 for four as Thompson is on his way in to bowl to Leas Deploy, who clips that nicely out towards the square leg boundary and clips it so nicely it goes for four. I didn't think he'd touch that. Anywhere near enough, Matthew Fisher racing around the boundary, couldn't get there. And four more to Leas Deploy, who moves on to 83. Penny Sutcliffe says, crikey Moses, what's going on? 200 partnership, there are no words. Please help. <laughs> Send help immediately. And they batted really well, these two, against all the odds from 17 for four to 223 for four. I think you'd have got decent odds on that if you were allowed to bat on cricket. In comes Thompson again and bowls and Deploy pushes this one out into the offside. Big cry of no from the, Dar the Derbyshire skipper, Ben Cliff, does the fielding. Robert Marion says, Doji, have you set up the Combox sweepstake for the exact moment Yorkshire will lose this? Oh, no. See, they've tell you, no, the Derbyshire fans have stopped tweeting how bad it is. And the Yorkshire supporters have started to tweet about defeats. Thompson in and bowls to deploy. He pushes this one up to Ben Code at mid on. That's the life of a cricket supporter, though, isn't it? Highs and lows. It's mainly lows. Well, it's the beauty of the four-day game as well. Nobody would have given Derbyshire a prayer of not winning by an innings. Jordan Thompson, he's lulling Derbyshire into that sense of false security again by limping. He looks in pain to me. I know, I know he's told you it's nothing, but it's clearly something. Had a word with Ben Code, and now he's on his way in. Deploy waits and defends this one straight back to him. Thompson gives him a little stare before picking the ball up and tossing it to Shan Masood. No, he doesn't. He's tossed it to uh, Ben Cliff, who's polishing it. Shan doesn't have to polish, he's the captain. 2.23 for four. Trailing by 19. Rather bizarrely. And in goes Thompson again. And this one is pushed out into the offside once more, Cliff Fields. Starts polishing. Not a lot of breeze about the trees are reasonably still on the far side of the ground. Especially that silver birch. The beautiful silver birch. And the flags on the council they building, are. as you described it, are it is fairly council, horizontal. It is, council, it is the council headquarters. Um, yeah, coming from the south or the east or somewhere. Thompson bowls and it's defensive. <laughs> Thank you. Don't look at me like that. If that's the north, as I think you ended up coming admitting yesterday. East, it? It's coming from the east. Yeah, it's coming from the east. That's why it's so cold. 
End of the over, 223 for four. It's the beast from the east. Expect snow anytime soon. 119 to Hayda, 83 to deploy. They again have a little touch of gloves. They must have done that 100 times in this innings now. Adam Lythe, once of this broadcast, just uh, leaving the field to our left. Coming to have a chat with you. It might do, yeah. <laughs> Mid-innings, um, I ask him why he's not taking a wicket yet. Matthew Revis, right arm over, bowling to the right-handed. Hader Ali, who pushes to Shan Masood at mid-on, no run. A fair bit more cloud cover than we've had at times in this match, in this day. In fact, as a he's passing wild foul away to our left. Geese, I think. Presumably have been situated on or around the lake, which I'm yet to actually clap my eyes on. Revis is in, it's driven by Hader Alley up to mid-off. Non best fumbles, but keeps them scoreless. You did a lap this morning though, didn't you? Did a couple of laps, I've yeah. done four laps, I think, today. I'm yeah. tired, oh, oh, I'm tired out. <laughs> um, I thought I saw you down the far end of the ground. Absolutely worn out. Two people you can spot on this ground are the high-vis jackets of the stewards and uh, the lilac top of Jonathan Deutsch. Yeah. That was my tracker, the lilac top. Revis in, that's punched out through the covers. Ball short of length. Hader Ali was going to pick up uh, two for this. Jaffa Chohan round to do the substitute fielding. 121 for Hader. 225 for four for Derbyshire. It did oh. appear fanciful last night when Liz Deploy said we have to try and score more than... Yorkshire scored in their first innings to have any chance of winning. Well, they did have to do that, but it appeared fanciful that he was even thinking about it. Revis in, flicked off the pad probably by Hader Ali. Johnny Tadassel moves out to uh, keep them to one leg by, as signalled by Tom Longley. So, end of that over. 226 for four. Hader Ali, 121. He has to ploy 83. Almost the kind of thing that he thought he had to say last night. He has to ploy while well, he's gone out there and put his money where his mouth was. He's on 83, as Doji says. Revis in again, and uh, Leas helped on its way round back of a square leg where Chohan feels. They pick up one run. Peter Keithley says, Doiji, there's a definite cheeriness in Fletch's voice now, which I'm <laughs> very pleased so. to hear. But remember, Fletch, one wicket may bring three oh, or no four more along. No question about it. No question about it. It's a guarded cheeriness. Well, it's a, the fact that they make this still could lose heavily, but it's not the ultimate humiliation that it might have been. Now in again. And Hader pushing out into the covers by Jordan Thompson, who's swapped the floppy for a cap with his shades on top, does the fielding. That's the end of the over, 52 gone, 227 for four. Did I say the end of the over early in the over? I think he might have done, but then... Because they were swapping yeah, uh, yeah, from left to right. Don't worry about it. Sorry, everybody. No, don't worry about it. I need to concentrate on what I'm doing. It's that time of the day when concentration really does start to fail. Sam Anna's has gone for another lap of the ground. Do you know, the leg by in that over was the first leg by not only of this innings, but since the first innings. Oh. There you go. It's remarkable what little gems yeah. Kate comes up with here. That's why we're paying her so much money to cover this game. Yes, isn't it? Mm. Having a whip round at the end. Jordan Thompson's going to continue from the pavilion end. He's speaking to Ben Code, who, for... Bowling advice I would probably go to ahead of Shan Masood. Shan Masood has allowed him to do so. I wonder if we get an upgrade in the lunch steaks to cake as well on day three. No. Thompson bowls, deploy, pushes out off the back foot into the offside. Cliff Fields. It, it seems it would, it would be surprising. You had watermelon this afternoon. Would it? The Derbyshire lunch budget. Not quite. Big enough for cake. No, no. Well, you should just think back 12 months of the rubbish we were eating at Headingley. 
That's true. <laughs> Twelve months, two months. <laughs> was it only just improved? It was, it was nice at the T20. I enjoyed mm, that. Well. Although they were clearing up around me because they don't leave it out for very long, do they? Use no. it or lose it. Thompson bowls to deploy. He pushes this into the leg side. Cries of wait on because it was going straight to Don Bass in fields. If that is Don Bass. It is. 227 for four. It remains. Matt Lamb continuing to, I think he has to keep moving, otherwise he stiffens up completely. Right to our right-hand side, and he's Derbyshire training top and shorts. Big man. Thompson bowls again, deployed, just guides this down into the ground. Back with a square on the offside. Bean fields. 227. Before it and remains. We've done all the bean jokes already this season. Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't trying to make a joke of it. He just fielded it. He didn't know it was Ben Cliff. Hmm? I've just thrown you off one. <laughs> well, ben Cliff's a cover, isn't he? His next delivery is guided down and uh, goes past Finley Bean. Runner. He's a good runner. He's a good runner down towards the man. He's baking out there in the sun. And they, they come back for two. You've got to stop. They trail by 14, Derbyshire. 2-2-9 two, two, for four. I'm trying, to get through the, I'm trying to get through the gate now. A little struggle. That's a bit of lilac in the socks there. Huh? Yes. Have you thought of getting lilac? Top and socks. Maybe. Certainly consider it now. I know they exist. And goes Thompson, bowls to deploy, pushes it up to Shan Masood at mid off. 229 for four, it remains. I've not brought the pink one down this week, or she really would have had some fun, wouldn't you? You got pink top as well. I don't okay. mind pink. Got a very dusky pink. Yeah. Dusky. Okay. I've got a top that makes me look like I'm not wearing anything on top, which is. Not horrendous right. now. I didn't realise when I bought it, this one is <laughs> on the same colour as the T-shirt. Defended by it, there's to play up to uh, mid on. Ben Code does the fielding and there's no run. I'm imagining sort of giant haystacks or Big Daddy then, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mick McManus. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have like a torso drawn on it or anything. It's just the colour. 121 to... Hader Alec at the end of that over, 86 to Lears deployed, 229 for four, Derbyshire trail by just a four, I say just, by 13 runs now. Matthew Revis to continue at the lake end. Lears deployed, giving us a wave. <laughs> wave back. Either the non striking and no Hader Alley waits, Revis is in and Hader right behind that, must be feeling an absolute million dollars out there at the moment. With this knock and the way he's played. And he's done a great thing, along with uh, his captain of their team, from 17 for four earlier when, as I say, there was an inclination to feel this one could have been done by now already today. I thought I'd be home by now. Ravis in again, and uh, Ada induces a really good piece of the field in there by uh, Finley Bean. Really good piece of, not pieces of. Diving to his left at Gully. Jumping, really, wasn't he? Said by a has there. <laughs> Very good. Quite quick for you. String it out as long as we can. Here comes Revis again. Hader tries to flick off the legs. Well swept up by Johnny Tattersall, who's largely been very tidy with the gloves in this one. So another dot in the Yorkshire at the moment. This is the test, isn't it? How good are your bowlers when there's not a lot happening for you out there? Fisher and Code have certainly done their part. No wickets for any other Yorkshire bowler in this Derbyshire second innings to date. 
Ravis might change it with this delivery. He's bowling here to Hader Ali, and uh, he's not so far off doing that. A thickish inside edge. He's definitely driving that through the offside. Picked up out there by Matthew Fisher, backward of square leg, and they got one run to complete that over with Ali on 122, and with Derbyshire 230 for four after 53. Still 16 overs remaining in the day. I'm just going to take a breather mm -hmm. to go and do my 5.33 on the side. Absolutely. Thank you, Taji. It's not the end of the over. It's all right. They were just swapping over because it's left-handed and right-handed, but I'll do the last ball of the over. There's two more balls to go. There's two more balls to go, in fact. Absolute shambles. Don't worry. It comes Revis and Bowles to deploy. Just guides that off uh, his hip down to fine leg for four runs, and the deficit is into single figures. Derby should trail by eight. 234 for four. It could be tricky counting to six. I can't do it. There's no reason why I would expect anybody else to. So, uh, they still haven't done the news yet at six. Of, what a time is it? 5.30. <laughs> I've got a bit of, I can't even tell the time anymore. Here's the final ball of the over. Uh, Revis in around the wicket, bowls to deploy. That one is turning down towards backward square leg. Ben Code runs in to do the fielding, and they're only going to get a single. Deficit down to seven. It'd be nice if they get, could get those seven runs before the sports day. So they're going to have a drinks break now. Oh, joy of joys. Uh, so I can give you the scores from uh, elsewhere in the second division. Worcestershire are almost at parity with Sussex. 340 for three. They trail by eight at Hove. Gloucestershire, 329 for eight. Lost a lot of play yesterday down at Bristol. 329 for eight against Leicestershire. And, uh, I'm searching for the other second division score. There it is. At Durham, 367 for five. They trail Glamorgan by 23 at Chester Le Street. So no game is as well advanced as this one. Unsurprisingly, given that Derbyshire were bowled out yesterday for 111, Yorkshire responded with 353 with a lead of 242. Mark Watt taking five for 83. David Milan with a century yesterday. He made 106. Uh, and then the first four Derbyshire batsmen were nipped out early. Two for Ben Code, two for Matthew Fisher. Came made two. Reese two, Madsen naught, and Lamb eight. But since three minutes past two, Derbyshire haven't lost a wicket. And they've moved on from 17 for four to 235 for four, rather remarkably with 122 for Hader Ali and 91 for skipper Leas Deploy. They trail by just eight runs now as uh, both sets of players, the Yorkshire team, fielders and bowlers, take a well-earned drink and you can see that uh, George Scrimshaw has taken a drink out along with, I think, Mitch Wagstaff for the Derbyshire batsman. It's been cloudy for around, around an hour now. And it's quite oppressively warm, but there is just occasionally a nice breeze. The trees to our left are certainly moving a lot more than they were earlier on, but the ones to the right, not so much. So goodness knows there are storms in the area more to the south and east of Chesterfield here in North Derbyshire. People who will be most happy will be the ice cream man and the people in the bars because it looks like we're going to get a day three. I'm back down to Sawley this evening for the, uh, for the night. How far is Sawley from Not too here? Far. Oh. oh no, they're doing the weather. Um, it's about half an hour away, just down the M1. Really nice. Our breakfast show presenter has a place there on the marina. So, uh, and he has a spare room, more importantly, uh, <laughs> which I take full advantage of. He's, uh, I thought, thought you might draw the line at sleeping on the sofa. Yeah, I well, know I'd sleep on a sofa if it meant I wasn't going to pay uh, any money for a hotel. That's, uh, that's a given. <laughs> 
We were put on the third floor last night and the lift was broken. It wasn't great. So they are talking about more torrential rain over the next hour. Dodgy's back. I'll disappear if that's all right, mate. Jordan Thompson then following the drinks break from this pavilion end. Bowling here to the left-handed deploy who nearly... So an update for BBC Radio Derby's sports news coming up. Sort of roundup of what's happened today. Lear's deploys on 91. Head rally on 122. They've added oh, 218. So far. Uh, sorry. Sorry. In goes Thompson and Bowles to deploy. Who defends this one? Well, he's still there. He's on 122 now, 236 for four Derbyshire. And the next man uh, looking at the milestone of three figures is Lear's Deploy. He's on 92. Derbyshire currently trailed by just six runs. It's remarkable. Uh, I mentioned to you, I think, on Wednesday that uh, when uh, Brooke Guest hit that six for the first ball of the final over at Edgebast, and I actually put my hands to my head and said, what am I watching? It's a fairly similar thing here because at four minutes past two, Derbyshire was 17 for four uh, and in all sorts of trouble, 225 runs behind. But Hader Ali and Lear's deploy have broken the record, fourth, uh, fifth wicket stand rather, for Derbyshire against Yorkshire. John Egger and Alan Revel did, uh, scored 184 between them at 1949 at Bradford Park Avenue. And at the moment, these two are put on 219. Those storms haven't arrived, although it has clouded over. Uh, so it looks like we might get a full day's play. Still 15 overs remaining in the day. And, uh, well, Derbyshire are still not out of the woods. But I'll tell you what, they're not going to suffer that humiliating defeat. It looked like they would at 2 o'clock. Uh, 122 to Hader, 92 to deploy. They're 236 for four, trailing by just six. turns and in he comes past umpire Watts delivers now it's up there to drive and pushed really rather than driven by Hader Alley fielded by Don Bess who's been in various positions in this match in the field and at the moment is at cover Ben Cliff and he's going through a few bowling looseners but of course can't bowl that's harsh Thompson turns again. Hader waits, and similar to Lear's deploy, not quite as close this time, but also chops one down into the pitch. Slightly false stroke, end of that over. 55 now complete in this uh, Derbyshire second innings. Uh, 236 for four. Still behind, but only just. Yes. In Chesterfield at 4.45, Terry Whitley tells me he went down to Ikea to pick his son up. He said it's dark and throwing it down. And that's in Chesterfield. Remarkable, really. Uh, we haven't had a drop of rain. Touch wood. Well, there isn't any wood here. It's all formica and glitter. Formica? I oh, that one for a while. No, that's formica, isn't that? It's probably plastic. I think so. It reminds me of kitchens from the mm, 1970s. Yeah. 70s, yeah, yeah. Formic acid produced by ants. 263 for four, apropos of nothing really. But we were, uh, we were accused of being an engineering program before. We've gone to wildlife now. Who's bowling this? First ben Code. Ben Code, first delivery of a new over. Goes past the edge of Lear's deploys bat. And into the hands of the keeper, Johnny Tattersall, who's standing up. 
It is a change of bowling. Mm. Chris Sharp says the storms appear to be closing in on your location. You may hear some rumbles of thunder soon and sends a real-time lightning map. Lovely. The umpires get a bit itchy, don't they, when, the, uh, when there's lightning about, and quite right, too. There's a fair amount of metal in this structure as well that we're sitting in. At the moment, Ben Code's getting some advice from uh, Don Bess as to where he should put his fielders. It's, uh, it's lightning down near Ripley. It's not too far away. Walksworth. Is it Walksworth or Worksworth? Walksworth. Uh, Worksworth, it might be Worksworth, yeah, W-I-R-K. Yeah. yeah. It's code around the wicket, bowling to the Derbyshire skipper. Deploy that's down the leg side. It's not taken cleanly by Tattersall. It's not easy for him standing up to a bowler of code's pace. And the go through for a bye. 237 for four. Deploy remains on 92 as the sun is out again. The clouds have moved for a moment. Sort of watery sunshine. Moving up towards Clay Cross. That's not far from here. Sutton in Ashfield. Yeah, just over the border. Just to be a pedant, mm. um, there is no IKEA in Chesterfield. Oh, okay. I wonder where he was picking them up from. Then uh, this one—he's <laughs> just, just sent me a message. You look like you specifically looked that up to ruin my message. Uh, well, Terry Whit Whitley's message. I, just, I don't want to be pedantic, but I thought it was pronounced pedant. I thought it was IKEA rather than pedant. <laughs> Single was taken there, incidentally. One twenty-three for. Heyder Alley, 2.38 for four. It is actually Ikea. But, um... Yeah, see. Come on. The four behind Derbyshire as Code bowls to Deploy. Who... I'm not sure if that one kept low or he made it look like it kept low. But... There's one of those up in West Yorkshire, just at the point where the M621 splits from the M62, yes. which is just at the point usually where on a Friday night after a T20 game, if you're ever heading... In a western direction, or if you're ever heading in a western direction anyway, they usually shut the, the M62 to do some roadworks and ends up with you driving around Halifax. Sort of badly turn off area, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a pain. Then going through Bradford and Code. Bowls to Deploy, who turns that into the leg side. Picked up by Matthew Revis, and there's no run. 2 3 8 for 4. Partnership up to 221 now. Between these two. It does seem bizarre that there were 17 for four. They had the foresight to keep, a, keep an opener back. A few rumbles out towards uh, Bakewell. Oh, first rumble in Chesterfield. In comes Code and bowls. Deploy has no idea where that ball's gone. It's, it's gone into the onside square. Good over from Code to begin his latest spell, two for 28, his figures. Whereabouts is that then? I can't, really, I can't really make out where it is, but there's a whole bunch, as the Americans might say. A whole bunch of lightning, lightning strikes, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, a whole bunch of lightning there. Down that back road, the, the A500, <laughs> a little side street. Is that the A500? Uh, it must be somewhere in that general direction. Stoke on Trent is just yeah, away to the left, and Utoxeter's yeah, not far from it. It's just, just north of Derby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm going to not particularly love you, but leave you for a few minutes because I've got an update for BBC Radio York That's to do. Really kind. Yes, yeah, so I've just. Uh, as a, a new over begins from Jordan Thompson. First delivery is. Uh, Pushed into the offside for a single by Hader. Moves a, moved to 124. Thank you, Ed, for the photograph. It's a building shakingly loud at Radio Derby, apparently. And it sort of smells rainy, doesn't it? Just that, I know it's not quite petrichor because we, haven't, we had some rain last night, but just it smells a little bit rainy at the moment. It isn't raining. And David Griffin is ready to take a picture of Leas Deploy pushing the ball up to mid on where Ben Code does the feeling. The good news is that the ground staff who last night knew it was going to rain and were round really quickly and were agitated earlier on haven't moved. They're away to our right. So uh, 
that's usually the first sign of problems. I think we've done really well to get through a full day's cricket, 12 overs to go after this one being bowled by Jordan Thompson. 239 for four. Thompson is in and bowls to deploy, who drives it back towards the bowler, gets his left hand to it. Shows no pain. Tried to divert it as bowlers do towards the stumps, but couldn't quite do so. Hader had got back into his crease, I think, anyway. Jordan Thompson walks back to his mark. Bowling from the pavilion end here at Queen's Park in Chesterfield. Bowls to deploy, who punches it up to Ben Coward at mid-on. And again, there's no run. Crowd starting to thin out a little bit. But those who've been here this afternoon of a Derbyshire persuasion will have been uh, pleasantly surprised by what they've seen, I've no doubt. 222 run partnership for the fifth wicket between these two. Somebody just said it is raining, but the wind is certainly starting to pick up. And I don't think the clouds behind us, the ones we can't see, I don't think they're very nice. Judging by the way everybody's looking, but the wind is definitely picking up. And it is getting very dark. Yes. Thompson bowls to deploy, pushes it straight back to him. Thompson threatens to uh, throw down the stumps and decides against it. Is that some rain in the air? Can't really tell. Uh, Stephen, <laughs> Stephen Martin uh, from the media team has just had a look at the stuff behind us and it doesn't look great, apparently. That was the general gist of his uh, his remarks. So Derbyshire might end up the day just slightly behind. Six behind at the moment. Deploy weights and gets a slower full delivery that he pushes into the leg side to move to 93. The ground staff are starting to get agitated away to our right hand side now. And more and more people are going out to look at the terrible clouds that are building behind us. And uh, one or two, yes, it's on its way, Dodgy. It's on its way. Right behind us. That wind is really whipping up now. There's uh, the covers away to the right, the uh, tarpaulin covers away to our right are uh, flapping a bit, I think. But the umpires have just said, in fact, it was um, Tom Lungley who just pointed to the sky up above us and behind. <laughs> Ashmal Shazad is taking all his equipment in in his bag. So he thinks it's going to rain fairly shortly. As do the Yorkshire backroom staff, they're doing the same. So time to batten down the hatches, everybody. Good luck. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, Dorale. Uh, Lewis Deploy, Lewis Deploy, rather, just waits. And in comes Code. Turn into the leg side. Hammering it down in Derby, I'm told. We play on. Made of tough stuff here in North Derbyshire. Zaman Khan has returned. I think he's spotted the impending apocalypse. On his way in. He's having a conversation with David Griffin. That would be a meeting of minds. Hader makes, uh, Zaman makes his way in. Hader's out there in the middle with Lear's deploy who's on strikers. In comes Code again and balls. He pushes it out into the offside. There's no run. He's on 93. I don't think he's going to have time to get to 100, if I'm entirely honest with you. I'll be surprised if this over is actually completed. Yeah, yeah. We've had two balls. David Griffin has just described the clouds behind us like the Wizard of Oz. One for the kids there. If you haven't seen it, go and see it. The ground staff are ready, up to a point. And in comes Code and bowls to deploy, pushes it back down the pitch. Code gets a hand to it. He doesn't palm it into the stumps. Hader was quickly back and in his ground. Once again, there's no run. 240 for seven. It remains. It's going to. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'll switch on. It, um, it's going to chuck it down in a minute. Koji? It was worth coming back for, wasn't it? Especially as a no update again. Nobody came to me. So that's twice today. That's from Leeds, one to buy York. We should trail by two. Deploy drives it up to Shan Masood, and they still trail by two. You're trying to get cricket on the radio, and then they forget that you're doing cricket on the radio, really. 
Oh, I do really. I missed one yesterday. A bit of slapped wrist at some point. I think I've now missed four this season. Yeah, it's mounting, isn't it? Mounting. Code. In from the lake end and deploy. Pushes that one out into the leg side. The run one, that's all they'll get. Derby should trail by one. 2.41 for four. Jordan Thompson trying the old fumble it when you come in trick to try and get him to take a second there. Eh? Really allowed to do that, are you? It was a very interesting piece of wicket keeping by Alex Davis on Wednesday night to stump Hader Alley. I thought bordered on it. Are you still allowed to do the slide when... No, no. leg fielding. Yeah, mm. you can't do that. No. I thought that was the case because you've yeah, not seen it for a while, but there used to be quite a lot of that going yes, on. Yes, yeah. Look like you've got it or yeah. haven't got it. One or the other to fool the batsman. Is it? The people are leaving in droves now, incidentally. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the bridge has started to fill up on the far side of the ground into town. And Ben Code is on his way into bowl to Hader on 241 for four. Hader defends this into the on side. It's fielded by Ben Cliff. The umpires are getting a bit agitated as well. I did notice that they're going to have another little chat with each other, I think, are they? And I wouldn't be at all surprised if they didn't take preemptive action here. It's a bit tricky because if it doesn't rain, then they look. A little bit silly, but um, they have to take in, in, into consideration the, as the gazebo threatens to take off. They have to take into consideration there might be some lightning around as well, don't they? So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, obviously player safety first. Yeah, absolutely. I was it at Pudsey St Lawrence at a game many years ago now, 1980s when it struck the pitch at the far side. Wow. And uh, one of the players, David Huddleston. He's had some steel pins in his elbows after a car accident. <laughs> yeah, he he suffered that day. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's got to be safety first. We've, we've got we've got the thick end of a day's play, and we already so as we approach uh, six o'clock, it would be foolhardy to keep players out there if it was in any way dangerous. Studs on boots, all of that. So they are continuing after that little chat. It feels like they're okay to do so at the minute, but you wouldn't be surprised, as Kate was suggesting, I think, that if at any moment they do go herring off the field to take cover, Jordan Thompson bowling here to Leas Deploy, who is on 94. He's got the dot against his, not got the dot against his name on the scoreboard, but he's made it to 95 with that single. Scores level. So Yorkshire will have to bat again. Never any doubt. <laughs> well, at 17 for four, there was a little bit of doubt. <laughs> Go back to that message from my lad, in which he said, uh, see you tonight at two o'clock. I did reply with a bit surprised if I didn't. I am officially surprised. Thompson to Hader Alley, flicks it nicely off his legs. George Hill coming in from square on the leg side to keep him to one. 2.43 for four. I better hand back to you just in case. Just Leas in case goes he mad here. Yeah, I suppose it's a possibility, but unlikely. Derbyshire this season, only two Centurions, and one of them's in this game. They also, or at least deploy. That's a 95 not out. This is his highest score of the campaign so far. 243 for four. Thompson goes in, bowls to deploy, who guides this out into the offside and picks up a single. Cliff does the fielding. He moves to 96, 244 for four. The record breakers go on. Just been corrected by Joanna as well. It shouldn't be a car accident. It should be a crash or a collision, apparently. Okay. Uh, John Bauer, by the way, did get back in touch. Wants a pint with us both at Scarborough. I think what? the best bet for that, John, is to turn up at the uh, Question of Sport, isn't it, on When's the that? third evening? September, September the 5th. 5th. Right. In the marquee. Next delivery to Hader Alley from Thompson. He's guided down to backward point for four runs. Thompson was furious with himself 
Derbyshire moved to 248 for four, 129 to Ada. The problem with arranging socials at Scarborough is that if the days do go along, by the time we finish doing all the stuff post day that we've got to do, trudge back to the hotel so that Fletch can change his T-shirt again and I can put my brogues and... Well, I don't imagine it'll be as hot in Scarborough in September. And it'll be warm. You keep saying this. But I don't think it'll be as hot as it was Yes, I mean, this is a That's some very hot warm. days over there. And the other thing is... <laughs> you're always late getting out, so... Uh, Thompson in, bowls to Hader this time, clips it into the leg side, but there's no run because it goes straight to Cliff. The other thing is we start at 10.30 in September, so we've got oh, half true. an hour leeway, that is true. We, which is always good news. Why we don't start at 10.30 the entire season is beyond me. Uh, the, the notional close of play at 5.30, we'd get to 6 and we'd all think we'd, we were on a winner. Because you could start at 10.30 most days, couldn't you? But they April don't. would be interesting. 10.30. Yeah, I suppose. Ada just chops down on this one, pushes it backward and square. On the offside, in that moment where the wind was really howling, it just eased a little bit. Should we Bizarrely. look back at the, the yeah, lightning that's on the latest map? from the lightning map. I did go and have a look at the mm. end of the last over. It's and, and, you know, it looks quite dark, but there is going a east. small possibility that it'll miss us. Yeah, the east of it. Remarkable. Us. Sutton in Ashfield. Mansfield, that's Woodhouse. That's all certainly to the east, yeah. Um, yeah. That seems to be where it's The umpires are actually, the I wonder if it's too dark. I don't think it is, but the umpires might think so, and they're taking them off. Yeah, they're taking the players off. I think this is bad light rather than, well, it can't be rain because it's not raining. Uh, and they're going to take them off for bad light. It's not raining, is it? It can't <laughs> be rain that they're going off for, so it can only be bad light, but you know what I mean. So, bad light and Derbyshire on 248 for four. David Griffin confirms that it's not raining. It means they lead by two. No, they don't. They lead by uh, six. There's six in front with Hayder on 129. And Leah's deploy on 96. They are put on, don't tell me, 231? 231, yeah. 231 for the fifth wicket. It is a Derbyshire record. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure whether we'll see the cricketers again in their whites today. We will see one cricketer each, presumably in training kit, fairly soon. As we do the end of play. 2.48 for four. And, uh, well, if we do come back, we'll come back. How about that? Does that seem fair? I think so. that seems pretty fair. Do you want to do a quick assessment of the day, just in case we don't? Well, yeah, I mean, Derbyshire this morning bowled out Yorkshire for 353. It makes it sound like they did something good. But Mark Watt did. He took five for 83 career best figures. Yorkshire had a lead of 242 and then absolutely laid into the top order with two wickets apiece for Ben Coward and Matthew Fisher, Harry Kane, Lewis Reese, Wayne Madsen and Matt Lamb all dismissed for single figure scores as Derbyshire at five past two or thereabouts was 17 for four. We haven't seen a wicket since uh, Lewis Deploy and uh, Hader Alley have gone along their merry way. Hader with his first century for Derbyshire, his fourth first class career. Three-figure score. Uh, and Lear's deploy is four shy of his first of the season. Uh, Derbyshire's day, but still, as they lead by six, in some trouble. Yeah, and who'd have thought we'd have gone over three and a half hours of actual playing time without seeing a wicket when we've seen what we've seen yeah, earlier in the in the day, earlier in the match. So, um, no, I think definitely Derbyshire's day. Uh, full credit to this pair. Hader Alley in particular, he's batted superbly for his 129 uh, Leas, well, he's got 96 on the board against his name, so it's hard to knock him, but he's certainly uh, ridden his luck and looked a little less composed yes, at times. Yes, that's fair. Uh, but Yorkshire, they, they need somebody else to come to the party with the ball, apart from just the two openers. Yeah, yeah, they've been uh, they've been terrific, the pair of them, Code and Fisher, uh, in the first innings and again in the second, but it is an awful lot to ask the same two bowlers to pick up as many wickets as uh, they need to go on and uh, complete what would be an expected victory, or certainly at the start of the day. I still think the Yorkshire remain favourites, but there are two days to go in this uh, county championship match. 
And we will be back tomorrow morning if we're not back for the, uh, the rest of the day. Or again today, they're going to bring the big sheets on as well. I think the umpires have pretty much said that that it will be that. And there's a flash of light again. Everybody goes, ooh. Uh, it's time that we uh, brought these tables in a bit and protected the electric. Oh, wow. That was loud. That was very, very loud. If we're not being invaded, we're about to get very wet. 2.48 for four. Derbyshire at 